All righty. Are we alive? Are oh, we wow. alive? Okay, wait. Are oh, we wow. alive? Oh my goodness, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, then you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press high chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch listen main channel first link for the scream alerts boot camp and real estate course but ladies and gentlemen we have another exciting day surprisingly we're only down a little bit we were looking a little bit more decent however you had more issues out of china once again got things a little shaky we might be able to brush it off obviously what's going on with bond yields and currency china's currency I believe just hit a 15 year low. So it's quite important. We'll see where that develops from there. The only other piece of news that you had this morning, the United Kingdom, they had inflation numbers that came in hot and people are saying, okay, might be a little bearish there for their Fed or their, uh, uh, Bank of England meeting that they have coming up dollar ended up uh, holding there again the pound so for the most part just about China UK you had target earnings they ended up doing way better than expected however they guided down and still cut their guidance uh, you just had a visa probe something with like visa even Pinterest and then that's pretty much it so kind of calm but it's Wednesday still near the lows yesterday was wild the bond market still crazy so Chad I hope you're ready. We still got excitement as we wrap up the middle of August and get ready for PAL and then Fed Minutes at 2 p.m. Oh, my goodness. Get ready, Chad Adonia. But good morning. What's up, Tim Whitman? What's up, Darty Bird? What's up, Maria? What's up, Nickel Bag? You rise, a wise. Good morning, baby. Zach Loris. Open face sandwich, baby. Will Ward, Darren, Jerry Wood. Forever young, baby. Good morning. And Najee Wolf, my man. The man, the myth, the legend. Najee Wolf. Good morning, baby. You feel me? What's up? Mr. McAllister. Aiden. Astro. Azel. Oh, Suchair. SG. 10% Alex, baby. Good morning. Good morning, Clinton. What's up, Oscar, what's up, Young Cap? Safari Star, Gregory Ruiz, good morning. Mr. Valetti, good morning. Mr. Riddle, good morning. What's up, Parth Laker J? Oh, he's in the house, baby. Good morning. What's up, Carissa? Magic called Johnson, Monica, Red, Scott, Jason, baby. Good morning. Oh, what's up, Mr. Stone? Smars, Option Smike, Big Stocks, baby. Greg Ale, oh, Pokey Mike. Oh, my goodness, Chattadonia. Good morning. What's up, Andreas? What's up, Gregory? What up, Justin? Inverse King. What about that Twitch? BDA Cookie Monster. Good morning, baby. Jumaj, Dennis, Charlie in the tray. Oh, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Zachary Lamb, Dr. Sway, Jumanji Champion. Wow, that's a good thing to be a champion of. Sedoni and Sasquatch, Dr. Sway, 8012, Angelus, Blazing Bob, baby, Blizzy B, JP Cult member, Yunan, Payday Devil, and Robo Hand Tech. Good morning, baby. Wealth Building Wednesday. Wow, you better get a long term. You better get a long term. So we'll see. And then I sold out of Target too. If you guys were watching that play, I got like four thousand dollars, a little bit more. So we're out of that. We'll talk about Target. There might be a follow up play, uh, but I am out of that one. But now, let us get into the news, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ba da ba ba ba. Uh, U.S. futures waver before Fed minutes in the pound climbs. Uh, U.S. equity futures fluctuated before the uh, Federal Reserve releases minutes from the last policy meeting. A sell-off in Chinese assets deepened. Contracts on the S&P and NASDAQ swung between gains and losses before trading little change. Shares of Target jumped pre-market on strong profit rebound at the, at the retailer, while Tesla's stock fell further after the carmaker's second round of price cuts in China this week. Government bonds in the U.S. and U.K. were broadly stronger, halting a run on losses that was fueled by concerns interest rates will be kept at higher levels for 
for longer than expected. The pound strengthened as UK inflation topped expectations. China's economic woes continued to weigh on markets despite a slew of stimulus steps by authorities. The onshore yuan sank towards the weakest level in 16 years against the dollar, and the MSCI China index of stocks was set to erase gains since the key policy meeting in late July. Minutes from the Fed's July meeting are due to be released uh, later on Wednesday. There's currently uh, no hard catalyst, which in turn gives the weak economic forecast more room to have an impact, said Frank Schodel, an analyst for active trades. Money market traders had held bets steady for the Bank of England's peak interest rate after the UK inflation print. Price growth data remained higher than expected last month as the cost of travel and holidays climbed. The numbers added to hot wage figures and U.S. retail statistics that rattled markets on Tuesday, spurring bets of a tighter central bank policy will be in place for longer. Minneapolis Fed, uh, Fed President Neil Kishkari warned that inflation was still too high. U.S. 10-year er, uh, raced earlier gains on Wednesday while the shorter notes traded stronger. In China, the central bank moved again on Wednesday to boost fragile sentiment with a stronger-than-expected reference rate for the yuan, the largest injection of short-term cash to the financial system since February. So far, the steps have failed to restore optimism, and market moves suggest that traders are looking for more aggressive, supportive measures. Most market participants are watching the development on the real estate market in China and the U.S. with growing concerns, said Andreas Lipko, strategist of Comb Direct. Elsewhere, European natural gas raised earlier gains as much as 10%. The market is closely watching for any developments on labor negotiations at several liquefied natural gas plants as walkouts at the facilities could disrupt as much as 10% of global supply. Uh, all you get is Eurozone industrial production, GDP on Wednesday, UK CPI, US FOMC minutes, jobless claims tomorrow and conference board leading index, and then Eurozone CPI on Friday. Day. Not bad, not bad. Uh, Goldman mutiny. Uh, bitterness is festering among senior Goldman Sachs managers over Solomon's leadership as CEO, and they are pressing the longtime ally president John Waldron to pick a side, while the 54-year-old dealmaker who has spent his three-decade career ascending Wall Street's rungs behind Solomon is known to be in sync with the CEO on the company's strategy shifts. He's also listened to and acknowledged frustrations with his boss without outwardly betraying Solomon. Tensions at Goldman are now apparent that in June, BlackRock Larry Fink, whose firm ranks as Goldman's second biggest shareholder, casually opined on television that there's an obvious schism within the bank. Uh, Fed minutes are due. A record uh, of the Federal Reserve's July policy meeting is due Wednesday, 2 p.m. New York time. The minutes are set to show only a minority of Fed officials favored holding rates steady over the remainder of the year. Uh, Bloomberg is predicting with a majority that likely is going to be displaying cautious optimism that the U.S. economy is headed for a soft landing. While the minutes may give a sense of relative size of each camp on the committee, when they met in July, economic data released since May has been altered. The balance has already altered the balance, wrote Bloomberg economist Anna Wong. And Investors currently do not expect another rate increase this year, though the implied odds of a hike at October 31st in November are higher now than those of the meeting in September 19th and 20. Uh, China's rescue plan. China's authorities are resorting to familiar tactics to put a floor on the market's economic slowdown deepens as the economic slowdown deepens and a crisis brews in the shadow banking industry. After two days, Tuesday's interest rate cut in the country's stock exchange asked some investment funds this week to avoid being net sellers of equities. According to people familiar with the matter, it echoes the playbook of February 2020 uh, when Chinese markets crashed in a worsening pandemic. The exhortations to invest firms uh, also last several years. Beijing has recently been trying to engineer a bullish stock market as a way to help boost sentiment among households and revive the economy. Other potential measures include a reduction in the stamp duty. In July, regulators consulted security firms for their advice on how to do this and now appear to be following through, though the effects have been limited so far. Uh, European natural gas investors boost bullish bets on market jitters. Uh, European natural gas has become the most bullish this year as volatility rattles the regional market for the fuel. Investment fund position in benchmark Dutch futures last week turned net long for the first time since October. Data released on Wednesday by the International Exchange showed uh, essentially bets that price will rise edge higher while shorts uh, fell by more than 20%. Net longs also reached the highest level since March 2022 during the first week of Russia's war in Ukraine. The move marks a sharp shift in uh, sentiments of Europe's gas market after a surge in short positions earlier this summer. At the time, most industry watchers are expecting gas prices to fall due to healthy supplies and muted demand. However, in June, a wave of extensions of gas works in Norway, Europe's top fuel provider, caused spikes. Speculators were forced to close their bets on further declines, resulting in sharper price moves and more extreme volatility. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. 
Uh, Coinbase wins approval to sell crypto futures in the U.S. They've gained approval to sell crypto derivatives directly to retail consumers in the United States. Coinbase, a subsidiary of the U.S. law of, of the U.S.'s biggest crypto exchange, has secured several approvals from National Futures Association to operate a futures commission merchant and offer access to crypto futures. The offering will launch within weeks, according to company spokesman. Coinbase has already been working on the derivative push for some time. It applied for NFA approval almost two years two years ago in early 20. 2022, they bought futures exchange FairX, which was registered with U.S. regulators, renamed Coinbase Derivatives Exchange. It currently sends trades to buy futures from third parties such as brokers. But with NFA approval now, Coinbase will be able to provide these same derivatives to users directly, first via Coinbase's main app. Wow. Yeah, again, Coinbase makes a lot on these products. They make more than just helping people buy Bitcoin. So I think they're already up like 2% right now. And then a hedge fund that sees hard U.S. landing says sell-off to deepen. Uh, the rally in equities is set to grind to a halt as investors come to a grip with slowing U.S. growth and seasonal factors that are likely to compound the selling pressure, according to Vantage Point Asset Management. Tighter lending standards and fledging signs of slack in labor suggest that the U.S. economy is heading for a hard lander, said Nicholas Ferris, chief investment officer of the Global Macro Fund. In July, the money manager took net long exposure for his firm's main fund to 10%, virtually flat in his words. Uh, uh, it's more likely towards September, October rather than August, but it could be underway now, Ferris said, referring to when seasonal factors are likely to exert pressure. People will be panic selling, and that's the opportunity for us to scale up. Okay. Okay, not bad. Not bad, no? Not bad, not bad. Don't worry, I got more for you. I got more. I got a little bit more, man, a little bit more. Uh, S&P futures are changed little Wednesday morning after U.S. equities came under pressure on Tuesday with all major indexes down over 1% led lowered by uh, commodity plays with concerns on China while bank stocks were hit by the latest warning about ratings downgrades. Treasuries were unchanged to the weaker end on the long end coming off some earlier strength. Dollar better than the yen cross but not doing much versus the euro. Gold is down 0.1 and Bitcoin futures are down 0.3. WTI crude is up 0.4. Uh, despite some signs of stabilization this morning, sentiment remains negative with the continued ramp and scrutiny around China. Key economic data continues to miss expectations. Structural pressures on property market continue to spill over in China specifically, called out by U.S. corporates for guidance cuts and M&A derailment. However, the worse things get, the more stimulus speculation heats up. Still a lot of discussion of nearby sell triggers. Uh, and then stretch systematic long positioning also talks of late summer liquidity and seasonal headwinds at the same time u.s growth sentiment continues to improve providing support for both soft landing and higher for longer narratives uh, july housing starts were better than expected though june revised lower building permits missed july industrial production report uh, expected later this morning afternoon brings the release of the minutes macro headlines remain largely focused on china zone gang international told investors it missed payments on dozens of investment products since last month in addition china new home prices Prices fell in July for the first time this year. Also, some focus on another wave of China growth downgrades. Elsewhere, UK core inflation unchanged in July, slightly above expectations, while headline inflation declined sharply, leaving it slightly above consensus. RBNZ left rates unchanged and reiterated policy settings to remain restrictive. Uh, target comp miss and guidance cut widely expected and company talked up margin performance and inventory decline. Intel scrapped planned acquisition of TSM, failing to secure regulatory approval in China. Uh, Tesla made second round of price cuts in China this week. Oxy announced a deal to acquire carbon engineering for approximately $1.1 billion in cash. ALC beat with surgical standout of strong growth in consumables and equipment, which the company is also a rare full year 23 guidance raiser in medtech. Uh, a, uh, quarter three results ahead of them implied uh, Q4 guidance soft due to China weakness. H&R Block beat, but key takeaways highlighted lackluster outlook for 24 tax season. And MRCY down a big uh, after it missed and guided below full year 24, which it flagged as a transition year. Oh, no. And then a uh, record number of Federal Reserve meetings uh, due Wednesday, or a record, I keep saying a record amount, a record of the Fed's meeting is due Wednesday, set to show only a min minority of officials favored holding rates steady over the remainder of the year. Uh, UK inflation remained higher than expected last month and the cost of travel holidays and holidays climbed, adding to the case for the Bank of England to raise interest rates again. The yen may have slumped to within a whisker of levels that saw Jap Japan intervene in the currency last year, but option traders see little need to prepare for a jolt 
quote from authorities in Tokyo. New Zealand's central bank interest kept rates unchanged for a second straight meeting, but signaled a risk that it may need a hike for the further time to tame inflation. China home prices dropped for the second month in July, first time this year. Uh, Fitch Rating said it may consider China's A-plus sovereign credit score, adding to the growing pessimism towards the nation's financial markets. Wow, he still got a little bit more. Still got a little bit more. Don't worry, we're not done yet, Chad. We're not done yet. Mm -mm -mm. Here are your pre-market movers. This is like winners and losers at the same time. I don't know if you can see them all. But uh, China's Zonggrong admits that it has missed dozens of payments as the shadow bank troubles grow. Uh, China home prices fall for the first time this year. Further signs of deepening property downturn. Sell-side firms downgrade China GDP growth forecasts as economic headwinds persist and stimulus disappoints. The PBOC injects cash, offers Yuan guidance as they ask some funds to avoid selling stocks as market confidence sinks. How much worse can it get for China? Economists warn of Japan-like stagflation as Beijing struggles to meet growth target. Uh, Fed minutes to show only a minority phase end of tightening. Uh, Fitch expresses concerns about U.S. junk bond issuers' ability to repay near-term obligations. Uh, bond investors bet on higher rates for longer as the U.S. economy shows resilience. Goldman says hedge funds sell Chinese stocks aggressively as growth outlook dims. Uh, BlackRock and MSCI are backing the future scrutiny in China market dealings. Uh, Japanese investors are buying up U.S. bonds. BJ policy tweak can lure more money back in in second half. Uh, Intel to call off 5.4 billion acquisition of tower semiconductors as China approval time runs out. Occidental to buy Canadian startup carbon engineering for 1.1 billion. UAW warns of slow progress in talks with the big three automakers. Uh, potential takeover for U.S. steel raises concerns amongst manufacturers. Tesla cuts second round of prices in China this week. TPG Capital approached EY about buying a stake in their consulting arm. Uh, UK headline inflation falls, but core and services hold firm. A rebound in Eurozone industrial output gives the block a small boost to growth. Uh, and then Schumer McConnell both vo voice support for a stopgap funding bill through early December. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, Chad, you got some plans. What time is it? I think we're good. Time to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I hope your morning is good. We're about to go over plays after this. So I hope you're ready. And I hope your morning's blessed, baby. Good morning, Chad Adonia. Clearly the good morning. There are things we need to think about. Tom, phenomenal work as always. Tom Olick there of Bloomberg Economics. Poor data, weak data out of China. Decent data stateside again. Upside surprise, industrial production month over month, 1%. The estimate 0 0.3. Manufacturing production 0.5%. The estimate flat, zero. It's a strong B. Sarah Hunt, Brian Weinstein, back with us for more. Sarah, let's talk about China briefly. This is what we're reporting this morning. The authorities have asked some investment funds this week in China to avoid being so-called net sellers of equities. Does that instill any confidence in you, Sarah, to start buying? That's a very difficult situation right now. And I think, I mean, this is not quite the outright ban on short selling that they tried a few years ago as well. But I think it speaks to the fact that you have this huge economy that is supposed to be part of the driver of the global economy as it's coming out of the pandemic. And you're starting to see some real problems there. And the kind of problems that we saw, quite frankly, globally in the 2007, 2008 timeframe. So the fact that they're having these big problems with both paying back from the trust company and a large real estate developer having big significant Significant financial problems does not bode well for their demand for the commodities and for other goods outside of um, what they usually buy. That is a big driver of global growth. So I think that the problem is, is many fold. It's not as bad as it was for globally in 2009 because you don't have that much as much interlinked in China with the rest of the world because of the capital control system. But I think it's still a problem. Brian, how much more negative can it get just in terms of investor sentiment? I can't find anyone that speaks constructively about what's happening over there. No, I think that's right. And we, we all know that, you know, that China can stimulate when and, and if they want to and, and in size, right? So so they have some structural issues. They're trying to work through them. People are bearish. It's in the price. The 10-year note in you know, China is 25 2.6%, which is you know, pretty low China. if you think there's any growth and inflation mm -hmm. in the future. Not bad. Not bad. Chattadonia. So China is a big deal. Again, it's getting pretty worse. Some of you guys are already saying, you're like, if China fails, well, we'll see. I mean, it's uh, again, the rates are going lower. The yuan is at like a 16 year low. There's a couple of things happening there, but they haven't really pulled out the bazooka. But if all this stuff fails again, I mean, I'm reading those headlines again. It happened like two, three weeks ago. They start talking, comparing like China to Japan. 
So again, you, you have another round of that today as just all of this data is just like, oh my gosh, none of it is, uh, it just, it does look like Japan, but they have to bring out the big guns. So we'll see. But Chad, get ready for some plays. Uh, I'm going to wait for, uh, what's it called? You got a little time for your play. So I hope you're ready. But as far as pre-market movers now today, Target, they're up 7% on earnings. TJ Maxx, 36 on earnings. Newcore, 3.2 on earnings. Coinbase, uh, we went over that news about the futures. They're up 3.2 right now. Uh, GEHC, GE Healthcare, they're up. Wells Fargo uh, initiates overweight. JP Morgan, they upgraded PXD. Uh, Dollar General is up on Target Sympathy. Same thing with Walmart. Uh, DLO is up 30%. We saw that yesterday. Earnings, and they appoint former Melo, uh, Melly CFO as the new uh, co-CEO. Cava, they're up 9.1 on earnings. That's the recent IPO. XPOF uh, had a CEO insider buy. They're up 7.5. INTR, City Upgrade, MGNI, Evercore ISI Upgrade, HRB Earnings, and they raised their dividend. Uh, EURN is up 4.6%. VLCC Purchase Agreement. Uh, STNE is up on a DLO Sympathy. Uh, GSMG is up 42%, 20 million private placement. Aurora is just up 19 for no reason. Same thing with TTOO. Uh, MNOV is up 9.5. They announced new EU patent covering MN001. And then AMTX is up uh, 9% on a UBS upgrade. ANGO, FDA breakthrough device designation for AngioVac system. They're up 8.4. Uh, Lunar's up 5. STBX, they unveil an AI voice to image capability. They're up 3%. As far as lower, SE is down 3 3.5. They got downgraded by City. They also had bad earnings yesterday. Uh, Tesla is down on the further China price cuts, and I think a lot of uh, the other China EVs are too. And then Coharis uh, down 20% off of earnings. TSEM down 10 as Intel uh, terminates proposed acquisition. Uh, Mercy, Mercury Systems down 9.7 earnings in the appointment of permanent CFO. Uh, ARHS, they offered 12 million shares uh, offering for holders. Uh, let's see. IMPL going notice delays 10 K, uh, RVLP 5 million registered direct offering. And then all the China plays are down. Not bad. Not bad. So Chad, that being said, you've heard the pre-market movers. You've heard about China. Yeah, you've heard a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? You've heard a lot of different things. So it's very, very simple, Chad. I need your first play of the day. I need you to post your first play of the day in the chat. I need you to post it. What you got for me? What you got for me? Post it in the chat. Let's go. Let's go, baby. What do you got? Micron puts. Puts on NVIDIA, puts on Tesla, Yang calls, short target, coin buys, NVIDIA to 350, coin calls, sell spy puts, STNE, spy puts, Ford stock, target puts, UVXY, NVIDIA all in, KRE puts, JP Morgan sub 150, buy S&P 500, target earnings continuation, Apple, Amazon, spy, PayPal calls, thinking about Teladoc to the long term, rolling ANET, MP calls, Bank of America on the radar, sitting on hands, adding the long term, no plays, 10% cash, looking into Walmart calls, HD puts, SQQ, spy credit spreads, FXI 26 put, yen long, like the video, Tesla puts, Mara credit spread, Baba puts, punting, buying NQ, Becky calls, FXI, Netflix puts, swing spy shares, SQM calls, balance the port with some spy daily calls, the video ports, still shorting gold, SONN long, put, 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 Kenview 30, Amazon, SQQ, Carvana, QQQ, Yellen, JD calls, buying GM and Ford, VLO, all in on margin, Tesla puts, buying Yang daily, watching price action, X calls, thinking about clapped REIT calls, and then watching TSM and SMCI, YCL long, Target puts S. <laughs> oh man, <coughs> excuse me. S. E. puts M. P. W. Up calls Tesla September Carvana and the last play, baby. Jesus loves you. Upstart calls Target for the long term and then Barbenheimer puts. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So Chattadonia. Hey Amen. Where are we at? I'm have to. I'm switching it to members only now for the chat, y'all. That's it. I, I had to ban like five people for whatever the reason be. So Twitch, uh, you could go there. If not, uh, it's a good day too because you guys think I'm an asshole when I lose money. I just realized like four and a half grand already. Okay, so that's before I even woke. That's by the time I took a shit. So I'm just telling you now though. I get a good attitude if you want to be here, especially on Fed Day. Otherwise, nobody gives a shit. You know what I'm saying? Because the members is ready to go, baby. It's focus mode. 
let's have again i'm punting today i don't i don't plan on doing anything crazy so we'll see i'll get you guys some call outs we'll have some fun have a good attitude you are loved and blessed but chad uh i got a couple of plays for you we still got a little bit of time i'm gonna be watching target tjx coin uh again all of those plays all had news again target tjx i don't have a play on tjx we already sold out of target but there could be a continuation there so watch out for that again coin on the futures xpof literally ceo just bought in so i think that one will be interesting uh and then mnox uh this is another mnox and ango these are two uh biotech datas so that's going to be the key right there. And then Telsa, still watching from yesterday. And then Visa, I didn't see it there on the news. It's kind of down, but they are getting, uh, I believe, investigated uh, by the Department of Just Justice or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that is pretty much it. So, Chad, you got like 10 seconds. You got like 10 seconds. Oh, my goodness. Are you ready? Not till the bell. It's not 10 seconds to the bell, baby. It's 10 seconds before we pay homage to a very special and important group of people here every single morning before we try to chase a dollar, before we try to enrich ourselves. We must pay that homage and say shout out to the veterans of the United States of America. Why? Because they have sacrificed more than most of us ever have and ever will. Even their families have. And regardless if people show them love or not, they still do it and show up and have made that sacrifice. So veterans, God bless all of you. Thank you so much for for your service and I encourage all of you to show that love and appreciation to those who deserve it so God bless you veterans shout out to the vets and big shout out to anybody else out there helping out their local community all the doctors nurses teachers firefighters police officers the garbage men the janitors the coaches the nonprofits, anybody helping and giving back I hope you know you appreciate it as well too baby but ladies and gentlemen please rise Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Send it to Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Uh, Horna, let's go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Chad Adonia. Chad Adonia. Chad Adonia. Good morning. Good morning, baby. Are you ready for it? I hope you're ready for it. That's a good morning. It's a good morning. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Miss you, Joshy. Why you? I've seen you every day. Let's go, baby. Amen. It's a blessing. We made it here today. So, Chattadonia, let's go. Let's have a great day. I think I said we got a minute and forty-seven seconds. We went over all the plays. Everyone's still freaking at China. China stocks aren't at the low. You had some UK stuff that's messing with the dollar. The yen is getting blown out right now to a previous intervention low. You had price raises, cuts in Tesla. You know what I'm saying? You got a couple of things. And then, like we said, just a lot of individual news. So I got like two or three biotechs uh, with data from the morning. Then you got two or three retail stocks. And then you got like one CEO buy. And then uh, I what, a little visa, a little visa investigation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ross and Cava. Cava did good as well, too. So call out any place. Uh, we got like about one minute here. Uh, I could open up the chat. Just you guys be nice. Don't be little assholes again. Uh, we'll call it a day, and we love you. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? Have fun. That's a stay focused. Have fun, but stay focused. That's all. There's people getting to the bag early. I don't know why. That's it. You got to be nice to each other. There's no point. There's no point. We didn't call you to not wake up this early to not be nice. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, you just, that's, that's uh, honestly, are you okay? That's what I'll ask you. Like, low key, for real though, is like, you know, that's what you do to people. It's like, if someone ever insults you, you should probably look at them and ask them, like, seriously, ask them if they're okay. Because, uh, that, again, that says a lot here at six in the morning if you're sad. But let, hopefully, we make it a good day. Hopefully, we make it a good day. Amen. Amen. Mm -mm. Heading home after vacay. Well, let's go, baby. 
Let's go. So, Chad, you got 10 seconds. Call out any plays. Like the video. If we need anything or you have anything, let me know. Oh, really, Josh? Josh, I'll be praying for you, man. I hope you're good. I mean, everybody pray for Josh. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Round one. Fight. So, again, I'm already out of target. We've realized the profits on that. Uh, like I said, you got a couple of different plays. Visa kind of bounced there. Again, target or TJX. Remember target? Do you guys remember last earnings? It was like, I don't know if the target options have opened up, but right after they open up, it like might go crazy. Low key. Let's see what we got. Again, MNOX. That one, I don't know if that'll hit the same. Again, ANGO. So this one, they got to divide. Damn, they gave up the gains. ANGO is up a lot more. MNOX. Chinese economic weakness and falling prices likely to spill over into Western economies, says uh, PIMCO. Mm -mm. You still get the dividends on... Uh, as long as you buy it before X dividend, you're good. That's it. If you buy it the day before X dividend, you will get your dividend no matter what. So again, even on Target... Uh, I made those profits without the dividend, but then in a month, they'll pay me the dividend. So we'll see again. Uh, those bio plays, I don't know why they're not. Is my shit not loading? MNOX. ANGO. ANGO's loading. What the, where is that one? BABA down 2.3. It sucks because I'm, I'm glad we got out of the BABAs, but I want to get into something. I'm just waiting a little, though. Because like I was saying, the Baba Baidu's, they're not even like near their lows. Where is that one? It was the MNOX. Mm -mm. Evercore. Oh, MNOV. That's the one. And then Ango is only up 3%. They were up a lot more. MNOV, that's the one. Medicine Nova. Honestly, these look a liquid as hell, but these could be the hype plays if they end up running, but you're not really getting that movement now. Oh, and then my Ken view shows up in my portfolio now. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Baba, big candle. So again, like I'm saying, Baba, it just it has a lot of room. Whoa, Baba's dying. Whew. Maybe it just looked weird on that one candle. But again, you just had a Pimco comment. A pretty decent sized candle from Baba. But now back to ADA. But like I'm saying here, it's just like, Bro, Baba, last time there was an issue here, you know, we held this all the way through. It's like, they, they should be at like $84. So again, even like Baidu should be at like 116 So in a weird way, the China news has been getting bad, but like every time they talk about it, everybody has stimulus in the back of their mind. So just keep in mind with the China plays. What I'm trying to say is, I don't know if it's time to buy the dip on China yet. Uh, maybe wait till they get a little lower. Microsoft's down, NVIDIA... Uh, we have to check the levels, too. So, remember, we closed near the lows yesterday. Yeah, bro, you hit another new low on the week, 44.31. So, you went, like, two more points down. Yeah, DLO, that's the earnings from yesterday. Surprisingly, NVIDIA is still up 1%. That's crazy. Walmart on the low. Uh, now, Target, too. So, Target kind of flipping. TJX, uh, they're kind of giving up here, too. And then Visa went up. Hmm. HE, new low. NVIDIA popping. Mm. Yeah, that's crazy. Another two. So watch there. And where's our Genrack? Keep in mind, Genrack's done good every day. I think this is the first time I've seen it red. Overstock flushing on the low. They're down 4.6. Yeah, Overstock's getting murdered. Up's going up hard. Yeah. Actually, 20%. It opened up uh, 160. Coinbase on the low. Kava's on the low. Again, that was an earnings one. And then again, Walmart is reacting too. And then Visa. Again, Visa had something. Department of Justice on um, scrutiny for how they price token technology. Uh, but they've low-key already rebounded it all. Becky. I have not looked at Funko. I I've heard good things about them, though. I think if you are talking buyout, I'd look at the debt. Ross again. TJ Maxx did good too. Or is it R O S T? 
Yeah, they're holding. It's only 2%. Again, uh, even Target. Target had the biggest gains. TJX still holding three. Yeah, but Target's already given up uh, like half of those gains so far. Back to 131. GSM up. Oh, shit. We hit a, we hit a hype train, too? Oh, my bad, Twitch. Let's go. This has been a crazy morning. Crazy morning. Honestly, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of things. I want to make a play, but then, like I said yesterday on the watch list, bro, like I'm trying to punt until the minutes. Like I'm, I'm really not expecting it's going to be too crazy. Uh, my the only play I like so far is Visa. Uh, but then at that point, we'll just skip it. HE, take two running again, or TTOO. Yeah, that was running in the morning. That one, I don't. again, I don't like that play, but it's gained my respect just because it has held up. So, again, they were up 20% in the morning, and this play holds up. I'm telling you, I've seen so many people punt, pump this play, but it's, like, actually holding up. So, like, literally, this is held better than Tupperware at this point. So, they, you said they had an event. So, be cautious, but that's a runner, dude. I can't, I could not deny that one anymore. So, GG if you have that. But be very careful. PayPal, we're waiting. Again, PayPal, they have the new CEO... Uh, and then I thought that would have been good news, and they kind of just sold off there. Like I was saying on the watch list, though, it's like, I don't know if you've seen it. There's a lot of names that have sold off, like, you know, 15 20% since their earnings. Uh, I don't know if you've looked at uh, PayPal's, like, chart, but, like, go look at, like, Spotify and a few others. Like, there's a lot of names that have legitimately just went, sh like, knifed down since earnings. So I think there's a, honestly, I think there's a, a aura of kind of take profits, and reduce a little bit of risk in some of those companies. Uh, watch list is second link in the description, my brother. Did Yell die? Yes. I think so. I don't know if it has a, a trading like a mechanism. I got my real estate exam in the morning. Ah. Wow, Romeo. Let's go. Yeah, man. It'll be good. It will. It should be exciting and nervous. You'll do great. Even if you don't, you could try again. Honestly, bro. Uh, you know, that's the beauty. Shout out to Cole Real Estate. We've seen so many people like go through the test. <laughs> it's like, I would tell you like, oh, you're going to pass it and do great. But honestly, I've just seen way too many results. So I don't know how you're going to do because you might just like usually what happens. Everybody misses one question on the state, one or two always. Or you'll get the national and then you'll miss the state. So you could try as many times as you want. But I honestly think if you prepare for it ahead of time, you, you'll pass. The, you'll fly in colors, baby. Fly in colors. But just study for it. Don't get too nervous. And that's it. Just have fun. You get another shot. But you can save yourself time if you finish it now. But big accomplishment. See, I don't even know how I passed. <laughs> TTO, so that's coming back down. Target, one th it's giving up half of the gains. I mean, we've seen this a couple times lately on the earnings, so just watch out. But I'm, I'm done with that play for now. I th I wanted to do TJX in the morning uh, as a, like, roll everything over, but they're not even moving too much. We're coming up, though. So right now, SPY and Dow are green. NASDAQ's red. Remember, we had a lot of back and forth yesterday, so we just got to see if that ends up affecting us here. Yeah, the Tesla. Tesla did lower prices in China. It's weird, though. Honestly, I don't know if you guys realized it, though. But, like, the whole China thing is, like, it's kind of exposing Elon. I don't know. You guys don't have a 1,000 likes yet. I can, uh, Just a 1,000 likes remind me Elon China tin, okay? Elon China tin when you guys have a 1,000. You know, just I'll put it on layaway for you. Is China about to crash? Probably. I mean, they've done this before. Usually when they look like they're about to crash, they step in and do something. So assuming whatever, if what doesn't work or if they don't step in, I mean, this all looks like a one-way one way road to China's economic woes kind of coming to the forefront of the of the world. It likes climbing. It's okay. Again, it's on layaway. You have till the end of the stream to make your 1,000 likes, so it's fine. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'll hold the tin. Just remind me, Elon tin is the title. I'll be able to pull it up instantly. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Apple. Apple's in the green. Tesla. Win. I'm seeing here. Oh, where's Airbnb? I ain't looked at that in a minute. Oh, damn. 129. And then Uber, I think they're doing good. They're in the green. We had Lyft yesterday or two days ago. Lyft still holding up 12. <gasps> Boeing on the high. MQ. Uh, they had earnings, right? I think I saw that in the morning. Abercrombie on the high. 52 week highs for Abercrombie. Wow, TJ Maxx and Abercrombie. Mm -mm. AMD on the low. Again, TJ Maxx, they gave that up low key. It, just, it looks like all red candles, but they're up to Co Coharis. That's a chip maker. They had earnings COHR. They're on the low now. Wait, weren't they going up? They went down and then up, and now they're down 30%. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. This thing dropped, went like almost back to green, and then opened up. Uh, Coharis is insane, actually. If you want to trade there to go nuts with uh, COHR, I would look at that one. Earnings next week for Ulta. They've been doing good, I think. Uh, I think yesterday they were like one of the only names up on the long term uh, for the small one. Ah, uh, they're decent. They still have, I know the yearly price is a lot higher, but they're kind of pretty much near their start of the year price. Yeah, Aber no, Abercrombie's popping, bro. Anytime I've walked by it by the mall, like, I don't think people wear it like, I don't think it was like Abercrombie when you were growing up, but they, they sell. It's really weird. I, I guess it is weird now that I think about it. it, but it is relevant as weird as it sounds, but I do see them pretty packed and I think, I think their sales numbers are up there. Mm -mm, I'm in target. Did you double dip or are you holding from yesterday? It was 130. Not a bad price. Again, they had good earnings. They, they did, I think 60 cents better than expecting uh, again, but they still just guided down revenue uh, and uh, revenue and profits on the year. Yeah, Dollar General is the play related to Target. All of them and TG, TJ Maxx. So Dollar General is actually trying to move up. And they haven't moved too crazy. The Fed is going to be at 2 p.m. Pacific time or 2 p.m. Eastern. So 11 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, Home Depot, Bank of America raises price target to 363 from 340. Uh, HG's already up. Remember, they sold off a little bit. Anet's going up. I feel like Anet has stuck at 182 for the last, like, four weeks ever since the the first play. Tesla. Tesla's barely down considering the news. I guess they had 150 more likes, too, so I could give you the 10, but it's it's interesting. Again, where's Neo and XPEV? Because they react. I think they're reacting way, way more. And then it doesn't help that they have all the bad China news. Actually, not even. Even down 1.8 on Neo. Like, low-key, you guys are getting a lot of that cash open bid. So there's a lot of names that were trading lower, or they're like first candle. It just it looks like this. You had like a couple candles lower than yesterday, and then just the automatic bids came in. Amazon on the low. Yo, know, Amazon low-key kind of flushing. They're down 1.2, taking a candle into the low. Dollar General is going up. So if you're thinking Target, Retail, TJ Maxx, any of those plays, uh, just watch out for them. <clears throat> Apple's holding, and then I think Microsoft. So it's weird. And then Amazon's down. And then Netflix, they're down as well, too. Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer, 35 and then DCTH, that was the biotech runner from yesterday. Healthcare is doing good. Healthcare looks like it's doing good, but it's barely in the green. Staples are up half a percent. XLF is in the green, but barely. 
and regionals have barely gone green too. So don't forget about that. That was carnage yesterday. China dying. Low key. It's not it's weird. China should be really dead right now. So that's what I'm saying is all all, all morning is like China really dies when Baba gets to like 83 bucks. 83 to 80 on Baba. That's when we worried again. You could even pull up KWeb too, but pretty much like KWeb at like 26 to like the 25 uh 25 on there would be bad. Mm -hmm. Jumana Powell is not speaking today. No, we will be getting the Fed minutes, so we'll get writing on you know how the Fed came to their last decision. But you will not be hearing from Powell. Uh, I don't know if you have any other uh, speakers too from the Fed. Nvidia going red. They were up earlier. I think the Nvidia uh, Amazon's the weakest. Yeah, Nvidia might go red. They're only up a quarter. They're drilling into the low. Spy is holding up near the high of the day. And, uh, Dow is still the outperformer. Four, 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 four. So this was like the low of yesterday. Low key. My goodness. What do I think of Bill uh, earnings? Are you talking B I L L? I don't know. I've never looked into Bill. I've only looked into B I L, so I don't. I don't know. Good luck. Mm. Roku and Lyft now on the low. There's R V N C. Oh, Young Ken the view. Or J&J. J&J's back in the green. Outperformer, Spy, Energy. I don't know. Let me check. Mm -mm. I still have the Teledank calls. Yeah. So right now you have 338 names green on the S&P 500. And then 163 names that are red. Dow Jones, 24 names that are green. Uh, six names that are red. Intel's the worst. Disney's the second worst. Uh, again, NASDAQ, NASDAQ, 49 names, green, 49 red, uh, on the NASDAQ, the red is JD, AMD and Illumina green is old dominion freight, GE healthcare and Ross that's lifting it up. And then S and P, uh, progressive target are leading it. And then, uh, Agilent and waters corporation are on the low and then solar edge and then AMD, AMD is he weighing heavily on all of them. Bill, uh, Bill is just the ETF that holds bonds. So just be careful. Again, somebody asked about B I L L, uh, but Bill is just a bond. I think is the simple way uh, to look at it, and then be careful of uh, something that is not a bond ETF. And then Spy is still working his way up here. So again, ever since cash open, he was like what five minutes doing nothing, then all the money turned on. You're back to this is both the low and like the the low you bounced off and then like the low you chilled at. And then the next level is going to be 44.55. We yet to hit 44.26. So you hit another new low this morning. You're five points from that, you know, level we've been trying to eye here for the last couple of days, but has not came close to it. Mm-mm. Oh, I have TLT. Where's IEF? Oh, wait. 10 years green? Interesting. Uh, assuming I don't need the money, will it hurt me if I keep the funds in bill and keep collecting it? If you're talking, again, if we're talking BIL, uh, the ETF, the bond ETF, it should not hurt you. Again, that's exactly why I do it. So we have an old video on it. We've talked about it a lot, but like we even said yesterday too, depending on your brokerage, you don't need bill. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like if you all, if you have a Fidelity account, if you have a money market that is at 5%, any sort of high yield savings account with liquidity, you know, or accessibility, that all works exactly the same.
Mm-mm. Where's AMD? So AMD, I think, is like the worst on the NASDAQ and SPY today. Mm-mm. AMAX savings, even four. You just have to lock in the money. That's the only thing that sucks. The best thing is like a Fidelity account where you could just let it sit there and then you get it. The video on Bill, I think it's called uh, Better Than Cash or the Best Investment of 2023. Something like that. I posted at the beginning of the year when interest rates were first going nuts. Tesla on the high now. Uh, he's not green, but he's about to go green. And then Spy's getting his first cheat clay at the top. Not bad. We'll take it. And now you guys are like 50 likes away from 1,000. We're, we're, we're looking good. We're looking good. It's only been 21 minutes, too. That's the crazy part. So good morning. What's the volume? Six million. Remember, last couple days, it's been like super active in the morning, and then it like really, really chills out. The minutes, uh, like I said from yesterday, last minutes, I didn't expect much, and we had a lot of intraday movement, and then it ended up doing nothing. So that's kind of how I feel about today. I think we might get like a, a pop and a drop or a drop and a pop. I think you'll get a lot of action. But when it's like by the end of the day or by the opening of tomorrow, I, I, I have a strange feeling we'll be in the same price. Now, granted, anytime I thought we'd stay in the same price, uh, we would move like drastically. So maybe that happens. But we'll see. We'll see. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at look. Look at layaway. It works. You guys have a thousand likes, so now I could tell you the tin. Thank you for liking the video. I hope you know you're blessed, man. Y'all smile today, bro. Okay, I want some peace and love and happiness. I'm feel I'm feeling very like a hippie today. You know that I'm feeling very very hippie like today. So you know, just peace and love, dog. Peace and love. I hope you got it, bro. I hope you got it. So here it is. Here is the tin foil. It's a very hot take. I'm I'm honestly I'm so thankful that we don't live in 2021 anymore. Because if this, if I said this in 2021 and I said anything remotely not complimenting Elon Musk, you guys would go crazy. Uh, you know, so honestly, we, we should be proud of how far we've came. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to start with. Because now we could talk about Elon and like you guys don't go like insane anymore. So like honestly, it's a very big development. It's like it's going for, it's like it's such a level of maturity. I love it. Okay, but here's the deal. Elon's price cuts this morning. My tinfoil is that it contradicts his whole entire strategy with prices and rates. It makes no sense. Remember, the guy said when rates go up, he's going to lower prices. When rates were going down, he would raise the prices. China just lowered the rates. Why did he just lower his prices? ba da ba 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 Brought to you by Tesla. Uh, pandering to the party? Maybe. Maybe. That that would be your... That would probably be the best argument. Is that he's just doing this to be nice with everybody. But it just a lot of it is uh, very different. Or just highlights, again, China is just absolutely cratering. But then maybe it's not a problem for Tesla. Uh, as much as it would be a problem for Apple. So we'll see. He just lowered in China. That's it. That wasn't good, Tin. It's okay. It's okay. How much of your portfolio is Tesla? Just be honest with me. It's okay if it's 100%. I'm not going to laugh. I'm just saying. I just, I know. It's good, Tin, bro. I listen to the man. I listen to the man. It's okay if it's 100. It's not okay, but it's like, I, I understand. I get it. I get it. I know how you got there. I saw it. I, I lived in the same world, bro. I say I lived in the same world. That's it. You even talk about Tesla. They'd be like, buy it. This is facing competition. I don't think, I think it's all about their economy, but just in the, in the broad sense 
everything Elon has said about pricing and rates, he contradicted it with that move. Whether it's for competitive reasons or not, just I, again, and I would tie it to I'd be more worried about China. That's like that's what everyone's freaking out about right now. Uh, so maybe the companies do good there, but it's like I don't think these companies in China they're not like they're not trying to compete right now. I think they're trying to stay alive. Uh, whereas again, some are more cutthroat than not, but I doubt that. Uh, you know, when we're looking at demand and sales, I think they're all going through a bigger issue. Again, that's the data we've been getting over the last couple of weeks. If you haven't looked at it, it's showing like, again, even the deficits, how much they buy from them and how much they're selling. It's all going down. And that's with the uh, economy that's stimulated. So that's why I'm saying as rates are getting stimulated by the country there, Elon is also trying to stimulate the product. Uh, and I, I don't think that's for competition reasons. why has trucking outperformed freight and rail i think the infrastructure act and some of these like deals that have gone on but then also the the trains remember the beginning of the year was just der derailment after derailment risk and then again even some of this stuff related to commodities i think the prices last year were were too expensive and then i think freight and trucking bottomed out in pricing first mm -mm. Mm -mm. you don't tesla i like your stream but you gotta agree my tin kind of sucks that was well fuck you you suck too man that's you guys aren't good for tin it's tesla that's good though honestly never i, I apologize and thank you i'm glad i'm actually uh, i've revised my statement i'm positive one now on tesla you know why because I'm, ha I'm happy you guys still exist you know what i'm saying like i said I'm, I'm good i'm glad never mind no 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 i like him i'm like he's they, they're still alive he's like discovering an autobot you know what i'm saying like that's the, like I swear to like the Autobots are still that's it. I found Optimus like it's still around. Like the Tesla Optimus Primes are still like they exist. So I'm I'm happy. I don't know about you. I don't know what you. I don't know about you, man. Mm -mm. Peace and love. It is, man. I, I'm just like playing around with you, honestly. So if you can't handle jokes like that, if you think I say anything like that with real hatred or negative sentiment in my heart. Uh, I apologize that you grew up around that to interpret it as such, but it's unfortunately, it's all love or fortunately that's free speech. Well, yeah. And I'm like, I'm playing with him. He just said I sucked. So I think I could say F you and then just say, I'm kidding, man. I thought you were an Autobot. I thought that was pretty funny. No, mm -hmm. all right. We're cutting the Twitch then. I'm, I'm, I'm over him today. <laughs> just like that. Mm -hmm. I try to I said that on the what's it called? It was like a Friday after hour session. I was trying to explain it. And it's like, okay, I try you try to like, you know, make the, the, the thing and move on and you go from there. That's it. Mm-hmm. Chill out, Bumblebee. Minutes are going to be at 2 p.m. Amazon... I say 2 p.m. No one's expecting anything. We're gonna we're gonna have to sit here for what three hours? Three hours. You either go through two or three levels, or we come back. Tesla's now in the green, so they're up. They've been up there. Yes, Coinbase releasing the futures. They've already kind of had it. It's not as big of a step, but it's still good news for them. And then it's they're just gonna be making money left and right on all that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Twitch is down. I know. I just I didn't want to deal with it today. I'm sorry. Coinbase is the enemy. No, Coinbase. I dude, Coinbase. Coinbase was the original on ramp, bro. That's it. It was the uh it was the original on ramp. I loved it. But then again, I still I surprisingly less people have talked about uh their case thing going on, especially ever since their uh uh what's it called? Ever since the uh the ripple stuff. So if you guys remember that, it was like remember Coinbase was dying and then the ripple stuff came out, then they were able to recover and it's like you're like halfway in between that there. But we haven't really moved. Spy's coming down a little bit. Mm. What about CGC? I like it. Uh, if you don't buy it. <laughs> I like uh no I was thinking Cron because I was gonna say you own it if you have Altria but I don't like the weed stocks man uh otherwise I would go with we were talking about it yesterday SMG I love SMG I don't own it but I think that's your your best way to uh to to get there more or less Nvidia red, Coinbase going down. Yeah, Nvidia is red now, and you're flushing. Uh, potential Walgreens. We're gonna wait for a little bit. Otherwise, uh, we'll go into. Uh, I want to wait for Altria. That's what I was literally looking at it yesterday. So like Walgreens is great, but I'm also thinking. Uh, I'm also thinking of something else. I'm thinking MO at 41. So Walgreens has, still hasn't lost from post earnings. But these two are on there. Otherwise, if Wal depending on where Walgreens is at, again, if they start to flush there and then all the other plays, I might be able to go through that. I think one of the stocks you mentioned sells cigarettes to kids. Yes, Altria, probably. Again, it's different, like, if you invest in tech, they just use kids to make the products. So it's just it's a little different. You know, Apple uses child labor. Altria sells cigarettes to 16-year-olds. So just be careful what you invest if it's on a morality budget. You got to be careful. Mm-mm. Again, Tesla up, NVIDIA down. I feel like that just sounds like market in the middle. Mm -mm. I think we do this to make money, not ESG focus. Bro, I heard it. I heard the craziest thing. Bro, I heard a, the craziest thing ever. There was a... There was, it was this Indian lady, and she was explaining... ESG <laughs> literally she was just going over she's like you understand that like net zero is like a made up concept do you understand what net zero means net zero is literally just saying we have no intention to stop polluting all we're going to do is keep polluting but then we're going to find ways to like kind of unpollute <laughs> so again it's saying net zero it's not so the whole concept of it is not to to stop pollution the the whole concept is to like act just to simply offset it <laughs> so it has no like if you really think about it all it's gonna do is like you're gonna have your western nations keep acting how they are and then we're gonna try to balance it out by doing other things in other countries and everything else so that that's the whole point it's like it's not really uh it's like it's not like you're gonna try to stop polluting uh it's just you're gonna find ways to clean up pollution while you pollute again net zero is the whole it's just, it's just a man-made concept of uh 
you know, trying to accomplish a zero pollution, but it's saying net zero, not real zero pollution. being nice no well that's that's the thing if you don't understand it it chances are 15 20 years from now all of our esg stuff is going to be paid for by the other nations that can't afford it it's actually pretty sad uh it's a weird way it's it's a it's a weird form of american imperialism in my opinion that's it you're just imperializing through esg <laughs> like that's all it's sad because you're gonna leave all these other countries where do you think we're gonna get our net zero benefit from where are we gonna offset everything dog <laughs> you're paying to pollute and we're just gonna fucking turn the world into more shit and have the other places pay for it uh, again it's a it's a wicked concept let's coin the term dis pollution now before they do <laughs> Uh, why being so negative i'm not trying to be no i'm i'm trying to explain uh esg uh, and i just i heard something about it and i thought it was a i thought it was a very good take uh and it was by somebody i forgot her name but <clears throat> excuse me she's a she's a character very good character uh with uh with some good insight i think it's good to know i mean honestly you've heard so much about ESG and investing, uh, I think a little bit more info on the subject isn't going to hurt you, uh, but you could take it however you please. To, uh, but yeah, that wasn't, that's just a reality. It's something that I even learned a little bit where I'm like, ah, interesting. Is Twitch clap forever? Nah, it might come back on later today or not. Just like even in the morning, uh, just uh, even though I, I made some good trades today. Uh, I'm in a great mood. I get uh, most times you guys will say you lost money. I made four grand already. I've not made any other trade. I'm happy, but I just, I don't know. Something in my spirit today said no BS. So I see it. I went members only on the YouTube chat. People play around. I don't have time for it. I click it. I close it out. It takes one button. My piece is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So it goes for everybody. I'll turn off this one too. I don't care. Uh, it just comes down to if it's uh, make it a positive place, be here. Otherwise, that's it. There's no point of playing uh, anything else less than a hundred. So I think it's uh, I think it's pretty fair. Mm -mm. I listen, bro, cha cha. While I'm working, let's go, man. You get the long term. That's all you need. That's that's the that's the way to show you heard it. It's the way to show you've heard it. Amen. And then again, minutes today, we'll have an event. Uh be on the lookout. I don't know if it'll do much. Bonds are actually green. I, I don't know if I could say we're actually getting relief today. So we're gonna find out. We will find out. Again, relief in the whole bonds and currencies. But all that things. Uh, again, I think the yuan is still clapped. WTO, that's old. That five minute WTO rejects China's Trump 2018 tariffs against exports, rejects China request to dismiss complaint. Mm -mm. 
a snap down 30. Well, that's, dude, there were so many names that went up 30% or down 30% in the last, like, month. That's what I was saying. It's, uh, it's like, actually wild when you go and look into it. Spy moving up a little bit. Ten again. This is the weirdest thing. The curve all throughout. Again, shy and te, shy and IEF are up, and I think the TLT is still red. But TLT is about to go green now, so we'll see. It might hit green on the on the thirty year and then chill out. But if market keeps going green and then bonds hold green, you might get a little bit of that. Uh, uh, you might get a little bit more of that uh, activity. Timu isn't Timu owned by uh, JD or wait who or is it Pinduo Duo owns Timu? Otherwise, actually they're actually in the green. What the hell is this? Pinduo Duo is actually up. That's very weird on a day like today. And then you're even getting a candle here. You're trying to go towards the high 44, 46. Nasdaq is barely red now. So if we do make a push from here, Nasdaq goes green. Spy's already up 0.18. Dow 0.37. Russell uh, is a uh, break even. Kava. My buddy said he got some good stuff off Timu. I just remember the ads from the Super Bowl. I keep getting the Timu ads still, but I don't think I've bought anything off Timu. I've seen a couple of the TikToks. That's about it. But they that's honestly very weird that they're up. Cava went up 9 to down 10 or down 1. So that's like, what, 10% top to bottom move? It's kind of crazy. TJ Maxx is coming up here too. Remember there was like, what, Ross and Dollar General? Google is on the high. SE is on the high. So SE was down earlier. Uh, they're still down 1%. It's very weird. I mean, cryptos follow if the stock market falls. Yeah. But again, crypto is also like, remember, they were the leader at the beginning of the year. And then they chilled out. And now they're like in that middle Marriott and DLO on the high. But it just depends. My sister shops on Timu every other week. Is it good quality though? Like, you need to do, like, a quality review of what she's getting. Because Timu, if it, if it hits, it might be there, but I'm just worried about, like, the Wish. Because that's it. Wish was super hot when it first came out, but then it just it just faded so fast. So, like, Timu was, like, again, I don't, I've never used Timu. I just, I know the, I feel like Timu is, like, the modern, it's, like, the modern Alibaba, like, Alipay or AliExpress. You remember all that stuff? And, like, Baba, but... It seems very, very different. Their commercials are weird. It's because their marketing team is <laughs> was socialized in a communist country. Okay? Oh, that's that's how they market. They're like, buy very good product. That's it. That's all they can say. If you say anything else, you disappear, dog. <laughs> Man. <laughs> but no, uh, I didn't even know Pinduo Duo owned it, owned them. That was the most, it was the most uncomfortable Super Bowl commercial, but then everybody remembered it because it was so uncomfortable. TikTok people said they shopped at Timu. Next day, the bank was empty. Damn. That's because, like, I think you've just given your debit card to, like, a seller. I don't know if it, if it does it work like Baba. Like, do they own the products or is it, or is it, like, sellers? Yeah, DH gate on steroids, uh huh. Oh, okay. 
It's basically an MLM scheme. No, it's not how MLM. Oh, well, oh okay. Pop. Oh, Outlook. No, there's a OTLK is a biotech with a approval this month. But oh, okay. Pop in two big candles. I don't know what's going on with it. Oh, okay. Possible sale. Oh, Linux. Oh, Link. Oh, it's already up. What is that? 15 or five? Five. I don't see anything else on it. I think they have earnings, though. Sponsored ADR ownership August 15th. They got a price target raise not too long ago. Yeah, they had earnings like two weeks ago. Mm. Kava CEO coming on CNBC. That sucks that they were up again. Watch OLK potential buyout. There's a word on the street, but be careful with it. And just in general, it's 5%. I don't think we have any other info. But then again, remember the last couple days, you've watched a couple of these develop, and then after a couple minutes, it just does its thing, either pop and drop, or it'll just keep running for ages. Oracle posting that. Let's see. I don't see. All I see is a couple days ago they had earnings. They got a price target raised to $19. I mean, they got value if they were to go up. It's a fairly new company. So could be possible. Just keep your eyes on it. Yeah, 3MX dividend if you want to make your purchase. But so far, Tesla, Tesla, Target X dividend didn't do good. Again, right? Remember, it just had that gap down the next day, and then we just got saved on the earnings. But uh, we'll see again. 3M out of my average down list, they are not the hottest because I think they could go lower. Bank of America, I mean regionals. That's the next step. Even J.P. Morgan. So. I don't know if you guys read the the Fitch downgrade thing yesterday it was awful. Uh, pretty much the Fitch warning yesterday, it implied everybody. So remember when Moody's did it, they downgraded like the 10 super regionals or the regionals, and then they threatened the super regionals. Uh, but then yesterday, Fitch pretty much said we might have to downgrade JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman, Bank of America, all those. So... Pretty wild take. New IPO today, Swin. Hong Kong pays brokerage, low float, of course. Honestly, it could be a runner. S-I-X-N. Keep that in mind, Chad. Somebody run the criteria ahead of time so you know when it comes out. S-B-G-C. That was the golf play that went crazy yesterday then came down. CO is live now. All right. Let's see. What time is it? One hour in, just under? I'll take a potty break while listening. Come Shulman joins us now in a first on CNBC don't, interview. Don't, Brett, don't. good morning. Right, I'll be right back. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So first, what, what drove these strong results? Double-digit comps, not a lot of retailers and restaurants can put that up right now. 
Well, Sarah, we saw really strong traffic in the quarter, continued momentum and what we've seen over recent quarters and really reflective of the broad acceptance of Mediterranean. We have a significant white space opportunity in front of us as we create and define the next, what we believe to be the large scale cultural cuisine category uh, with Mediterranean, the unique cuisine where taste and health unite. So I think the question, and, and maybe there, maybe this is what's behind some of the weakness, is with, with the first half so strong, I think sales rising 23 percent, why are you more cautious on second half comps, predicting that they're going to moderate? Yeah, well, we're mindful of all the headwinds that are building facing our guests, whether that's the increase in gas prices recently, uh, cost pressures on utility bills with the extreme heat we've seen across the country, student debt loan repayment waiting in the wings, and you do have a a Fed hawkish posture that's looking to temper growth to ensure that they tamp out any uh, reigniting of inflation. So we wanted to take that into consideration as we give our future uh, forward-looking forecast. There's also the inflation issue, which affects all, all of restaurants. What, what does cost input look like right now, and, and how much are you planning to pass on to the consumer for the rest of the year? Have we peaked? Yeah, we've seen cost pressures stay very uh, steady, very benign in, in recent quarters. And we've really tried to put forward a great value proposition for our guests. So uh, year over year, we're only tracking about a 4% price increase. And uh, we want to really make Kava accessible to all of our guests, uh, no matter what economic headwinds they're facing outside of their experience with us. Hey, Brett, I wonder how you think about uh, the concept, the food concept, uh, in the in the trajectory of restaurants and the history of restaurants sometimes being volatile trend wise and how long and why this should be more lasting than say others that were as specific as, as Mediterranean. As well, we say this is a way of eating and living that's been around for 4,000 years or so. You know, this is this is food that is very diverse in its broad appeal. Yeah, JB Hunt's about, getting we're operating destroyed. In 24 states today. We're operating in the cities and the suburbs and in small towns. And we've had the ability to appeal to both uh, gender diversity, ethnic diversity, as well as income diversity. So we've uh, we've seen this over the course of our 12 year history. And it just gets us excited to bring Kava to more communities across the country as we're able to meet the needs of so many different diverse uh, guest preferences, dietary restrictions, you know. If you eat vegetarian or you want to eliminate lactose or gluten from your diet or you just want spicy lamb meatballs and crazy feta, everyone can come to Kava and be satisfied. Hmm. Do you think the, the concept can take share at large in aggregate? And I guess how big do you think it can be? I mean, I'm not saying it's going to compete with uh, pizza and burgers, but I mean, what, what's, what's the upside on that? Well, as you see our country getting more diverse, palates are getting more diverse, seeking newer, more interesting flavors. And then you think about the health and wellness trends, right? People Dude, want to eat better, appropriates but they don't want to make sacrifices or compromises doing it. And that's where I've never we come been, in. bro. I and, can't and even hate on them yet. unique cuisine, I've again, never gone. where taste and health unite. And then you think about the fast casual segment as a whole continuing to grow as it really fits the needs of a modern consumer who's on the go, who wants convenience, but they want quality as well. And that's what we're able to deliver. Bristol on. Myers. You've heard the something Chipotle recommended comps. That's, that's what the market is trying to drug. figure out if you're the next Chipotle. By one metric in terms of growing store units. So Chipotle grew from 300 units where you are to 1,100 in about seven years and then 2,000 units in another five years. Can you grow that fast? Well, we've set a target of 1,000 restaurants by 2032. We've had significant growth the last few years, and we're uh, targeting 15% plus uh, annual unit growth from here on out. So we're excited about the opportunity again, how this is resonating in 24 states already across the country and looking to bring it to the 24 plus that uh, we don't already currently operate in. And just from a macro perspective, Brett, are you, are you taking share from others or are you just seeing consumers prioritizing eating out at fast casual restaurants? Yeah, well, I think if you look at the food away from home trends versus food at home, food away from home continues to increase versus food uh, uh, at home. And the fast casual category, again, growing as a category. So, you know, there, there's everyone out there seeking, you know, or fighting for stomach share. And uh, we're just trying to put the best offering for forward stomach and, share. Uh, continue to see momentum build never as heard we that. do that. All right, Brett, thank you very much for joining us. Off Thanks the for having first me. quarter, 18% comps, Brent Schultman, who is the CEO of Kava. Still to come this
Cava. I still haven't been. That's good, though. I mean, honestly, if, if your first earnings isn't awful, I mean, good for you. <laughs> Again, I just remember. They IPO'd recently. They had a high valuation. So it's like they could have easily came in with the bad earnings. That's happened many, many times before in stock market history. So they had a good report. I'm surprised it even sold off after that. I have not heard stomach share. He literally just said that. He just said, he said, we're competing for stomach share instead of market share. I'm like, wow. I didn't, never really thought about that. It's a good way to look at it. I guess everybody has stomach space. You're competing for the space in consumer stomachs. I I don't know. It's, it's like a little too, too deep for me. <laughs> you know, I'm like, that's very, we're getting really deep into this. But other than that, not bad. I'm surprised though. I'm surprised it actually held up. I need to try it. I need to find me a kava. We'll see. Mm -hmm. It's like drink space. They compete for throats. Okay, calm down, bro. <laughs> I think I think the liquids go to your stomach as well, too, man. You know what I'm saying? I think I think they do. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard it wrong until you repeated it. Uh, I heard it. I was like, wow, that's... I've never heard that. U.S. pleased with WTO panel on re-recognizing U.S. Section 232 actions on steel and aluminum. Speaking of steel, where's U.S. steel? How have they been? What did they say? Nothing. I was... That's, he said they're doing good. Something about growing. Everyone's trying to figure out if they're going to be the next Chipotle. Uh, that's it. There's a Cava and Encinitas. I wasn't impressed. I have to find it. I'll go. I'll go. You either love it or hate it. That seems to be the case. I've had a lot of chads in here either like swear by it or be like, it's the worst thing ever. It's big in Austin. I think that's what they're saying. It's big just even in general. It does have a... It has the makings of a Chipotle. That's it. Every restaurant has been like that. Any of these IPO restaurants, in a weird way, the only restaurant I think that has competed, there's only been two that have done good. Sadly, it's been Wingstop and Shake Shack. That's it. Otherwise, it's like everyone's trying to see, does this have the makings of Chipotle? Anytime a food company becomes extremely popular that's what everyone's asking they want this thing to shoot up everywhere like a chipotle or starbucks and they're saying yeah like okay is this going to be able to grow because if you're able to to demand that stomach share <laughs> I, i'm gonna start using that it ends up being very very profitable but it's just like rem there's been a lot of hype food like do you guys remember sweet greens so that was one that was hyped in the last i've never been to sweet greens in my life but everybody was really, really hyped on it. Even my girlfriend was hyped on it. I know a lot of people in New York like to eat it, but it's like, dude, they didn't, they didn't grow the same way. I don't think it had the same sort of okay. Are you guys opening up a hundred stores? Type beat. That's what you want to find out. You need to get popular in food. Once you get popular in food and do good, then the next question is, can you now start shitting out a hundred new stores? That's it. That's all that matters there. So as long as Kava, they got the hype. They made it there to the first round. So it's like if they keep going, the next level is like, all right, now open up 500 stores in, in a year and, and let's go from there. Yeah, New Yorkers love Sweet Green, but it's still, though, I don't think they've grown in the same respect, though. So, like, I remember Shake Shack and uh, Wingstop, when they first came out, they had hype. Everybody knew about them. You remember Rick Ross and the Wingstop? And then Shake... I don't know why Shake Shack got so popular. I just love Shake Shack from the moment I tried it. The moment they brought Shake Shack to the West Coast, bro, I was tripping out. It was so good. But but then again, look at those companies today from when they IPO'd. Their stores, I, I want to say, have almost doubled. <clears throat> Excuse me. But they've had very big... Uh, you know, very big growth. It's so it's one thing to get popular as a restaurant, but the next step is growth. So that's all I got out of that is how they're going to be able to, you know, it seems like they want to make more. We're at the we're at the middle ground with Kava where they're in between. They're going to be making new stores. How many? We don't know yet, but we'll see if it keeps getting popular, then it, it could turn into something big. Otherwise, uh, it'll just get 
it'll eventually slow down and then just become a food company. Shake Shack in the crinkle can. Whoa, ball on the high. B-A-L-L. Whoa, ball core. Big pop. Yo, check news on that. B-A-L-L. <clears throat> I don't know if anything came across the wire. Oh, wait, what was that? And then U.S. Uh, crude stockpiles seen as negative 5.9. Previously was 1.7. I'm not seeing anything on ball. All I see is uh, U.S. oil numbers right now. Mm -mm. What's the new Hong Kong ticker? What do you mean? Oh, it's like SIVN, the one that's coming out today. The IPL, I forgot. The chat had it. And then Ball just had a big pop. Spies at VWAP. I don't have any news on Ball. Mm. You are not muted. I hope you don't get muted, though, in the future. It's already a bad sign. PayPal's going up. Again, I like the 59s, but you got to really wait till it gets above, like, $63. Otherwise, it'll be in the same range. Bay has said the talks to buy Ball's more than $4 billion space unit. Oh, didn't we trade this before? Didn't we trade ball not too long ago? I think it was the same exact news. The golf play was like SCGE or SPCE, I think. It says Bloomberg M&A exclusive. So keep an eye out for that. I do think there was some old news on ball space units. It's only up 1%. Again, $4 billion. Where are they at? There's $17 billion now. They reported last month that Bay was among a group of parties interested in the ball business. Yes, okay. I was saying it sounds familiar. I, th I think we made a flip on ball before. Honestly, I just think I'm a hero. I top ticked it. I did 100 shares of ball, 5604. Not a recommendation. You will lose money. I, th I think we played this one. I don't know if it clapped me or not, but I'm down. It's like four billion would be a third of it. You got a little bit of hype, but then again, there's not real good follow through right now. Am I muted? I don't think so. Shouldn't be. You should hear me typing away. Yeah, oil numbers just it was seemed like uh there was a big draw. I feel like it should go up. Bridgewater's flagship fund was bearish on US stocks as rally fizzled document sources. Bridgewater, is that Ray Dalio? Uh what was it? New York Mayor Adams proposes new rules for rideshare vehicles. Uh-oh, hot dog. So watch Uber and Lyft. They might get clapped off of that. So Bridgewater's pure alpha, most bearish on developed market bonds. Bridgewater also bearish about the U.S. dollar, metals, and stocks document. That's from Reuters. Bridgewater's top bullish views were on Euro, Singapore, and the dollar. Hmm. Uber is going up on that, actually. So, again, Uber, the Mayor Adams stuff, is giving it an initial pop. Watch Lyft, too.
will NYC would require rideshare fleet to be zero emission by 2030. Damn. So they're going to be like, you can't even drive Uber unless you have a, what's it called? They say you can't drive Uber unless you have a, a EV. That's pretty crazy. So JD reversal. Did it reverse? If they're up, that'd be nuts. Yeah, actually. What in the hell? I guess it wasn't too bad. They didn't drop again. I, I was surprised Pin Duo Duo was up. I was very surprised. Ball. It's near the Baba's on the high at 90 bucks right now. Hmm. You think Lyft would Elon would buy Lyft? Maybe they're cheap enough, but again, they also have other exposures. But I think Elon could use it. Uh, he might be able to write off all their debt. But I do think Lyft at its low enough price, like I've said many times, it just it becomes for parts. It's not that bad. Uber driving will be like truck driving. They'll limit the hours of operation. Oh my gosh. Maybe again to require all EVs. That's a wild concept. If MPW cuts their dividend, what will happen to their stock? It'll probably go down, and then we're going to have to make our decision if we keep holding or not, because usually I'm not a dividend cut holder. Um, but I, in a weird way, it would still not be too bad, but I, I don't I don't even want to promote that. I hate that idea. <laughs> so it could end up being good if it's priced in, but for the most part, I, it will definitely have some reaction uh, how how far it will be lived on that that really depends but uh, the dividend cut is a it's a double-edged sword uh, but I say you I say we just stay away from it uh, I'm, I'm that's where I fall Uber. oh wait I didn't show you though bro uber though is like uh, it's like low-key a scam hold on I forgot to show this bro where's the chat who sent me it Asher I felt bad because I was like, damn, like, I didn't know if it was it. But, like, look, has anybody had this? This is what your boy sent you, man. This guy drive. He said Uber been scamming him. He said he drove. He said he had, he was online for 33 hours, took 23 trips, and they only paid him 150 And then he kept, like, going over all of them. And, like, he had, like, all these different ones. Like, and it, I don't know. I've usually, this is, I've, I usually I've seen people with a lot more. That's why I was surprised. He keeps, he has all these screenshots of him doing like 20 trips only to get paid like a hundred bucks. And I'm like, low key. I'm like, it is like, that is a scam. I, that low key you should work for UPS. But I don't, I've never seen an Uber stat this low, but that's why I'm like, I think either there's something going on with that or maybe they, they are scamming you. Mm-hmm. You say get out of Uber, join the military. Look at your ideas. Are you guys are like join the military? You're like join UPS. I feel like UPS is the number one job right now. It's like cause that and then all the UPS guys, bro. Have you ever have you seen a UPS guy? Have you ever you haven't seen a UPS guy make a video yet? Oh man, it's the best. It's the best. And then you go read the comments, bro. It's the funniest shit I've ever seen. Cause then you got you got a UPS guy. He make a video and he's like, "Well, there's a lot of people talking about how much money we're making, so I thought I'd explain it." And then they like go in and he explains how much money he makes, right? And then he's like, "Well, it's not that much. It's actually only like a hundred thousand, and then we get the rest in benefits, and then there's like overtime, and then and then you just go into the comments and they're like, "My wife's a nurse, and you make half of. She makes half of what you make." She saves people. You just, everybody's just like, what do you mean 100K is not a lot? 
What do you mean? You don't even understand. And then they just go off on them. I'm like, damn, bro. They turn UPS into like, that's it, bro. It's just it's UPS, man. It's like the most wanted and hated job now. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's a roast fest. It's funny. Cause I'm like, I did not, I did not think like that was the, going to be the reaction to like, you know, I, I thought everyone would have been like collectively like, all right, good. We're paying the, the truckers and the drivers more, but nah, it turned into like a little mini civil war on social media. X dividend has to be bought the day before. Yes. Because then it's able to record and settle, and then you could sell out uh, right after X dividend and still collect it. Damn, what the hell happened to Ball? I'm already down a dollar a share on that. They said flip, flip. But then again, that was, you said that was a Bloomberg headline. The fucking Bloomberg's always sell off right up, right after the news comes out. Scammers. But I might be down to average on that. Otherwise, I don't think it should move too much. We'll see. Should have kept punting. Should have kept punting. I do personal training. You have more drivers with back problems than any other demographic. I can see that when I would drive more, that's it. Like I sit down a lot because of the stream, but when I wasn't streaming, I'd be driving stream. That's why I can move around. TJX on the high. Just added Bloomberg. Or you added Walgreens to the long term. You don't trust Bloomberg. Walgreens like right there. Remember we were waiting for like, was it 27 or 28 to break? And then it's not even Euro quote. I'm standing up already. It's only 740, bro. It's only 740. Tilray's up 18. Uh, wasn't there something on weed legislation the other day? Otherwise, it could have been earnings. But yeah, JD. Honestly, man, some of these China names are not that bad today. I, I don't think I would buy them. I think we buy the extreme Baba and buy do lows otherwise they're they're cheaper now but in a weird way with how much we've talked about china just getting demolished these china names i mean you've seen them worse at other times during the year believe it or not and then google's up by a quarter google's coming into the high lululemon's coming up mos hawaiian electric on the high no way See, so again, this is why I said it's like it's a difficult play. Just like yesterday, this thing's going to move like 16 to 30 percent a day just to like go nowhere. But it's still obviously just straight knifing right now. Watt is on the high. There's ball that came up a little bit. China retail are all beating, but they're screaming the economy is bad. It's because it's that's really bad for them. So like their retail did not beat. It actually came in lower. What you probably saw with China is you saw 3%. So you're probably like, wait a minute. Why is 3% bad? It's because they were expecting like six. So that's the price. So it's like half of what people were expecting. So even though 3% is still growth, and when you look at the history, the background of China, where they stand on the on the economy, they're supposed to be, you know, like you you want like a five, six percent growth. That's kind of normal. Uh, you know, that's that's what you are actually looking for. Otherwise, that's why people are saying, is there something wrong with the global economy? So honestly, I mean, right now, I, I said it in the morning. People brought it up every, you know, every couple of weeks. And the more China gets bad, people bring this up. But just there's no way around it. Eventually, if China does not recover and stays bad enough, everybody is going to ask what this means for the global economy. It's not even a question. It's a it's a reality. So you have to think about it. If, if China 
keeps operating half of what we were expecting, that means a lot of the of what's going on in the world might get affected by half. Or again, that output, it's going to have to get replaced somewhere or it could even change some of the prices uh, to get what we need. <clears throat> Did I see that they will not release the unemployment? I did, but you didn't see the watch list now. Now I know. Now I know. Well, throw off projections for the rest of the world. It will, but like, even if you like fuck the projections, because again, China is a bunch of liars there. Uh, but it's like when you look at it, it just quite frankly, China's economy slows down. The whole ship is slowing down. That's again, that's I made a fortune on it back in the day. Similar logic this time around. It's just such a gray swan for everybody. Uh, but it's what we got to watch is to see if this somehow starts to feed into the broader like real economy. Then we have a problem. The yuan is getting awful. It's at a 16-year low. So that's how you that's how you know, and it's doing so under the guise of actually stimulating. So like that's the uh that's the craziest part about all of it. So like where is it? So that's why it's I'm waiting for something to move on it now, but like it's sure enough in the danger zone. That's it. But it's now this time, last time the currency was this week, they weren't trying to stimulate. But if you tell me, surprise cut, try to strengthen the currency today, and then it's still weakening. It's like, dude, this is like real weakness. So again, like I'm telling you, 2015, this is where I made a fortune. I caught the first ever China devalue in the modern era, pretty much. This was the, the good old China play I tell you guys all the time about. And you could see it. It was in one year. In like two years, we went from a very stable yuan to overnight just going crazy. And then you see what happens after history. But it's just like any time we start to break certain levels here, it starts to get concerning. But now if China's economy is actually slowing down, you have fake data that supports that. And then their currency is weakening. That means they are they are trying to stimulate something. This is all stimulative. If you don't realize it. They're lowering their currency rate. They're lowering their rates. They're trying to tell people to buy in, telling people not to short. All of this is stimulative. And that's what they're trying to bring out of the market. Uh, Raul, a little bit. Well, on decline, pressure to ease in second half, PBOC back financial news. Recent won fluctuations are normal. Sure. But that's the thing, though. It is a gray swan. Unfortunately, like if this hit a while ago, I would have been freaking out. But like lately, uh, it's just like China has been faced with so many problems. And then they, again, they just silence their way out of it. <laughs> they just don't say anything. They shut up, they make a couple of changes, and then before you know it, the whole Evergrande is just now, now they turned it into a pony uh, or a puppy rather than uh, than the, the monster that it is. 
I don't like, I still like China broadly speaking. I like Alibaba. I think that's a better way to put it. And I think China might get in the way of Alibaba. Uh, but other than that, I like Alibaba still. However, I would wait till uh, we kind of get through this next, you know, pop and drop cycle of the China names uh, to really go in on them. This was overnight. Strong FX. PBOC has most cash since February. Yeah. It's just, it's all stimulative. And it's just weird because there's an assumption that they could do more, but then they're doing something. And then that's, it's just like, it's an awkward, it's an awkward movement with awkward decline. And pretty much it's because Xi Jinping will not pull out the bazooka, but then everyone's like, maybe they can't pull out the bazooka. Cause then if you pull out the bazooka and it fails, that's it. China's done. That's all. Like if they, if Xi Jinping pulls out an economic bazooka, stops with this half-ass stimulation and just finds a way, you know, again, they were even talking about direct stimulus checks to people uh, like they were America. But if they pull out that bazooka and that doesn't hit, oh, they're screwed. Then it is going to look, it's going to turn into Japan, but worse. They're going to have massive deflation, stagflation, and then that's it. deflation if they print if it fails so that's the thing like you gotta you, you could print a shit ton of money right let's say they give out all this money but then somehow people don't buy more right let's say china property doesn't go up let's say they stop buying you know more teslas and neos and expevs and whatever else they're buying out there and they like give out all this money and then the youth unemployment doesn't even come down right uh if that happens after they like let out the big dog of stimulus, then you're fucked because that's literally what happened to Japan. <laughs> so Japan was struggling and Japan was like, pump it. And they're like, woo, we love it. They're like, oh, we're slowing down and pump it. And they're like, well, okay, we got money. We're feeling better. It slows down. They're like, pump it. But then like eventually towards like the, like, you know, in the 90s, the end of the 90s, there was an opportunity where it failed, where they printed and you didn't get cheers from the crowd. You didn't get, like, they printed and threw out all this money, but then you didn't have people buying the same way. And then as the economy kept going lower and lower and lower now, they had all this medicine, this stimulus, but it just, that's it. You, the problem got worse. Eventually, that's the thing that we, I've, I've said this many, many times before. Uh, it just, we haven't experienced that yet here in America. So we have, like, if your whole life, Anytime there's been a problem economically, it has been, you know, I say your life because this is mostly modern, uh, but anytime there was an economic problem, it was met with money. It was met with stimulus, whether it was through taxes, whether it was through the budget, stimulus checks, you know, many, many ways. Again, or even a bailout of failing industries. Again, all stimulus. Again, look at the BTFP stimulus banking problem shows up i have 150 billion dollars for you to loan if you need it right you fix the problems with by giving more money that's usually how you spark demand but eventually just that medicine does not work america hasn't had that happen yet it happened in japan and now we are talking about it potentially happening in China because, again, you've heard China recovery, China recovery, China stimulus, China stimulus, all these things over the last year, a lot longer, actually. But now their their economy is just not picking up. Country Garden overseas regulatory announcement. Just getting this China. That could be big. Keep your eyes out for it. Someone should have told them 10% is the best medicine. Well, yes and no. 
is saving 10% is kind of the problem. Because, again, if they get stimulus and then they save more than spend it, the economy doesn't pick back up. So that's the problem. Japan turned to savers. They kept giving them money, turned into savers. So that's that's the thing. You know why it hasn't happened in America? Because that would assume that Americans would save instead of consume. And we have never done that. So we'll see. I don't know what they're I don't know if they have a savings let me see mm -hmm. Where is China's savings rate? Consumer disposable income. It doesn't show their spending rate. <laughs> Did they start hiding it? <laughs> I think they knew we were going to start looking at this next. I see credit. I see bank lending. I see disposable income. Money, supply. Yeah, bro. Usually they have savings rate, but China, uh, here's just their disposable income. It's huge, bro. This is disposable personal income. I don't have it in dollars, but like, dude, the Chinese people are richer than ever. They're just not spending it. That's it. Or we're not buying from the Chinese the same way. Something's happening again, or, or all of this number is just fake. And then we don't know what their, their savings is. Oh, uh, did go to real estate, and that's where they got clapped. Could be. Let's see, yeah. See, America. That's crazy, actually. This year, no way. So I guess it's because of the bonds, actually. That makes a lot of sense. Since the as the bond yields started going up, so is the savings rate. This is America's personal savings rate. I've showed you this chart many times. Remember, even back in the day, that's why we were saying, you know, when stimulus came in, we were able to be very, very bullish. Bro, Americans had more money than ever. So now we're, I don't know where we are historically. We're still below like even 2018, but it's been coming up since that October low. But this is our savings rate. It's the ratio of personal income saved to personal net disposable income during a certain amount of time. Mm -mm -mm. based on monthly pay i think it's just based off of, again disposable income versus uh uh what's it called uh, your net the ghost towns yeah i've known about the ghost towns for a while that's honestly what they're trying to do now this was a couple days ago uh we had the report again china's been going through a lot of things uh, China says Trump era tariffs are U.S. Uh, are just after WTO rejection. China requests to remove metal tariffs immediately. But if you remember what China did the other day, uh, they, they made up a plan. They were trying to move debt. They were trying to move debt from the provinces that had a lot of debt and problems. And they're trying to move that debt to the ghost towns pretty much. So they're trying to say it's, it's like San Diego. If San Diego took on a bunch of debt and was about to go bankrupt... The government's like, let's move the debt to Ohio. They say they don't have debt in Ohio. And then we could keep giving you money in San Diego. And then we'll just move all the bad debt to a province nobody goes to or knows about or doesn't even have people. So they're trying to do a lot. Again, this even highlights that even the, the problem with their stimulus structurally, they may not be able to accomplish it. It just it may not work. That's why they're trying to like move things around and do all of this. Mm. 
Oh, Telsa's waking up. Core problem is that average Chinese shove savings in overpriced real estate. It really is, uh, to be <laughs> to be honest with you. Yes, a thousand percent. That's why. It's just the real. I, I told you guys. I have friends in China. I know like pretty big business people out there. And there's one guy I know who he, it was the last person I thought, uh, but like he got washed. I watched this guy duty. I think he's down like a hundred million dollars or more right now uh, because he he put a lot into Chinese real estate. So, uh, again, it's common. I know a lot of them, uh, who, all the people I know out there who do any business, they just literally, they move it straight into real estate. Even if they made money on real estate, they put it into a bigger building every time. If they allocate capital, their stocks in business, they would blow up. Yes. But it's, uh, it's, so, it's social. Again, I've told you guys in the past, uh, like China, like, if you don't own a house, like, you're not getting any, like, you ain't getting laid, bro. <laughs> like, you're not getting married either. So, in China, like, that's the culture. Like, if you don't own a property, you're not allowed to start courting people. Or, like, they will look down upon you heavily. So, like, you're not, like, if you want to start a family, if you want to go, again, you want to go meet people and do stuff, like, that's not going to happen if you don't own a house in China. So... It's like that's a that's a big part of it. It's one thing like the the investment side, but it's like your house is kind of it's like it's like who you are in a weird way. It's like it, it says a lot uh, about your identity. Mm -hmm. These real estate investments aren't rented out most of the time. That's for the second property. So China's trying to even stimulate second properties, but. There's a don't underestimate the amount of first properties. That's how the bubble started, essentially. But then it just got crazier and crazier and crazier. But then, too, they lost so much. Just some of them. So there was a lot of people who were waiting for their property. That's like the first Evergrande two years ago. They gave Evergrande all this money to the builder. And they were like, okay, my house is going to be here in a year. And then they're like, you don't get any house or money. <laughs> then that's what set off some of the dominoes. But... There's more first-time buyers, I think, than second-time buyers in China. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. I mean, that's sadly... I mean, so some people are saying that's what's kind of happening now in America. It's just not the same. So, like, it's not like our culture is saying you have to do this, but... If you look at it now, it's like as house prices go up and up and up and up and up, it's like it's harder to make a family. Uh, you know, if you wanted to create a family now and you wanted to raise, depending on where you wanted to raise them. Again, my option, like I tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what's going on with the world. But I think if, if you're willing to move and find places, you could you could accomplish the dream easily. But it's like they're saying that as, as prices and cost of living go up, uh, it will change the dynamic of the uh, family formation. Yeah, China notices the WTO panel. Forty years they had the one child rule. So the supply and demand is for real there. It is, but it's also like it's weird how big China is. And then Telsa's running up. I was thinking average down, but then we're almost break even. I don't think it was worth it. But if that could keep juice in, that'll be nice. That's the play from yesterday. Mm. Snap long term. What price is it at? Nine. I like it at like eight bucks. I think that's what we were saying. So it's getting a little bit more attractive. Like I said, let's wait till... A couple of other names get down here. If I miss, if things bounce, uh, whoop de doo oh well. Uh, but then if a couple more names, I think by the time MO hits my price level, I'll be able to start shopping. I love you. I love you too, man. I hope you've been doing good. I hope your girlfriend's long term has been doing good. I hope you've been living, man.
Oh, damn. I just checked. Damn. So, Chad, wait a minute. So, what's this? So, now I got another Chad. He sent me his earnings on Uber. This was just this week. What the fuck? This was last. Good job. Yeah, like, I'm used to seeing this. He was on for 15. He did 46 trips. Oh, but you could be online and not active, I guess. that's. I don't know if the other one said active. But he made $1,800, bro. So how you made 1400 in promotions and then 44 in tip, 93 from Prop 22, and then 300 on net fare. But like, yo, that's pretty 1800 bucks is not bad. It's 8 grand a month. Wait for it. I'm waiting for the tax. Someone's going to be like, "Taxes. Your car has gas." <laughs> It says act, online for 15, active for 10 hours. Well, good work, man. Yeah, what's a promotion? I don't know what that is, but good work, dog. But again, the first one the chat sent me, that looked hella scammy. That's Uber, yeah. That one didn't look bad. The first one I showed you looked awful. The first one looked like a ch uh, child labor scam. That one looked like a fucking side hustle where it's like, you can make $2,000 a week. Sign up today. Mm. is it said he took I mean said 46 trips active for 10 hours between August 7th and August 14th mm. promos are the way to go Uber can be lame about actually giving you them Everything stopped moving. Kind, I mean, we were a little bit more active. Today is, uh, it's like 50-50. NASDAQ has been red all day. But we're like still just, we're in there. We haven't done the three levels today. So that's the difference if you think about it. Uh, it's like we're 20 minutes shy of Euro close. And we haven't done the whole like three levels up, three levels down. Again, every morning, uh, what, since like last Thursday, even then, even on last Wednesday, three levels down by 830 Make your move again by the morning. Three levels up, three levels down. This one, one. This was two levels up. And then this one was two again, up to the third. So it's not going to be specific, but keep that in mind. And then Argentina's black market, Forex, weakens to 800 per dollar. Whoa, that's another 20%. Try, o is very attractive right now. I like 52 or $54, I believe, is when we got in. The only problem is that O is very attractive, but it was holding up very well in the last year. What I'm trying to tell you is that with all of the fears of commercial real estate, O could probably go a little lower if that gets worse. So that's the thing. I love my $55 price. We killed it when we bought it there, but the thing I'm looking at is that just remember, we got it during all that commercial real estate shit, and it's not like that situation got better, and O's yield is pretty low. So O is barely yielding like 5% now, uh, but that's just, that should be, that could be a lot higher if there's more problems. So pretty much what I'm telling you is that O is at a great price right now, just like MPW or the banks, but there's the risk of being a bank holding commercial mortgages you know, exposed to high interest rates, all of that. Mm -mm. One of those primary tenants are Walgreens, and most of the chat thinks Walgreens is done. That's good. I think it will be good for that. They own it. It's like weird. It's like a catch-22. Because then somebody is going to have, like, here's the question. Who pays for the real estate? Is it Walgreens or is it going to be O? So when Walgreens' leases are up, they never owned the property, but now they're like commercials clapped. I could buy whatever I want. Walgreens should be a net winner of that, uh, but vice versa. That means either O is going to lose or right when they leave, O should be able to replace the property. But again, that's the problems with commercial real estate right now. So all I'm saying is I like the price of O. I like the company, but I hope you are aware of the risk right now of it being commercial real estate tied to interest rates and all that good stuff. 
So I think there's just more risk ahead, but I do like the 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 price of it. Low bulls, lots of decay, low yield. It's solid. That's it. It's a REIT that's been around since 1988, uh, or I think 1978. So just like they own all of these properties. Uh, it's it's a established commercial real estate in the sense that there's a reason why they didn't get hit the same way. They bought properties 20, 30 years ago, right? They've been buying more and more properties, but like, what do you think their interest rate is going to be at? And and some of those properties are even paid off, uh, believe it or not. So if anything, they're just like, they're one of the early movers on real estate and they've been around for a while. So again, doesn't mean that they won't have risk, but if you're trying to understand why people, you know, eat up O at 5%, it's it just, it's always fire. It's the bigger, the safer. Well, not necessarily. It's again, think about their history. Like I'm telling you, do you guys have to understand somebody who got into real estate 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago is way different than somebody who just got into real estate. So what I'm telling you is like, dude, they have 80 years of buying prop. What prices do you think they bought their, their, their units at? Again, if they had mortgages there, like what do you think their credit lines and mortgages look like? Like these guys have been in this industry for so long that they're they're like they were buying all of this before inflation so you you kind of have a, a nice uh I, I would call it a moat believe it or not it's dirt cheap and their interest rates and the prices all of it dude it's just fucked that's it they they were they were first mover and they've been around for a while like and like they have to like purposely try to fuck it up at some point for it to become a problem Yeah, no, they killed it. I'm even looking at this. So my favorite, I'm telling you, this is my favorite chart. Quite frankly, you should look at this for anything you want to buy. Hold on, I got to save it. And then it will make sense for some of you who are like, why did they sell share? So this is, oh, but this is that chart I've been showing you. Just look at their money. How, like literally, how much do they have to spend on interest? And then how much do they have to spend on debt? So if you look at them over the last, like what, over 12 years now, 10 years, all of these numbers are relatively the same. And then they walk away issuing more debt than they actually end up start starting to pay. So like, look at this. It's not too bad, but they raised more money today or this year. They raised $1.3 billion. That's actually very good. Why? Because if they did it by issuing shares or selling bonds, all of that money is at 4%, 5%, if not lower. So if anything, they're doing good. But it's like over these years, all of their properties, it's like they're paying back billions of dollars of debt every year. It's like they're not really, they don't need to rely on debt or anything. They have interest, but it's borderline nothing compared to everything else. So just like they, they have a good defense in terms of their properties. to take out debt to buy properties. Yeah, and it's just like if you look at their cost, even if they raise debt right now, the good thing is that they it's cheaper than any active money. So right now their yield is like 5.3 prior when they did it it was at like 4.9 or something, right? You can't get money that cheap right now. You it would, and if they wanted to raise a billion dollars, 2 billion, they it would, it would be 7% right now. Uh or maybe maybe whatever depending on their corporate bonds. But the general idea is that the market is willing to give money to owe for cheaper than the current interest rate. Why? Because their properties are all cheaper and it's like their debt load is just, it's not the same. It's not as good as Amazon, but hopefully you see what, what I'm getting at there. So I like O at this price. I love it at this price. I'm just telling you though, there is still downside. 
I got in after listening to the stream in 2020. I got lucky. My local market, new Ford plant. Could have made better investments. Thanks for being here. I'm glad you got a property, man. Amen. And that's how you do it. And keep up the long term. And let's. And we still got more years, you know, God willing. Uh, you know, some of you, if you never made the first step, these next couple years, we got to get you into the first steps of, you know, getting you a nice long term that has both stocks, real estate, and, you know, getting you on the path to becoming uh, wealthy. And then the other end is going to be after you get your first one, you got to keep going from there now and build it. You have to pay to use TweetDeck? I didn't know that. Damn, Troy. Why are these fucking photos so big? <laughs> You literally sent me, like, the largest photo in the world, bro. This thing is the size of my, my whole monitor. So you made... This was 36 rides, 300... This was in 2016. Is that good or bad? I don't know. It was this like before you you had one twenty seventeen for two thirty nine? Thirty six trips online. It says zero book time though. How did you do that? Lift fees. Damn, they charged you a hundred back in the day. Gas was cheaper back then. Bro, I kinda wanna do it. I wanna be a Uber. I was gonna do that once. Remember back in the day? I you guys you I applied for postmates. Because I was going to make a YouTube video. I was going to make an account. I was going to make a Postmate account. I was going to Postmate on the weekends and then take that money and then put it into a Robinhood account and see if I could trade off of it. I'm still kind of down. I don't know. I would have to do 10 hours. 10 hours make 300 bucks is what it seems like. The other guy made 1800 You're running your own business. I was bored. I wanted to talk to people. Yeah, that's it. My sister, I think she did Uber, but then she, I was like, what are you doing? She was like, I meet so many cool people. I was like, you're fucking weird. <laughs> my sister was, I think she was older at that point. I was like, you know, you want to just hang out, man? I was like, I can introduce you to some people, but I don't know. Mm -mm. Uber in a G-Wagon. You guys know I have a Toyota Camry, right? Like, you know that I'm not like, honestly, like right now, I think my G-Wagon, uh, I think there's like a bunch of boxes behind it. Like I got to like move shit to even take it out of the garage. So unfortunately, I don't know how romanticized it is, but you know, I'm a, you know, that's it, man. I, I, I have a Camry. My Camry is not manual transmission, though. Corolla. Boom, 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 boom. I just sent the largest pick ever. Oh, no. Automatic is not halal. Wow, I've never heard that, but I'm also not Muslim either. So, regardless, uh, but no, I, I drive an automatic. Mm. You mean to tell me you don't always drive Lambos and G-Wagons? I feel betrayed. Yeah, man, so I hate to break it to you. Hate to break it to you. I go, I go to like normal places all the time. I was thinking, bro, I was just sitting in the gym parking lot yesterday. And I was just like, I don't know. I love sitting in the gym parking lot. It's something about the gym parking lot. And I was just looking. I was like, man, I really do be living the most normal life ever. I loved it. I was very, I was uh, I turned into a prayer. And I was just, I thank God for everything, man. And just the ability to just, just to be comfortable, dog, for real. Like, I don't know, man, if you got... 
nowadays like i don't like that's like kind of the wealth effect but i just hope you know like it just don't ever like because i remember other times so it's just you know if you got water food like you know if you're doing stuff not worrying so much and it's just like uh, you know you don't have to be wealthy or rich but it's just like to the point bro like you're living like a decent quality of life like uh, i just hope you take appreciation in that because i was just very thankful that's why it's like it's not like my uh my gym was the it's not like it's like an equinox but I'm, I'm looking i was looking at it and it was just it's like man bro i was like very i was very grateful to even have a gym dude and just looking back so and just remember you all have gone through stuff both good and bad and i'll just give you that reminder you know you, know, you if you've gone if you if you've seen the light you'll see it again that's all if you if you've been pulled out of a situation it'll happen again so amen but i hope you're also just like you know you came far that's uh it's always good to know always good to know that picture charlie surprisingly did not come up as large as troy's thumbnail <laughs> he sent me a picture of space and it was huge but honestly i think it just sometimes in the email if it gets embedded into the email it just becomes huge Yeah, BSGM still in that is uh, pretty much a liquidity trap. Like, I'm murdered on that. I think you could sell it if you want. My other debate was buy one more and then get out of it, but I'm still kind of waiting. I'm hoping I get more lucky, but I kind of view the play as dead already. Yo, coin is flushing. Coin at the low, $79 now. HE halted down. They were just up. And Spy's coming down. And Baba. Can Coinbase, US, UK, Germany customers unable to add PayPal as payment method? Uh oh, hot dog. And PayPal, are they coming down? Walgreens. Where's Target? Google, Apple took candles off that. Just in general. Yeah, they're coming down. A lot of things low key. This is what happened yesterday. Remember, we were up, but then the bonds started slipping and then individual names. So. Keep it in mind. I mean, there's eight more minutes till Euro close. Uh, HE got halted, yeah. But it was a very small candle. I don't know if it's news or a movement. Yeah, you missed the 1K likes tin. Unfortunately, it was that Elon's price cuts in China are contradicting. Microsoft. Why is Microsoft on the high? My goodness. Deadly shelling its Russian border. I don't know. Some of you might want this headline. It's a grinder moves timelines on cheaper subscription plans. New premium features. I think, didn't they do good on earnings? No, I thought they did. Oh, yeah, they had a pop and then sold off. Mm -mm. I mean, it came up on the wire. What do you want me to do? I just read the news, man. I read the news. Thoughts on shorting Eli if we sell if the sell off? Oof. I don't know. It's gonna come down eventually, but it's like I don't know, bro. Uh it's short term, you're gonna get an opportunity for downside on Eli Lilly and NVO. Uh the problem is that it's a very powerful drug in the long term. That's I'm telling you, I do not doubt Ozempic until people start dying. That's it. If people ain't die, man, nah, then there's nothing. Uh, I'm telling you, Ozempic is going to be the drug of the next 10 years. Sadly. I just know. 
that's it. Yeah, just you could tell Wall Street goes too crazy. Wall Street, it's not dark. It's reality. Welcome to welcome to fucking biotechs. I mean, if that is too dark for you, then you should not. Do you realize all biotechs trade on death, sickness, and just fucking money? It's the worst thing ever. So honestly, if if you're not comfortable with that, I would I would take a step back. But again, Eli Lilly, like I'm being dead serious, and if I I don't mean this as a joke, it's like for real. As long as there is no negative health consequences or death re resulting from this breakthrough drug, it is going to change. It's already changing the world. Uh, yes, millions are living. It's it's there's death, but death is part of it. Is all I'm saying. But hundred percent, I don't really like biotech companies, but I love biotech trades if that makes sense. And again, I own Abby Vine, a couple of others, but it is what it is. Mm -mm. German Scholl said Germany is going through challenging times. Economy came through crises better than many predicted. Yeah, it's not the only one. That's I'm speaking of the whole class. I'm talking. What was the other one? Not Roctavian, Rectinimab. I had it the other day. There's like three of them. It's the GLB drugs, Retrotrutide, Retrotrutide. That's the other one. Then there's Wagovi, the Trulicity. There's a lot of them. Again, and that's why I'm like this whole thing is great. So NVO, Eli Lilly, I like them. I just don't like the price. Now, are you ready for this? Are you ready for my hot take? I don't know if you guys would like this. It's a crazy hot take. And it's I don't want to do it now, but like if there was a little pullback, I'll give you the hot take. Are you ready? I don't know. Maybe I, I have to charge you for this one. Just like, just like 50 likes. Just get it up to 1,400. I'm a stickler for solid numbers. You know what I'm saying? Just give me 50 likes. This will call. I'll give you a hot take. It's a long-term hot take. Would I hold Eli? If I, if you already own Eli, like I hope some of you bought Eli Lilly when I was talking about it in 2020. But if you already hold it, I would keep holding that shit. Do not take profits. <laughs> Again, that's up to you, but not a recommendation. If I was me, I would be holding on to that thing like it was my fucking bitcoins that I bought at three hundred dollars. Because that's that's the same type of feeling I get from it. It it's not that it's gonna be Bitcoin, but I'm like, wow, this is changing the world and it's beginning. And I'm like, it's it's there. It, it gives me Bitcoin vibes, but it's not full Bitcoin yet. Uh, just because it's completely different and it's healthcare. Options, you're going to get fucked. You're not, again, and you might make a bag here and there, but like I'm, ta I'm talking 10 years from now, we, you, if we get the right exposure to one of these groundbreaking drugs, that's it. Uh, that's all you need. Uh, you got 50. All right, here, I'll give you my tin though. So here's my, it's not even tin. It's a very hot take. I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, all right, let's see what happens. Because I'm like, what if all of the plays I want, they come down to the downside, but then they don't really get too attractive and the market wasn't like pretty much, let's say we can't find anything to play. In a weird way, I would not even be against FOMOing into Eli or NVO. Now, unfortunately, I don't like the recent 20% move, but what I'm saying is that if there was any play that I was going to buy up, it would be one of these underneath the guys that I would go back and buy more throughout the next 10 years. Like, so simply, if I wanted to, just if I couldn't find anything, just straight up buy something that's up, it would be NVO or Eli Lilly, and then buy back in over the next couple of years. That's the only thing I could justify or think of. But am I going to do it? No, but uh, I was thinking about it. Where if it, maybe it does become an option. If nothing else works, if there's no other good plays, no other good value, the environment, the you know the, the clarity on everything going on, I really wouldn't even be a, be against it in that sense. Taking it on the chin for the sake of the long term. Well, yes and no. Again, it's risky. It's I wouldn't buy it after this. Maybe at four sixty, but it just went up another fifty bucks. But the whole logic I'm saying is that. I said it the other day, if, if you want to buy anything that is up right now and you're and it's not NVIDIA or Ozempic related, I, I don't I don't get what you're doing right now because that's the only thing I would chase. But like I'm not even down to chase AI. It's like just biotechs, healthcare. It'll be very volatile. But I do think with enough time, you could work your way into Eli. I still I think it's extremely late to buy it. 
it's best to ride the rocket up. Yeah, but like I just I believe in Ozempic more than AI. That's all I'm telling you. 100% hands down. You could disagree with me all day. I've seen real money created and real changes happen from Ozempic more than any AI I've seen in the last year and a half. So that, that's why I, I would want to ride that. It's like like I'm telling you, the, I would be down with a high price because I would buy so much more over the course. But again, that, that, wind, that wound us up into trouble. Uh, you know, example A, Airbnb. Now, I think Ozempic's hotter than Airbnb right now. Uh, but again, it's this isn't... Take this with a grain of salt. So that's what it really, really would come down to. Have I read my blog lately? Do you, you got something on Ozempic or AI? What, what you got for me? But I feel like, uh, I again, I just, I think Ozempic actually has it. Like it has real results. Like if, if AI swept it the same way, then you'd be good. Your chat AI blogging. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying though. It's like Ozempic, it's a limited market, but the, the impacts have been much more realer than just a, a chat bot. A long term. I'm hoping, bro. I'm like, I don't know why Pfizer don't make a Ozempic. Remember, they they back they backed out of it after getting everybody hyped on it. Just robotics in general combined with AI makes the idea evolutionary, easy to sell it. Yeah, I agree. again, I don't fully doubt it. I'm just saying it hasn't happened yet where you don't see the same, uh, you know what I'm saying? You don't see the same, like, wow, it's changing. It's like, this is a big change. Like, Ozempic, like, it just it swept the world. Uh, you know, you see it. These companies, they don't even have enough to sell. The stocks go nuts. It's like, they didn't even have to guide up. They just had to say, hey, we're just selling out left and right, growing at 50, 100% a year. <clears throat> well, that's what I was saying. If eventually, I'm sure down the line, uh, if there's bad side effects, and I'm, I'm sure there will be, that's going to be the downside uh, to uh, that's going to be the downside to Ozempic and, and all of these drugs. No, Novo is owned by NVO. NVO is a separate company. And then Eli Lilly is a separate. They have a different kind. So there's, uh, again, I think Eli Lilly is uh, Way Govi. And then and that might be NVO or they're Retrotide. Retrotrutide is for Eli Lilly. And then Way Govi is NVO. And then Ozempic is NVO. But I, then I think somebody else has Way Govi as well, too. Mm hmm. ball got clapped MP dub 750 still in those we'll keep him up for a little bit target falling Tar remember target is always a scam I sold it at 5 in the morning uh, I think, right? I don't know. When did you get that stream alert? So I sold out of my target at literally 5 a.m. Pacific time. I think. Yeah, or you had like nine minutes. You got the stream alert at 5.09 a.m. So, but like it does that on every earnings. I got out quick. It was a nice bag. That saved me. So again, remember I was telling you yesterday, I took some of those losses. I was like, man, stupid. I had a lot of stupid losses. I was kind of bumming me out, but uh, the target fixed it all. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy now with it but either way we just gotta balance everything out and then you know finalize these but i'm i'm trying to punt i'm not trying to play too many mm. is mr preforms in here i hope so i hope no no twitch we had it on earlier uh, just again, I just sensed it was getting distracting. So I turned it off for a little bit. I, I did that with the YouTube chat in the morning too. I said, I said, so I don't know. I was, I'm in a very good mood today. Again, I'm glad that I could act like this 
on a good day because you can't tell me it's because I made a bad trade. Um, but it's just like, you know, focus. I don't know. Peace and love. Uh, and that's it. If anybody, if you want to use your time to argue with me rather than extract good info, I'm just, you know, I usually just walk away. So that's what it was. I'll keep doing it too. It's fun. You know what I'm saying? It's good peace. It's good peace. Mm-mm. We sold off waiting for the pullback. Yeah, Target might have another one, but it's good. We get our dividend too. That's the best part is that we got to hit all the shares. We got 7% on the shares, and then we're going to get uh, another 200 bucks in Divi. So cannot complain. And then bonds are, dude, we're doing this the same exact time, I think, yesterday. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I like this target. You missed the first MPW, but going now seems riskier. I think the risk is exactly the same. That's the that's the thing. You got to realize when we bought MPW, it was extremely risky. Then the story changed. And then the latest earnings, just some things about the filings are bringing back the questions of the dividend. But like we're saying, if that di when we first bought it, dividend was in question. So... Uh, depending on where you're at with it, but it's just like, I think it's just as risky as the beginning of the year. So that little relief you had didn't really make it that much better. I think it did personally. Uh, but for the most part, it's like, uh, like I, I see what people are saying. I'm not, I'm not that oblivious where just like if that revenue issue, if it's not real revenue or if the comp again, I believe the company can really manage the dividend if they want to keep that reputation up. However, it makes sense why they there could be reasons where they don't. So everybody's been waiting, and it's been nine months now, eight months. So that's that's where the drama is there. However, I just hope you didn't confuse yourself in the beginning. When we bought it, it was risky. Just because the stock went up, it did not make it less risky. So hopefully with MPW for the long term, at the very least, the trade shares are different. But even then... Does it make sense now why I was telling none of you to ever buy this until it hits $7 again? Because it, just like that, we were up 30. You're now get your knees taken out. It, it comes down right away. So hopefully you get that where I was just saying the risk of this play has always existed. So now, too, don't forget about the cherry on top. The next cherry on top is real estate, commercial REITs. And all of the anything related to interest rates are getting blown out right now, uh, just as part of just overall sentiment uh, with everything going on. Push ups. Let's do it, baby. Chattadonia. So we're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. We've been here for two and a half hours. You got four and a half hours left, ladies and gentlemen. Four and a half hours left. Sitting is the new smoking. You got to get beside your desk and do 10 push-ups. Oh, my goodness. That's it. What would make me short again? Uh, a change in Powell. Honestly, man, like, I'm waiting for Powell. But the shit I see right now in, uh, in, in bonds, in currencies, in governments around the world, it makes me concerned. I, I, I would love to start shorting again. However, I just I don't want to make the same mistake of fighting the fed as explicitly i will fight the fed on the bonds i don't care about that again that's why i went for the two year and not the 10 year just literally think about that and if that that trade from a month ago will make a lot of sense uh but i don't want to fight powell explicitly in the sense of yeah we'll get our volatility but if he's not willing to change course whatever move we get will be short-lived so i could hit a short but it'll only last for like a, a week or two <laughs> you get what i'm saying uh, it'll, it'll last for a little bit, but if we don't get the real shift, I want the real shift. You know, last year when we caught the real, we made a hundred thousand dollars in three months, uh, just by understanding the data shifting and taking advantage of that. But I already have to pay my fee this year. I do think I'll get it back, but I, at the same time, I don't want to force it, but I'm ready to short again. Believe me, uh, especially with seasonality starting to creep in. But I also, the real answer is a shift. 
And like it, it should be an undeniable shift of language, of policy, of actions. So I'm seeing it in other places around the world, but I'm not seeing it, uh, you know, I'm not seeing it at the at like the face value just yet. So shit's happening beneath the surface that I don't like. But at the same time, you know, the things that rewarded me this year, you know, also tell me to wait for the shift as well, because that's it. Like in a weird way. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is what I've been saying all day. I'm like, fuck it. I want to punt. Let me punt. <laughs> like, dude, I'm just trying to punt. Give me the ball so I could kick it away from me. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but like, no play is a good play right now. Uh, and if, uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. We've talked about that, but that's where I'm like, if I could just keep punting until like it, uh, there's enough movement where it makes sense, where like, okay, that's better than doing nothing, then then I'll be good to go. But I just want to make sure I don't get in trouble. But I, there's things I don't like when I look around. But I, I'm not I'm not trying. To, I don't think they're weak enough to try to pillage them. <laughs> if that makes sense, it's like I know I know where I could I could try to score on the defense. You know what I'm saying? But the defense isn't weak enough. We need them tired. Like I need that's that's what I'm waiting for more or less. Target customers backlash may have been the least of their problems heard on the street. Wall Street Journal exclusive. I got a little target target negative article dropping now. Fed minutes, 2 p.m. Pacific time. But you do your push-up chat. I need my resistance. I need my weights. I'll do dumbbells first. So let's go, man. Relax your jaw, too. Chest to the sun. Oh, yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern. My bad. My bad. I'm on Pacific time. So 11 a.m. Pacific. Man. We did it. We made it. SEC, it's the Fed minutes. I'm doing my curls right now. Before resistance bands. Yeah, relax your eyeballs too. Stare at an object 10, 20, 30 feet away. Blink a few times. Blink, 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 blink. Woo. Boom. Just like that, man. Sex. Bro, it's so, dude, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Chad, you. I told you yesterday, this whole like no caffeine thing, I'm like starving. And then I eat a salad after the market, bro. By the time I go to the gym, dude, I'm dead. Like, I don't know how, like, if I, like not eating like a fat ass for like a week and a half, I have zero energy in the gym. It's crazy. No caffeine. And then just like minimal food, bro. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I do eat, but, like, I don't eat like a fatty. No, yeah, I was tired, bro. Because when I eat like a fatty, normally, like, I eat good, but then that's it. I was like, oh, my gosh. <sighs> my body's out of carbs? Probably. Any phrases for the minutes? Nah, it's going to be the same. Like, like people get mad when I do it too, bro. <laughs> it's funny because like, like people get hella mad when I do it. Cause they're like, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. But like the only thing we're going to get from the minutes, we're literally going to read through it and look for the words, some, many, and a few. And then that's it. That's all we're going to do. And we're going to say some of them felt like this. Many felt like this. And we're going to say the difference between some and many. And you're going to be like, why do you even care? But like, it's it's very specific. That's the only thing we're going to get out of it today. Otherwise, the thing about the minutes is that we have other data sets coming out. And ever since that last Fed meeting, you've already got a CPI and a non-farm payrolls. So you've got in a lot of data already, which makes these minutes borderline you know, outdated to, to a wild degree. So that's the only thing about it. The last time that happened, uh, we had big movement intraday only for the market to end up break even. Let 
I bought the low carb stuff. It's just weird, bro. I just haven't. Again, I changed up my caffeine, and then I stopped eating like a bunch of carbs, pretty much, <laughs> and just fast food. I've just been eating like salads and like small meals, and then just no caffeine, bro. But I've been, uh, it's good. I'm hyped during the day. Like I'm still here every single day. Uh, but I've been, I've been mad tired at the gym, bro. I've been mad tired. I got a good work in, workout in yesterday, though. Green tea. I don't really need the caffeine. Like, it's just... I, but then I said that yesterday. Like, I get hungry. Like, I could eat right now. Like, that's so weird for me. I usually don't eat till like, 1 p.m. Sleeping better. Ah, uh, yeah, actually. Mm hmm I'm convinced the devil created the Stairmaster. Honestly, bro, I hate it. Like, low-key, I'd be, like, really, like, impressed with these girls who do it. Because, like, I thought girls just did it for, like, a booty workout. But then, like, I'm like, how do they do that? Like, I'm telling you, like, most girls at the gym can just run me on the, on the Stairmaster. I couldn't even, like, they do it for, like, 20 minutes. I could do two and a half minutes, maybe. Maybe. I hate the Stairmaster. It's a stupid machine. <laughs> just fight Stu Like who's like Let's climb stairs On him No man No You do the Jacob's ladder I've never heard of that I know it's really good for you Honestly It's crazy And then bonds are flushing bro Same exact thing Happened yesterday So remember But I think it was around this time You're about 15 minutes off of Euro close But I think last time We started dropping around here the market's a little bit more pinned, but again, bonds just went red. 10 years flushing after going green for a little bit. Overstock another cheat clay. Tis a uh... all right, man. Spy now S and P gone red right there. You're back down to the low. Remember, we woke up hitting a new low, so forty four thirty six. Uh, this is where we closed. The low was forty four thirty two, and then you hit forty four thirty one. So again, watch out for forty four twenty six. That's going to be the next price that we're looking for. Mm -mm. Even NVIDIA back to 440. Again, ball should have punted. But then again, I read the report. They said there might be even more bidders. I just think we're getting cucked off that. So I kept it small with 100 shares. I think you could still lose like 400 bucks. But that one should be smaller. I'm going to hold that one. Oh, the, what the fuck is this, dude? You do that? So instead of... So you just climb the steps? So instead of climbing the steps, you just go on a... On a ladder? Oh, hell no, nah, bro. I'm not, I don't have the hand-eye coordination for that. Do you sprint or work on my cardio? Oh, I do cardio, but if you think I'm running, your guy, you got me messed up. I ain't ran a day in my life, dude. <laughs> I ran when I I played uh, basketball with the kids at the gym once before, and then I was sore for seven days. But other than that, I just walk. I just do. I do. I do a walk on ten incline at like three and a half speed, and that's it. That's it. I don't. I don't run though. I, I only do walking. I do heavy, intense walking uphill. There's a 100-foot ladder. Dude, I saw this snap this morning. 
my like snap i was just pooping and i was going through stuff i got like a notification i was trying to like go through it and then it opens up the snap bro and i see your farm bro i want to come out i really want to come see the farm i did not know bro you are literally like your shit looks like the thumbnails i would use during the wheat videos you know what i'm saying like it's crazy it is crazy bro it's crazy so I want to do, no, he has a real, like, bro, he has the wheat tractors and everything. It's like, every, anytime you've heard Snapchatty vibe, be like, oh, I'm on the farm. He would even give us comments on, like, the prices of wheat. Oh, dude, he is fully out there. He's, dude, there's like 10 snaps. I saw all of it. He was on a huge tractor harvesting wheat. He puts it on the other side of him. And then there's another fucking tractor going. I'm like, dude, this is insane. Full on operation. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah, I got to pull up. Mm -mm. Intense arms, but big no to leg day. I, honestly, I thought you were talking about yourself, Brittany. But then I realized I think you're talking about me. And then all the other chads who don't do legs, which is sad because I agree. I agree. I do need more legs. I need more leg effort. Mm-hmm. Gold is fucked. I've been telling y'all to watch out for gold. The best shot you had was debt ceiling. Uh, other than that, until the rates come down, uh, again, as if rates keep staying higher, it's just murdering gold like silently and subtly. Mm. What was it? I gym after the live. I can't. I don't do morning gym. I don't know how some of y'all do that. My parents leased their land to the Amish to farm. You should see how it's done without the tractors. I would love to. I don't know. It's fascinating to me. I don't know. It's like I've, it's like one of my weird phases, I think, ever since we hit the wheat stuff. But, like, especially seeing it. Oh, man. I, it's so, so fascinating. You like hummus? We're harvesting our bond. Man. You just asked the Arab if he liked hummus. What kind of question is that, sir? Of course. We'll help you. I'll help you do the harvest. I'll just, I'll probably eat it. Yeah, I could do the morning gym if I woke up at four, which is possible. But like, I'm tired after the gym. So like, look, like I can't be yelling at you, telling you to save 10% if I already got a workout in. You know what I'm saying? The energy just changes. Mm -mm. Like, if I was tired, I'd just let y'all slide. You'd be like, should I buy a PayPal leap? I'm going to be like, do whatever you want, bro. I'm too tired. I just did like 50 sets right now. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I couldn't be like, no, man, get a don't get the option. You want the shares and to get the 10% first. And then I got to go and I explain it. But I, I want to have the patience for that. If I was just like, if I already have my protein on the day, I'd be like, that's all you, man. Good luck. <laughs> I want to do it. But next question, please. Next question. But yeah, like I was saying, gold, uh, this is bad. Uh, I'm telling you. Just your last thing with the debt ceiling, this was your opportunity to keep gold up. But if these rates do stay higher for longer and we just have to keep playing in the holding pattern, the holding pattern does not benefit gold, unfortunately. So I, I'm actually not really, uh, you know, if you thought I was bullish on gold by the debt ceiling, that was the last opportunity. Uh, because again, with everything going on, it made sense. But now if rates are going to be higher, like go back to original theory, like I told you, you don't buy gold until they cut rates or until the rates stop going up like consistently. So now we've confirmed the pause, but why isn't gold rocketing up? Because we think we may be paused for another year and a half or another year. So if we pause for another year at 5% interest, that's another year where you could get 5% on paper than gold. So why would you buy gold? No, again, most people wouldn't right now. Uh, I see most people too, even for safety, they are buying the treasuries now at this point. When do they go bullish? Usually 
uh, when the commodity sector, it's a commodity, you know, in a weird way, like gold is very important, but gold has a, a, a extra element to it. But what you really should look at gold as is a commodity. That's what it is. You got to view it like a basic material, uh, even though it's more rare and has a higher amount of money. You know what I'm saying? But besides Peter Schiff, gold is the same thing as silver. Uh, again, it's used in products. It's used for certain things. That's how I would interpret it. But that's why it's saying, so like what makes gold go up and down? Interest rates as again, or demand economic activity that could spur activity or not. But then also interest rates affect commodities a lot. Is Amazon moving on that news? Amazon, Pinterest, BuzzFeed to show Amazon sponsored products. It's weird. There's bad Pinterest news in the morning. I don't think people react in. Atlanta GDP now rises to 5.76 from 5.03. I don't know if that's from the other day. There was news on that yesterday. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Higher economic activity means lower supply. No, it just means the more if more economic activity is being conducted, the use of commodities is required, right? So if the whole world is growing, they need steel, they need oil, they need wheat. Again, all of the commodities we've traded or you know about, aluminum, again now bring that into gold and silver. You need silver to do business, believe it or not. You know, silver is used in a lot of stuff, so is gold. Now, gold has a way higher price because of the the preciousness they call it a precious metal as opposed to just a normal metal i'm just saying compare them all like pieces of metal and pieces of metal any any commodity but when activity goes up there the demand for gold will increase so supply will stay the same but if people need to use things and they need to create and build they're going to buy and buy and buy and then again as the interest rates go higher and lower that can you know, force people into different commodities or choosing different alternatives. Yeah, gold did not outperform equities when interest rates were zero. There's no reason to hold. I agree. Uh, I don't. I don't think you should have a lot of gold. I think I have a couple coins. I, you know, I have a decent amount, but like I wouldn't. I would have only physical gold. And I wouldn't have a lot uh, just because it's like the real benefit of gold is collapse. That's why I said during the debt ceiling, that was actually the best moment to play gold. If it was going to pop and outperform, it would have been on collapse. So it's like big negative events is where gold gets its. That's where you outperform is that it, you really need fear for gold to give you extra value. I, a gold, I would rather wear a gold Cuban, to be honest with you. That's what I'm saying. Like, if I like that's any physical gold, I would rather have it in name brand jewelry than whatever else I have now. Like, if I I wouldn't buy another gold coin, I would literally go buy a a, a gold chain before I did that at this point. Uh, again, or I would buy some. I would buy a Rolex with less physical gold than a normal ounce, but I would overpay for that just because that would have a better chance of holding my money uh, and just keeping it there. But like gold, it held, I mean, I bought gold. I'm up like 100% on it from 2015. Uh, that's when I bought my gold. So I made money on it, but like low key, if I just put my money in a Coca-Cola, I would have made the same amount and I would have been getting a 6% dividend or something. You know what I'm saying? So it's like over time, I think you should have a little bit of gold just in case, but I wouldn't have anything, uh, you know, I wouldn't have anything crazy gold chains have copper and silver uh yeah that's why you got to know the amount so depending on 14 carat 18 22 24 that defines the purity and how much aluminum's in it so 24 carat is the highest but uh you know if you get like 18 carat gold there's aluminum in that shit and then even uh even rose gold too so if you buy anything with rose gold how you get the rose gold tint it's through iron or aluminum so it has more uh non-gold metals Or co is it copper? Yeah. Diamonds. I don't know, but here's the thing. These conversations, I mean, we could waste our time on them. 
I, again, I think it's important to not over invest in gold because you'll get fucked uh, because you listen to too much Peter Schiff. You just hit a new low. But here's the thing. Anything you guys start talking gold, diamonds, chains, you're talking all, all this stuff, right? The number one thing when you talk about this stuff is liquidity. That's the only thing that matters. So you could start speculating what's a good investment or not. But all of these assume you have liquidity when you don't. So that's the only problem. When you, if you want to buy, if you're going to spend any money on anything that is gold or physical, just understand that capturing your value is very, very difficult in illiquid markets, especially for fashion, jewelry, shit like that, even diamonds. It's, it is. It's so much harder to sell shit. That's what people don't get. So all the that's the bubble that I don't think people understood. Like the people who bought all the all of the collectibles, who bought all of the, you know, just everything. Yeah, maybe you learned it from NFTs, but like the hard part is selling it if it's physical. Because you may think it's worth a lot and it may show that it's worth a lot, but if you're trying to capture that money instantly, like you know, maybe the the watches or the the chains, whatever it is, they all sell for X amount online. But it's like you're not going to get that money and it might take you a month or two. Otherwise, you got to sell it lower. Uh, and that's the that's the whole liquidity trap with a lot of these items. That's how I, again, coming in, I come in with distressed stuff all the time. If someone's like, hey, I got a Ferrari. I need a, I need money today. I'm like, go sell your car. He's like, I can't I can't get that much. I say, well, I'll give you 30 percent off and I'll give you the money today. People will do that all the time. That's how like you get the best deals on luxury goods when motherfuckers get distressed or they want to sell it and i'm not talking i'm talking rich mother efforts i'm not talking like uh, again something there so you got to be careful that that does not become you oh i don't know if they feel me chat because i'll buy it from you you know that right you go buy a rolex now you're like oh yeah it's a great investment and then two years later you're like fuck i need the the, the ten thousand dollars right i'll give you seven for it i'll give you six if you need it today, otherwise, go ahead, sell it, pay the fees. You're going to wait two months. It, it becomes that problem. So I hope none of you wind up into this problem in the sense that don't justify these goods thinking that they have investment value, but then you just end up owning a bunch of liquid assets that if they hit the market, it would probably be worth a lot less. Mm-mm. Friends, dad's buy the 80k Porsche, 20k. Someone needed instant liquidity. Yeah, I mean, I've, I. How do you think I've gotten a lot of cars over the years? A lot of things over the years. I mean, I, I provide money. I'm here for that opportunity. Uh, again, I've been able to help some people out, and it's led me to have good deals. But uh, the the business of lending and being there, you, you'd be surprised. But the main thing I'm telling you is, I don't want you guys to be in that situation. So all again, gold, I think own a little bit of physical. Don't go too crazy. If you go above and beyond into that that other realm, just remember liquidity and don't ever forget it. The 6K I made was from a 3K ring. Damn, you flipping everything. You've even flipped... You flipping engagement rings, dog? That's crazy. Good work. My Disney Hallmark collection might not be worth what it is. It might be, but it's the time frame. So, right, you may own a collectible or you may own something worth a lot of value. You go online and it shows a price, Right. But how long will it take you to get that money is the question. And that's where you, you start to run into problems. Marriott's on the high. Again, we just had the GDP news. It was an update from yesterday's. I mean, nothing really has happened. We're like, what, 30 minutes off of uh, Euro close. Minutes are in two hours. The minutes are just going to tell you what happened at the last Fed meeting. So the last Fed meeting a month ago is going to explain how they made their decision, how many members on the Fed support the decision, who sees the economy as what, or they're going to talk about the economy, uh, the state of the economy and how they made their decisions. But 
a lot of it is just outdated. It's it's from a month ago, and we've had a lot of follow-up data in the meantime. I'd rather own gold mining stock. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, gold bullion is easy to lick. That's why these gold dealers are good. The only problem with gold liquidity is they buy it at spot, and then when you buy it, you have to pay spot plus one and a half. So you buy it with premium and then you sell it at a discount. But the liquidity in gold coins is pretty hot. And like I'm saying, if you could go online, it says spot price. You go to anywhere, jeweler or whatever, they'll, they'll usually give it to you. Mm. The Costco bars? No. I don't know. I, I told Lending Tips to get me some. But I don't know yet if he got them. Otherwise, I haven't gone myself. A premium on gold. It's not bad. It's one and a half percent. That's it everywhere. Anybody charging you more, they're scamming you. But one and a half percent is industry standard, at least for the last like 10 years. So you go any gold shop and say, okay, like you literally. So you go any of like legit gold dealer. You're going to go to the goldprice.org. You're going to go see the price of gold. You're going to say, okay, 1901. And then they're going to charge you 1.5% on that. So when you buy gold, they charge you a premium. They say 1901 plus 1.5%. So you would actually end up spending. If you want it, like if you walked into a gold place today, uh, it'll be what? 1902. Give me twenty-eight dollars more. It'll be like one thirty. So let's see. Actually, we'll click on the ad. We'll see JM Bullion. Where are they at? Gold coin in stock. Gold one ounce. Damn, they got it a hundred above spot. Oh man! So they should only be charging you like thirty bucks above. So this is kind of low key, a little bit hot. So they're charging you a hundred extra bucks above spot to buy. So that's uh, what, what percentage would that be? It's a lot. Those coins are not collectibles. Those are uh, issued by the Federal Reserve. Gold eagles. That's printed by the. That's melted by the government. Let's see. Ah, uh, one hundred divided by nineteen oh two. That's a 5% spot. That's a lot. So you see, that's the problem there. But usually, it should be uh, just, just a little bit above it. Let me check my guy. Oh. Yeah, even my guy's scamming you. You're fucked now. Something changed then. Mm -hmm. It's even they charge two thousand bucks. It's five percent premium. That's insane. These are the guys I buy it from. Usually they charge me one and a half percent. No, American Eagles, bro. I'm telling. No, I was buying American Eagles one and a half above spot all day. That's this could just be the supply shit and everybody. Remember last week, everybody was tripping out on it. That's crazy. That's crazy American Eagles have up five. Mm. Yeah, premiums change. Usually it's like one and a half. I've, I saw one and a half percent for a solid like six to seven years. Uh, again, I remember last two years ago, I remember on eBay, everything was going nuts like for physical. But other than that, that's wild. You could arbitrage it if you could find someone to buy it from at that price. But... But that's the thing. They charge you above. This is what I was trying to explain to you. They, You see the price. It says $2,000, right? So you go anywhere now. The price says $2,000. But do you see the problem? That's to buy. So when you go to sell, if you go to any of these dealers, when you go to sell, they will only give you the spot price. So if you bought it today for $1,900 plus the premium, and then you go to sell it to them, they say we'll only give you $1,900. So anytime you go to sell, they don't charge you to sell. They just give you the spot price to sell.
So that's how it is. Just They always buy at spot price, and then they charge you spot plus premium when you purchase. Ta-da! That's how it all works. Why the sell-off? Again, more China stuff probably. We were up for a little bit, but now, again, you're about to hit a low here, half of a point. But I don't think this sell-off was caused on anything specific. Apple negative. Microsoft was doing very good. Yeah, Apple's right break even. Even Microsoft, though. And then Amazon was getting murdered earlier. Again, we're like, what, 30 minutes off a of Euro close? That's it. One more low. I think we might do it now, Chad. 44.25 is in play. Four points away. We're going lower. I'll put out a stream alert. Just because I've been I've been waiting for this level for a very long time. Thanks for sharing, of course. And that's what I'm saying. Just be careful on certain illiquid assets because that's how everybody gets you. When you buy illiquid assets, you pay a premium. And then when you sell them, you're usually selling them at a discount. So make sure it works. 10 to 15. If you buy smaller quantities, the premium's higher. So if you buy one ounce of silver, you're going to get charged way more than 100 ounces. But even then, I don't know. If I was, if I was already wrong about the gold premium... I mean, I, th I I think it's safe to say everybody's fucking you. That's great, bro. It's five and a half percent above spot. I did. I would not be buying gold if I knew that. It makes sense why Peter Schiff is pumping it all to you. <laughs> so again, that's what Peter Schiff is making plus commissions, most likely, on every gold coin he has pumped. Again, you most of you would be better off getting in the business of selling gold than buying gold yourself. So if you really want to actually be a gold guy. You should just make a gold company and sell it to all the boomers who want uh, portfolio protection and have lost faith in the government after years and years of media lying. Uh, that's the only way you're going to make money on gold. Otherwise, I'd keep a little just in case. Not too crazy. Mm hmm. I'm going to take assignment of MPW on Friday, throw it into the long term. Am I dumb or should I buy out the contracts and eat the loss? Uh, how much did you put in on it? So how much are you committing to buy? I don't. I, I would be down owning the shares. If you take the loss, that's no point. The only way the loss makes sense is if you roll over. That's the only way. If you're going to eat a loss on selling a put and then you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to buy it anymore. Like, like that does. You see, I'm just, like it's just that's a way easier way to lose money than not. But what you can do is you can roll it over. So right now, if the $8 put is at like 58 cents and then you're going to lose like a thousand bucks or whatever the amount would be, maybe if you don't want to buy the shares yet, maybe consider rolling it over to another time frame so that you still take the loss, open up a play with more premium, but then you can maybe get it back. However, if you fuck up, it's the same result. So if it gets even worse in the next month, even if it flushes, you're still going to have to pay for it. So honestly, I think best case would probably be assigning it and then ride it out. I mean, it's 1,000 shares, 8,000 bucks. But, you know, let's say the worst of the worst happens here. Probably goes down 50%. You'll be down 4K. So compare that to the loss on the puts. And that's if it goes down 50%. We're talking about this company that has already dropped... 60 70 percent from all-time highs you know you're really saying it's getting very close to zero you could roll it forever but again you'll just be in the same position you could roll until you can't until the price is too much so you could refinance until interest rates go too high 
So you could he bought he sold this put and it's worth less than the next month, right? He could roll it over. The rates are lower. You could refinance that trade, start over, get a better rate, try again. However, if that play keeps going against you, eventually you're going to run into a point where the play is not the the option won't make it won't make up the loss you've taken and now the rates you can't refinance for for what you were already in you're too much underwater and then you're you're kind of fucked Dow turns negative wow so this low here low key was all all about the Dow last couple of minutes Thank you as always. I got you, man. Just not a recommendation, you know, as always. But hopefully run through the potential options. But it's like if you sold the put there, you want to buy it, you're worse. Either way, you have some commitment at $8. You know what I'm saying? So it's like whether you roll over or buy the shares, you're essentially tied to the value now at $8. And then keep in mind, too, the value tied to $8 right now. Here's the funny part about it. The value tied to your $8 put, 60 cents of that is in the money. So I don't know. Are you, you're on the $8 put, right? So honest, I would keep writing it out until you get assigned and then you could go from there because let this expire. But like, do you see this? If you're on, if you are on the August 18th put, again, this put is borderline awful. So what I mean by that is how much is it exactly? We're talking what? $42, 42 cents or 52 cents? 52 cents of this is intrinsic value. So realistically, this contract is only worth five bucks when you really look at it. So all of this value that you see this contract holding is legitimately just the difference between $8 and 740. <laughs> so there's no real premium on this contract. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. You're tied to the value of the stock at eight bucks. So that's how you have to be thinking, whether you roll it over or you, you end up owning the shares, who gives a shit, right? If you do the rollover, you're still going to be exposed at $8 because that's what you agreed to. You agreed to buy it there. So that's why I'm just saying it's going to be the same thing no matter what. You could change the vehicle the put would give you more flexibility versus actually owning it. But then owning it, you'll take the downside. But then also, too, it instantly comes back. You'll make up that money right away. So hopefully you get what I'm saying with all of it. But it's just like you right now, your value is already tied to eight. That's why you're even down. If it goes up 10, 20 cents, you'll be right back up. So if you do get assigned, let them assign you. But m maybe push this to the end of the week. Uh, but that could change everything, too. If it goes lower, you're going to lose more. If it goes up, you're not going to be down that much. But as far as moving forward, I just make your decision on there. But I think even on a 1,000 shares, it won't even be that bad. Can you show that again? It's very simple. It's an $8. Again, I said it. I was even going over it. People were like, oh, the MPW puts, they like they were great in hindsight and i'm like no they weren't <laughs> i really don't think that you know if you went from a dollar per to earnings to 280 on a 30 percent move it's shit uh and then even if you start narrowing down the time like again these eight dollar contracts you got them for 12 cents they're going for 50 it's like 500 percent but this isn't based off of like the like fear in the movement this is simply it went in the money from here and then just got 50 cents of intrinsic value so what you're looking at is an eight dollar put. The stock is at seven forty three right now, or forty eight. So that's fifty two cents from eight dollars, right? You add fifty two cents, that would give you seven ninety nine or ninety eight. Add the two, you're at eight dollars. So this contract is an eight dollar put, and it's going for fifty seven dollars right now. But I'm telling you, fifty two dollars of that is just the difference between eight dollars and and seven forty. It's intrinsic value. There's only five cents of real of, of extrinsic on this. So the value of this, what I was trying to show my man, is that it's not really about the premium because if you don't realize it by now, if you agreed to buy the company at $8 and now it's below there, your value of this option is dependent on the stock. 
So this is all intrinsic value. If this stock goes up 50 cents, he's going to go break even, most likely. <laughs> if, it, if, it go, if it reverses, if it goes down 50 more cents, this contract will go to a dollar. So that's what I'm trying to highlight there is just that the intrinsic value of it. The IV has been skewed. Well, I don't think it's that. I mean, my theory that makes the most sense with what's going on with options is that you've had, uh, you've just had three years of, of crazy movements. All of that's priced in now to the Black Shoals model. So when we were buying options and then a move would happen and then it would go up a thousand percent, it's because in the last couple years, the stock market wasn't moving like that. So if you caught a big move, it was a fat reward. In the last two years, it's been up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 20%, 30%, 20%, 50% pop, 70% down, 50% up. So like, factor that in so when like a 5 10 percent 20 percent move is happening it's not that special uh if that makes any it's very common why because it's been common over the last year or two to watch the market move like that so when we were making a net plays and we were hit remember we hit 18 weeks in a row of a thousand percent gainers on options why because those moves on those stocks were very uncommon compared to the last couple of years so those options we were hitting were going insane because of that reason so now the last couple of years you ha you have a very intense history of volatility that makes almost every move borderline fall within the range yeah that's it man 4425 you hit it Wow, that's it. All right, get ready now. That's it. You got one more spot here. 44.13. This is danger zone. This is parachute. If you hit 44.13 and we don't bounce, we're going to 4,400. If we go like right above and bounce, then we're, we're going to bounce up off of it. It'll be two levels, but this is a parachute level. So 44.13 is like death. So anytime it's kind of like been up here, it's a very soft level from the earlier highs here. It's like it's an awkward level. So I think that le it might maybe it has some strength though I could be wrong. Last couple of times I thought forty four two five should be a parachute, and then again air brakes came in very very heavily. Pump it up. All right. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. God bless you all. Good morning. Still got a many, many hours left in the day. Uh, we got what? Four and a half hours. Oh, my goodness. Five and a half. Six and a half. Oh, my God. You have a lot. You have a lot. It's nine thirty. I say only three hours in. So I'll BRB. God bless you. Poised to file an antitrust lawsuit against the e-commerce giant. Thousands of third-party sellers who ship products themselves will start paying a 2% fee on each sale starting in October. That is according to documents reviewed by Bloomberg. We're going to have more on that story later in the hour. Caroline. We are. Meanwhile, look, talking of Amazon, let's drill into commerce, shall we? Because the news has been thick. It's been fast. July, the retail sales coupling in pretty strong. And today, we've had earnings from Target. Profit gain for the company but really trying to understand where is the consumer how is it shifting how is it spending in this inflationary environment I'm pleased to say we've got an expert for you Rachel Tippograph is with us founder and CEO of the e-commerce platform Micmac who just has such a bird's eye perspective with how well ultimately companies are feeling right now and how people are spending are you surprised by the resilience of the US consumer I'm not because Americans love to spend <laughs> they don't like to save so what we're seeing play out is exactly that you know, to quote my dear friend Sutrita Kodali, who's the lead analyst at Forrester, what we're seeing in the market is that consumers still have uh, half a trillion dollars still pent up from the pandemic to spend through. And they're doing it. And they're doing it in despite that the brands and retailers are raising prices. Mm. So what we're seeing happen in these earnings is that retailers have incredible margins right now because consumers are spending at a higher rate and they're keeping the margin. And let, it's interesting, isn't it? Because Target 
everyone seemed to focus on, for example, their profit beaten this quarter just gone, but they look still nervous looking forward. What are e-commerce players seeing in the moment? How much are we spending of our wallet online or experientially instead? Yeah, you know, I think Target's nervous for all the right reasons. What we're seeing right now is that consumers are spending on essentials. They're spending on groceries, on alcohol, on personal care, pet care, beauty. They're not spending on non-essentials. So fashion, consumer electronics. That discretionary spend is going towards travel and dining out. So for Target, if they want to be optimistic about their future, the big question they need to answer is how are they going to beat Walmart at grocery. Exactly. That's really the name of the game right now. It's a focus on grocery to drive that habitual weekly shopping behavior. So I spotted something on that note that I think is relevant. I, I was going through the earnings call transcript because I love it and <laughs> getting the magnifying out glass out and getting clues. But they said there was a favorable mix of same day services through the digital channel. In other words, people logging on, buying something for there and then. Is that something that Target can use to take on a Walmart? Because I know having covered that company, the e-commerce strategy is definitely like in the moment, pick it up. Yeah, absolutely. So it's what the industry likes to call buy online, pick up in store. And it's really profitable. So the retailers want to en uh, encourage consumers to shop that way. And Target is trying to do that. You know, they're encouraging people to come into store with Starbucks pickup. But Walmart has made a major push. A big perk of becoming a Walmart Plus subscriber is essentially having even faster pickup, even faster delivery. So Target, again, has to answer the question, how are they going to beat Walmart yeah. at buy online, pick up in store? They're like, cut her off. Cut her off. Bro, I got the funny. I got it. I don't know if I saved this story for Friday, bro. But this is the funniest shit ever. Bro, my dad just texted me. <laughs> He's like, what is wrong with this shirt? Because he said everybody keeps talking to him about a shirt he's wearing. Right? Oh, my gosh, bro. He's like, what is wrong with this shirt? And I'm just, I see this this picture he sends me, bro. And I just die. Bro, my dad right now is walking around with a Bob Marley shirt on that says one love. And he has no idea who Bob Marley is. Zero clue. And I'm just cracking. I'm, I'm like, do you not know what that like implies or what it means or anything? He said, no, I am meeting with the pastors and uh, they everybody. Somebody came up to me, said, I like your shirt. Uh, why? <laughs> ah, yeah, bro, he has no idea. I had to I had to put him on game. I was like, dude, I said, dad, that means weed. Like, like smoking weed, like, you know, like if anything, he said, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. That's, good. that's a great picture. <laughs> that was like, that reminds me like one time, like when I was like, I was little, I was young and I had to, um, my dad was like sending a, a letter to the church. He was writing a letter to like pastors, right? And then he, of, of course, he needed me at like the age of 11 to proofread it, right? So <laughs> I'm like proofreading my dad's letter to the church. And then all the, the whole, he's like, he's talking about Christmas and he's explaining gift wrapping, right? But in like 15 instances of like gift wrapping, he, he spelt it wrong. <laughs> it, and it, it came out as gift raping I was like dad I don't know he said what do you mean it's a gift wrap you spell it R-A-P gift wrap I said no dad that's not that's not how you do it no that's it's with a W so mm -hmm. that was a good one that was a good one All right here, give me one second Good Google. 
a lot of things just dump. I don't know if you know it, but we hit the level. We haven't been here in a while. 44.25 now. So it's going to be big. If it gets any worse from here or not. Southwest Airlines and TWU reached tentative pact. Spy broke the 50 day. That's what it is. Oh, no. That's the 50 day. I don't even did Apple break the 50 day or are they at the 100 day? Fifteen. I don't know. Remember, remember the whole downtrend thing until it wasn't. <laughs> remember the whole big downtrend line, and then that just failed finally. Ever since then, I don't. I think we're well far from the fifty-day moving average. Oh man! Crypto blockchain industries, CBI and Cardiff sign FC sign pact. But it's Bradley Frizzle and the Peach ladies. That one guy that made me start like burping and everything. Peach Nation, get your ass up. Or not. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, bonds are going boom, and so is the peach, bro. Bradley Frizzle, God bless you. Thank you, my friend. That's what we need. That's what we need. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what we need. That reminds me. That's it. The peach, the peach brings in life. You know what I'm saying? The preach, the preach, the peach brings on life. So that's a good time to. I think we could use the peach now. To uh, uh, what's it called? We could bring back the twitch now. That's it. Just in case, we'll give them half a day timeout. I don't know if they're gonna stay in the game. That's it. I don't want any discussions. That's all. Just hopefully no wasting time. Why this happen? Why that? Why that? What about this? Well, you are this. Well, you are that. No, no, no. Just, just move on. That's all I'm expecting out of the Twitch. Amen. Amen. What happened to the Twitch? It was getting annoying again. Like I'm saying, uh, just I was, I did very good this morning. I was feeling great. Uh, I only saw a couple of people, but just sidetracked. I would look over. I was, I was getting into a conversation. I'd look over and read the Twitch, and it would sidetrack me. So I just turned it off. Uh, again, even this morning, uh, there's some rude people in the morning. Uh, I just, it's okay too. I just went members only on it. I'm feeling very, uh, uh, I don't know, very positively in a, in a high, high work environment where I'm just like, let's go, baby. That's it. I just, anything, if I don't, if I don't like it, move away and keep moving on. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Were they rude? That's it. I don't want to answer those questions. I'm not not gonna play the game of why did this happen and then explain what happened. No, it's just I'll just keep turning things off. It's there. I don't think I'm gonna have to keep explaining it because all the other expla explanations have have fell on deaf ears. So that's that's why I say, and I hope we move on. Amen. How you doing? Keep it moving. Amen. Who inspired you into mastering the ebbs and flows of the market? Uh nobody. Uh, actually, I just, I like the market. I even think all of it's kind of bullshit. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like all of the, just the little things about the market. I think it's bullshit. I believe in value. I believe in fundamental investing. That's how I started. Uh, and just, I spent so much time, you know, day after day, year after year, uh, you just start to like, you know, what's going on to a degree, but I don't know everything. Uh, X is popping big pop on X first candle. I don't have the news, but you're getting the move early. So again, that thing's going, that's like 10%, 4%. Mm -mm. U.S. Steel could be up for grabs. Oh, Arsola Metal SA discussing possible bids for Steel Corp with financial advisors, Reuters. So AR Arsola Mortadol SA is discussing possible bid. I have it. It's confirmed, Reuters. I got it. 
but that's what it is. They got another bid from Arsital. I don't I'm butchering the name completely. Mm -hmm. Poss no no amount possible bid, but that's the thing. The first amount earlier was seven and a half billion. So anybody saying they're going to offer, they're offering more. If that makes any sense. SA's dumping is that the company? That might be them. Uh no, it's Arsimo. I think it's like AC. I think they have a stock. They have an ADR. X would have been buying out other companies. Yeah, people want them, though. Because if you get that, you get the name. But then also pretty much like the same thing for like uh, CF Cleveland uh, Cle or CLF is that if you buy XLF, if you can merge with them, then you're able to uh, you're you're able to go crazy. Yeah, MT, is is that the company? Yeah, Arsimortal. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we confirmed it like I think two minutes ago. So it's coming out right now. But that is that's correct. It's true. I don't know the offer. Uh, again, four percent on the first candle. Uh, MT is going up now. Uh, they might be the one. Oh, I should have been punting. I top ticked it. I did two hundred of MT at twenty six sixty. Because, again, they didn't move up as much. And like like I was just saying, the winner is going to be whoever gets them. Just because you could go from small company to, like, one of the top. Uh, I don't know about that entry right there. We'll see. Because, remember, CLF went up and then sold off after they found out they weren't getting them. Mm -hmm. Let it cook. I think we're really early on that. That's why, again... So, again, we had it like two minutes before it started hitting. Now people are getting word of it, but I went with MT. MT is not supported on Robinhood? Why not? That's weird. They hit terminal, arsenal, ways possible bid for U.S. Steel. So, again, I think they'll be the winner. We're in that kind of early. We got a couple of gains now. Very small. I mean, that's good. I forgot we were, we were saying something before that, but that just came out. Again, X caught that early. X is still holding up. MT is still trying to fight. We will see, but give it some time. Yeah, Nucor, CLF, any of those. Uh, Steel Dynamics, too. That could be another sympathy as well. Cleveland offers 7-2, S-Mark 7-8. Thought S-Mark was close to 10. No. So that's the whole idea is that anybody now should be higher. Anybody offering should be higher than the first and second offer. Otherwise, there's no point of even announcing that or making those steps. So that's kind of the whole point. It's like it's turning into this little baby bidding war uh, for whoever wants it. In line there, MT's coming down a little. X is holding. Spy even had a little pop. MT already coming down again already down on ball too so none of the day trades have hit today so far that was up for a little bit i'm gonna keep holding that one ball the news about banks in eight in italy giving more money i did not see that v this back up to VY. maybe i mean we finally hit the level i'm surprised a lot more orders didn't come in here or, like, this wasn't really a lot of support, but this level, I mean, it might act as strong as the 4450. 
We'll find out. Mm -mm. Oh my gosh, MT just flipped now. Womp, womp, womp. So where are we at on that? Ah, it's small play. 40 bucks. It looks so much more dramatic. So I don't know. If you're saying those options are expensive, shares are pretty cheap on MT. <coughs> I don't think it's going to drop 50%, but uh, they should be able to get some benefit. Look at Bookmap. I haven't opened up Bookmap in so long. We might need to. Mm -mm. Odds of Walgreens turning into Rite Aid. I mean, just like any any company could turn into a shitty version of themselves. Uh, it just really depends. So, I mean, it's definitely possible because they have a lot of similarities, but like... <clears throat> They're just like, look at the Targets and the Walmarts of the world. And the, there's, you know, some big boxes do good. Others just, they get clapped. But definitely one of the worries. But I do think Walgreens is just like, I don't know. Walgreens is an American staple. Uh, just, I think, is in like every half mile. You should be able to spot one. Bookmark. Is MT just flush, bro? What is this? Mm -mm. Arsa Midhall. McDonald's every half mile. No, I think it's Walgreens. Let me see. They put it on their pitch deck. I'm trying to find the fact, but it just shows me store locators. <laughs> I'm still in bank. Yeah, I think I'm in at like 14. That play came down. Mm, I'm in at, yeah, 14 flat, 14.07. All goes on MT. I think, again, both of them, even ball came down, but, like, I would have loved to just flip out of these, but both of them, I mean, I think you're going to get an update. New court's still going. But, again, I think, like, ball, that was the other failed trade today for now, but, again, still talking buyout news. Apple's still holding. Prologis. Uh, I've heard of them, but how does that relate to... Uh, they're not a REIT. So, I don't know why why you're bringing them up with MPW. If they've suffered the same way, but like, you could bring up O, VNQ, uh, SLG compared to MPW, but I, I don't know what Prologis... I, I don't think they're a REIT. X does not have to accept them, but that's why the stock is going up because, again, people are offering them way more for their company than they were trading at, and they keep getting these offers. Eventually, if they say no and then they say they refuse, the stock will calm down, but the idea is like people are, are soliciting them and saying, hey, well, we'll pay you this much for your company. Hundred thirteen billion larger than AMT. No, MT is bigger than them. I guess by market cap. So market cap, United Steel is seven billion, and then MT is twenty two billion, uh, even even at a lower price. <clears throat> so they're bigger. Mm 
is it Prologue. You said it's a reap. Did not look like one. Let me see. Let's see. They operate through real estate and strategical capital segments. They have a real estate segment and development of strategic capital segment represents management of co-investment ventures and unconsolidated uh, entities. Hmm. So I have to look into them more, but I don't know. It already kind of gives me it's, it's so it's part REIT, part logistics. So again, you guys said it's a industrial REIT, but even their company description seems more broader than that. Very weird. X is climbing, MT dumping now. Let's see. Yeah, but even then, I'd wait till it chills out a little bit, but this does not look like any other REIT. Yeah, I think they have logistics facilities and like they might have other revenue. I don't know if it's pure rent. Like, do they even report like an AFFO? Or is it just like EPS? Yeah, they have they I guess they have four billion in rental income. Yeah, they do. So it is a REIT. Very weird. Hmm. Huh. Dividend yields lower. Yeah, I just don't like the premium of it. It does not look like a REIT. That's what's weird about it. But I'd keep an eye on it. But I'm still kind of... If if you're buying anything for, you know with exposure to real estate and it's not at a discount, you just got to understand the, uh, you know, the, the risk that you're taking on. Oh, my gosh. MT, they're clapping. Womp, womp, womp. Let's see where we're at with that. Oh, I wouldn't, it just looks way worse. Swin still not trading. That's the IPO, SWIN. I'm scared about bank. I'm not I'm surprised they went down, but then again we got a we got like two bank downgrades or two warnings. Swin is supposed to be uh it's gonna be like one of these Hong Kong IPOs. Small float, probably gonna be a runner. Uh but other than that, that's it. But I like bank. I again I liked it. I'm still in it. It's just I think unfortunate timing, but if there is a bounce in any regionals, banks, real estate stocks, I think they're gonna do good. Again, they just absorbed all those assets. MTB on the high, not MT. Cold is the only publicly traded REIT in the temperature controlled supply chain. Hmm. That one might be, I wonder what they have though. Because it sucks if you have like, then they have the industry 2.7% yield. That could be good for some of the computing stuff. Mm. Market showing you that Twitch love. I don't know what that means, so I'm banning you. You see what I'm saying? Because I could interpret it really good or really bad, but it's just a waste of time to try to figure it out. So I love you. God bless you. See you again. Mm-hmm.
WPC. I like the cold one. I need to look into it, though. I don't know shit about it. All of them. But even REITs right now, I love the REITs. But, like, you guys recognize whether it's MPW or anything. Like, you're if you're buying a REIT right now, you should be getting a discount on it. Because they all should be getting clapped. But, like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, I hope you understand, uh, like, there is that risk moving forward. So that's all you need. That's all you need. Uh, Josh is ruthless. Not at all. That's it, man. Someone ruthless would not do this for seven hours a day. Uh, after, especially after getting shit on for so for so consistently, you know. All I'm saying is, uh, just focus. That's all. <laughs> With a smile on my face, profits realized everything. So now it's just now you know it's not it's not about the environment. It's just every day, baby. Just I don't know. I like just focus, focus, be in the game, baby, be in the game, be in the game. And two, it's just very simple. Like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Uh, whether it's to me or other people, just be nice. Uh, if y'all can't do that, I mean, people don't want to be around you. Uh, and that's just the reality of it. I don't know how your social life is, but it just, that's what you got to do. And for me personally, I have a standard. If, if it is not met, <clears throat> I do not participate. Uh, it's just very simple. Like that's so even then, if y'all saw if y'all saw the Twitch get shut off, I'll do the same thing and just keep the Twitch on. And like, you know what it is where it's just like there is a standard. Uh, if you don't meet that, like stop, stop being surprised uh, if you are, you know, if you act a certain way towards people uh, and then they just don't fuck with like if they just walk away, that's totally like normal behavior. And that's what I do. Uh, that's it. So I will continue to. Amen. X bought up above four volume weighted standard deviation. It's crazy that it's already up 40% too. That's the wildest part. Stumble on MAA. Potential buy. It was a 605 Divi in 07. I like the cold one because cold, if you're telling me there's only one cold storage REIT, that reminds me of when we bought IRM back in the day. Because when we bought IRM, I bought it because it was digital real estate. I said, dude, storage, data centers, all of that. I was just Nobody was really thinking like that then. Uh, and it ended up being very good. So cold. But again, I'm not. It sucks because uh, you, you guys have brought me some cool plays lately. I like SMG. I like that cold one. I'll look into Prologis too. Uh, again, I'm not really sold on cold just yet. But hopefully you get what I was saying that like uh, it's one of those... Uh, it's just like we have a lot of opportunities. You don't really want to force them. But some of these plays are are pretty cool. And, and we're watching a lot of stuff come down. How do you do this spread thing? You want to close my Tesla calls, but I can't use a day trade? No, nah, I mean, you got to say it. You got to say the name, sir. I'm sorry. I think I know who you're trying to summon, but you got to say it. You need the name. There's one name invented by the cult, 2019. That's why we put an EST on it. Mm -hmm. Tower REITs are getting shit on right now. Uh, all of the, anything REITs, because they're interest rate sensitive, they're going to have problems. Sir, no, not sir. There you go, the ghetto spread, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> what do I think of virtual land? Uh, I'm just let me do this. It's not a ban, but it's a timeout, so it'll put you in timeout for like five minutes. So just think about it for five minutes in virtual land, and then think about like real land for a little bit, and then and then if you still have the same question, you could ask me again. You can. Just think about it for a second, though. Just think about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. But, yeah, the ghetto spread. So tell me what you have. Uh, what What's your call? Tell me the play that you have, what you paid for it, how many you have, like, contracts. You have a 114 weekly call, just one. A 114, or are we talking 214? 
So again, we're we're starting off on a very awful foot because you just gave me a strike price about a hundred dollars below. So I'm hoping it's a typo, uh, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Time out, baby. JB, you're getting banned. You've just been hyping up some weird shit lately. You're getting too involved. You see what I'm saying? You're like, you're doubling down on the negative aspects of what I'm doing and trying to highlight my negativity of it. When, like I'm saying, I'm trying to answer the ghetto spread. So you're gone, okay? Come back, though. I still love you. Again, we'll focus. So 114 calls, it doesn't even make sense. That's what I'm saying. You have 235, 114 contracts. I'm not helping you with this anymore. You're too rich for me. So you could send me my PayPal uh, if you would like. But 114 contracts, I mean, let's let's just run some general numbers. There's not even a 214 uh, even in there. But even then, so that's, again, twenty, fifty, dollars $100,000 there that you're talking. So I need at least 10 Gs or I'm banning you. So, again, I try to help, like I'm saying. Uh, you guys know where my heart is at. But y'all want to fuck around. I don't, I don't help rich people without them paying me. That's, that's, that's like age. That's why I don't get it. That's why I'm like, why do these rich, rich people act like I'm going to do shit for them for free? I do that for the people who have love, appreciation, and don't try to flex like they got it like that all the time. You see what I'm saying? Let's say it's one call. I need 10,000, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm sorry, though. Uh, it's too, too big of a play for me. Go contact uh, whoever allowed you to make those plays, your brokerage or whatever. Uh, but that's it. If you want a serious play, I got you. But you got, you got too much money for me, man. I need some money. I need some. They don't feel me. They don't. Mm -hmm. Be where you want to be, baby. Amen. One love. <laughs> dude, I can't believe my dad was wearing a fucking Bob Marley shirt, dude. Mm -hmm. You on that today? I don't know. One day you guys will start asking. You'll be like, am I on one or is everybody else on one? Because that's it, bro. I just, that's it. I'm here to help. You give me a good play, I got you. It turns into a troll. It turns, like, that's it. I'm just trolling y'all back. That's it. I have a I have a great day today. I'm laughing. I'm smiling. I hope you are too. Uh, and that's it. It's just it's getting a lot harder for anybody to not participate in the right way. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's all, baby. Let's have some fun. The sentiment for FOMC is the same. Same as the watch list. Same as when you asked before. So it's already done, sir, unfortunately. Uh, but the sentiment, nothing's going to happen, I don't think. Uh, all you should be looking for is the, the, the couple of words. The bonds. Oh, did I not? Was that the one yesterday? I don't think I got to go through it. Somebody did send me one. Let me see if I can find that. Was that the one from the weekend? We might dump. Maybe. I mean, maybe, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, a lot of it is like just it's dated. But last time we did get a lot of up and down movement. Mm. Yeah, bro. I pulled it up when you sent it to me. Mm, all right, let me read this during the bathroom break. I could even read it now. Because this one I remember when I clicked. I wanted to read it, read it. I wanted to give it time. Because you gave me what I wanted. You gave me the charts and everything. And like so That's why I was like, I was looking into it. I was I was really, really looking into it. But then I was like, this. I need to comprehend it. You have You gave me three scenarios, right? Shit, I could just read it out loud, bro. Let me skim through it. Make sure you don't like slip in any weird shit <laughs> where he's like, and then now the new moon cycle is going to make the bonds break. And then that, if you look at the laser in Hawaii and then you cross them over, then clearly that's it. Because it looks like other, I don't think you're going, I just need to skim through and make sure you don't include any of that. But I think you're good, bro. Um, Oh, yes, 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 yes. All of that is true. <laughs> that's the fucking craziest part about all of it. He'd be like, that's true. I don't know, bro. I keep seeing the fire videos, and then they're like, look at this. 
The road is not burnt, but the cars are burnt. How come there's a plastic reflector? But then I'm like, dude, it's so weird to me because like I've grown up with fires my whole life. My whole entire life, bro. Every couple of years, everything around me is just getting burned down. Like legitimately. I know it sounds sad, but I like I'm, I'm actually like that's true. I'm telling like ever since I was like 10 years old, uh, just wildfires, like evacuating for fires, all of that is very very common. So it's like I've seen all of these pictures, but I'm like, we never said the same thing about that in the same way. I think some people are acting like the Malibu fires, but it's just so crazy uh, to see all of it. Mm -hmm. All right, I like this, bro. Compound Hound, it's good. Honestly, do I agree with what you emailed me? I agree with half of it. You should know exactly where I disagree with you on your on your on your thesis. Uh, just it's not even the thesis. Uh, and then I I do think uh, it could be educational here. Uh, but I like it. Thank you for sending me this. I'm sorry it took me so long. Again, there was a lot that you included. We could we could read over this. I think Chad will get a little bit of both sides. So what time is it? Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. You probably don't like the options leveraging, Habibi. I look at Habibi. You definitely have paid attention. That's good. I'm glad. As long as you're aware of it, bro, that's all I need from you. That's it. I'm not trying to stop any of you from doing anything. However, I want you to think the right way. And that's where I'm saying is like if you don't understand, if you're not thinking there is a potential weakness in your strategy when you use options, you're being naive. So I'm glad that you're aware of it. That being said, that's that's my only qualm with your your play here besides one other thing, but I, I wouldn't call you incorrect on it as much as I would say uh, it's actually what's happening now. So I think I think it'll be a good one. So give me a second. Let me see here. And then uh, I'll start reading it. Give me like five, ten minutes and we'll go over it. Let's just see where this leads us into. OpenAI buys global illumination. Do you think housing will be more affordable soon or wishful thinking? I think it will, but waiting on that is a very weird game. You know, my, my most reasonable, best answer that I could give to anybody looking for a home right now is super simple. Go to where you can afford it if you're willing to. If you're willing to move or like, you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, well, houses be affordable. You live in the Midwest. It's like you have a lot of cheaper alternatives in the Midwest if you're willing to go out 20, 30 miles. And again, I don't know how much that will affect your life, job opportunities, all of that. But what I'm saying is that if you could pull that off, I would just go for the cheap place now near where I want to be while I wait. But that way you could literally kind of make a smarter purchase, make a purchase, let it work for you. And then, you know, if prices do come down, you'll find an even better opportunity. And hopefully, you know, you save money by going in a, a cheaper alternative, then you'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to work your way into it. And then if prices don't come down, at least you now have a property. And then you'll at least, it'll help you kind of make up the gap. You could buy houses for like 100K, less than 30 miles outside the city, at least here. That's what I'm saying. It just, it all depends where you're at. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you, and you have to be willing to. This is something I've been trying to uh, tell people is like, especially the young people, bro. It's like, dude, if you're willing to do it. I left home at 18. I went to college and I moved away. It's like I had to go and do all that. But like I was trying to get out as soon as possible. But all I'm saying is like, like leave, bro. Like not, I'm not saying leave home or whatever, but it's like if you're young and you're like getting so worked up on this whole money making shit and then the price of, of real estate and all that, it's like go find a place where you could buy a house, eat some shit for a couple of years, live in outside the city skirts for whatever it may be, stack up your bread, do whatever, and then work your way into it and then go wherever you need to. But if you're willing to sacrifice 
and make that step, I, I think there's a there's a cheap, clear path to home ownership. Uh, it just requires some sacrifice in terms of uh, you know what you're gonna get. I'm not talking about the house. I'm talking about really the location. So what did you say? What you said, Minneapolis? You're stuck in a custody agreement to stay 30 miles. Otherwise, I would move rural. Um, can the custody agreement, like, again, if you get a new job or movement, you might be able to get approval for bigger like what? Like, can you do fifty miles, sixty miles? You see what I'm saying? Like, is if you could even get a little bit out there, then you can. But here's another idea. Let's say you can't even live there. What I would tell you though, like, if you have money to buy a house, maybe go buy one of these cheap hundred k, two hundred k houses, rent it out, and then go rent out wherever you want to live uh, near your near your family. So then that way, you rent where you live, but then you at least put money to work on a cheap property. If that was the case, or just rent even for a little bit till you figure it out. Uh, again, I, I'm not against that, but at the same time, you see how the real estate market does the back and forth. So, uh, what I would try to do is just get a little bit outside if you wanted it cheaper. Otherwise, if you're worried about the investment side, but you need to be in that area, I would just buy a cheap house somewhere else and then rent, you know, close to where I want to be. Put in the offer this week that got approved, baby. Shout out to Colt. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you want Jean Pierre, bro? Did you guys? Oh, do you guys want the tin foil? Yes, for yesterday. Oh, I don't think I told y'all. Wow, easy tin. I need three likes. I need three likes. Oh wait, no, we just hit six. Okay, I need fifteen likes. Okay, just give me fifteen likes, then that's fine. I was, I was, I was about to sell it for three, bro. I was about to sell it for three and spy taking another low. Even our MT play is not coming to fruition immediately, so. Womp, womp, womp again. 44.24 now. You're below the level. Mm hmm Yeah, 4.423. Watch. Remember yesterday was jumping from the top ropes on any of these flushes. Yeah, bro. Jean-Pierre, the press secretary, she made a tweet from the point of view as a president. <laughs> So literally, Jean-Pierre tweeted yesterday uh, that she ran for election and that winning the election. And then everybody realized because she deleted the tweet. And then they realized Jean-Pierre is the person posting for for Biden's Insta or Twitter. Mm -hmm. I just the, the, it's so humorous if you think about it. All of it. I'm like, wow. But it was like we knew, but we didn't know. But literally... Like, that's it. That, that's, that was the tin. Is that every tweet is now Jean-Pierre. Like, literally, you see a Biden tweet, it's Jean-Pierre. She accidentally forgot to switch accounts. It's amazing. I don't think anybody thought it was actually him. But I don't know if you thought it was the press secretary. That's the thing. Like, I thought it would have been an intern. Like, maybe, like, Joe's, like, granddaughter or somebody, you know. But I didn't think it would be, uh, like, fucking the press secretary. Like, she has that. Like, she's taking on a lot of work. Like, are you kidding me? navigate the heat. They have to uh, deal with issues with their paws, walking through glass and debris. And in these conditions, the dogs require frequent rest, which is why we are sending in additional dogs to augment the operation. In addition to them, 30 specialists from the HHS mortuary teams are okay. already They're in talking Maui about helping people. I was about to be, be like, don't tell me this is only about the dogs in Hawaii. The of I would have gotten very angry. These experts are going to be able to help they were using identify dogs. loved ones. Now, I want to be honest with everyone. This is also going to be a very long and hard recovery. But our federal, state, and local partners are working around the clock to help all of those who have been impacted by this disaster. From the beginning of this event, my regional administrator has been on the ground and has been leaning forward to support those in need. As he always does, President Biden directed me to move quickly and push as many resources into the area so we could help people as soon as possible that were impacted. Since the news first broke about the fire, I have been in constant communication with President Biden to provide him real-time updates of the situation, both while I was on the ground and to inform him and his team of the support that we are providing to the community. And I want everybody to know this. The President, 
FEMA, and the entire federal family will be there to support the people of Hawaii as long as we are needed. Now, just a couple of operational updates for everyone. Uh, today, FEMA's Associate Administrator for Response and Recovery, Ann Bink, and Region 9 Regional Administrator, Bob Fenton, are both on the ground. To date, we have mobilized millions of liters of water and food. We have deployed more than 700 personnel to the disaster, with more than 600 already on the island. We have given out $2.3 million in assistance to families, and we have approved over 1,300 registrations for assistance. We launched, launched our Transitional Sheltering Assistance Program, and this will complement the state's Fire Relief Housing Program for residents, and we also uh, authorized critical needs assistance to make sure that we're putting uh, money in the hands of survivors. We also launched a joint task force to assist the state in ensuring that the housing assistance that survivors are eligible for, whether it's through FEMA's programs or the state programs, that it will be seamless to the survivor and they don't have to figure out who they're supposed to call for help. But I also need all of your help. I need you to help us get the word out and encourage more people to apply for assistance. Please help us spread the word to residents of Maui and encourage them to register for assistance with FEMA with either our staff on the ground through our website at disasterassistance.gov or by calling 1-800-621-3362. We also opened our first... Sorry, can you please repeat the number? Yep, 1-800-621-3362 or 1-800-621-FEMA. We also opened our first disaster recovery center. Uh, what these facilities are, are they are brick and mortar locations that have federal, state, nonprofit partners that will all be co-located where people can register for assistance and help get, some, and get uh, additional support. And this is an important first step in their recovery process. We're also cognizant of the fact that the fires have completely upended people's lives and that this is especially true for young children of Hawaii who are unable to return to school in their affected areas, similar to the young boy that I talked to you about. As both a grandmother and a mother myself, my heart breaks thinking about the tragedy uh, that they have I went gone pee, through and, kept and dumping. the road ahead. But Chad, watch out here. Children's Disaster Services has Five already more points, deployed four more two points teams till the parachute partnership level. with the American Red Cross to provide <clears> care <throat> and a safe and a reassuring presence in our shelters. And I am certain that this will bring ease and comfort to the parents that are still coping with the gravity of the situation with such devastating loss and want to provide some sense of stability to their families. Additionally, the Red Cross, in coordination with Maui County, continues to support staff in five shelters where food, water, hygiene kits, and other essential resources are being provided to individuals. We are also coordinating these services so that anybody who leaves a shelter for a hotel or other place to stay will be eligible to receive the same level of services being offered at these shelters. Our partners at HUD are also supporting the people of Hawaii by providing a 90-day moratorium on foreclosures of Federal Housing Administration insured mortgages and home equity conversion mortgages. This is also another very important step in their recovery process. And lastly, debris removal is going to be a critical aspect of this recovery. We have mission assigned both EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers to start the process of debris collection and planning for removal. We are also mindful, and I stress this to my team every day and every time I talk to them, that we need to continue to ensure that we have a strong respect to the people of Hawaii, I promise you this. We will do everything everything we can to continue to help you rebuild on the island and the island that you call home. Together with our state, federal, and volunteer partners, we will continue to provide support to Hawaii for as long as is necessary. Um, but the people of Hawaii, they deserve a recovery that not only addresses their immediate needs, but that positions them as an example of resilience, strength, and resolve. Thank you, and with that, I'll take any questions. Administrator Chris Well, I heard you, everything you said about all the resources that are um, being brought to bear, but we keep interviewing survivor after survivor who says that uh, either they didn't see any government personnel or assistance for days or that they still haven't. Uh, how do you explain the disconnect between what they're saying and what you're saying about all the resources? Because they didn't go to the website. 
We made a website this and a phone number. This community is going through an amazingly traumatic event. Uh, I can tell you that we oh, that have too. personnel that are on that the ground too. year round and embedded in with the state as soon as the fire started so we could continue to understand what resources were needed and help move them in. The Coast tell Guard about the website. conducted 17 rescues that day and supported 40 additional rescues. And so they were there Tuesday helping these people tell escape them about the, the flames that they were experiencing. Uh, we have staff in the shelters. I met with many of the individuals. They're right there. Our staff are walking and talking to the people and helping them register for assistance. We also have our voluntary agencies like the United Way and the American Red Cross that are there. And I, you know, we know that we need to get to everybody. There's also people that are staying with family and friends. Uh, staying with residents in other parts of the island, and that's why our teams will continue to go out into the communities to make sure everybody that needs assistance can get assistance. I think the Disaster Recovery Center is going to be one way that they have a place and a focal point that they can come get their questions answered instead of just going to a shelter, which is what's been available right now. I know that FEMA takes a back seat to states in situations like this, but MT why is a, a small state, um, does, does Hawaii have the staffing and the expertise to lead a recovery effort of this magnitude. And we've been embedded with them. Uh, we actually have personnel uh, that integrate in year round with them to help uh, maintain their capacity. But we also recognize that this is a large event for them and they are a small state. Uh, they have asked for assistance from some of our other states and I can say like California, Cal OES is sending one of their incident management teams to invent yeah, you're right. Honestly, emergency I didn't think about management it. to help There has to be the some capacity, Trump policy that causes some this. of the relief they need and help I just, uh, I'm just saying, I don't, to maintain I'm just going off to the last couple of years, like, there has to be a logical Trump re reasoning behind this, you know? I, I don't think we would ever want that, right? I mean, this is their maybe he canceled, to be able to he probably canceled, them, like, will be there to watering grass or something. I don't know. He did, he, he always, always. Uh, Administrator Chris, well, yesterday we heard from the president who said he was I'm just trying to get to the soon, easy, logical answers, today, you know? But he didn't want it to be disruptive. Can you talk specifically about what the president will see? They should, I think we should indict him. And what efforts are we being should just get to the bottom of this. I don't think you can rule him out as a suspect. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's it. Ongoing efforts to support the local communities. Yeah, I mean, as I have been briefing the president, I have been explaining to him the dynamics of the situation on the ground and the ability to make sure that we give the space to our search and rescue teams to continue to be able to account for everybody that is missing. Um, I know when the president travels, he's going to be able to bring hope and he's going to speak with the governor and the state's first lady and, and talk to survivors and hear their stories. And it's that level of hope. An interesting debate, uh, a very difficult debate, even happening among state and local leaders about the role of tourism that whether it should be still allowed to be ongoing, the appropriateness of tourism in the community there as it relates to the economy. Does the administration, does FEMA take a view about whether continued tourism is maybe potentially disruptive to this effort, especially as it relates to providing enough housing for those who have been displaced? They don't want yeah, you to I go there. To the state for, Honestly, um, any everybody, stop visiting Hawaii tourism, until they get this figured out. Affect, uh, have you not uh, seen the videos of the people crying it's not a factor that and just telling you, like, why are you guys swimming in our oceans after everything? Everybody just died. That's it. Um, how many people <laughs> so far have applied for so federal crazy. disaster aid? And can you lay out sort of the biggest barriers that people are facing? Is just a lack. He's like, of what about internet, tourism? Phone connectivity how are we going to keep this up? Yeah, I think what I said is right now we've approved over 1,300 registrations. I don't know what the total number of individuals that has applied so far. Um, but I, you know, one of the things that I really need your help on. It's not as much as lack of communication and cell phone capability. Um, it's lack of understanding whether they should or should not apply for federal aid. And we want everybody in Hawaii to know that they should apply for federal assistance. And if they have- Did y'all make the Ukrainians apply? Out into the communities <laughs> that they're in the shelters, they'll be at the DRC. This is crazy. They should start that process and we can work with them to start their road to recovery. 1,300 number into context. I mean, how many people in your view, just an estimate are eligible? Um, I don't have that number, and I'm certain we can get some of our estimates of what we think will be um, eligible, and, and we'll apply, and we can get that to you. Um, just to follow on Mike's question about the president's visit, um, can you talk about what thresholds or milestones you expect to be crossed in the recovery yeah, process by August 21st that makes you comfortable um, with having the president visit then and 
meet his objective of not interrupting uh, the process. Yeah, our biggest goal was to make sure that we weren't going to disrupt the ability of our search and rescue teams to conti uh, continue their operations. And when I was just briefing the president and he spoke with the governor, he asked the governor if this was going to be an appropriate time, and the governor agreed. So will search and recovery is expected will be completed? It by will not be completed, but it will be in an area where he will not be impacting that. Uh, on the monetary assistance that's available, this critical need assistance, um, I believe that's just a one-time per yes. household payment. It's intended for consumables. But our teams on the ground are hearing from people who are concerned about making their car payment, making their basic bills now that their lives have been so upended. What do you say to residents who fear that the money that is you know, being made available just isn't going to cut it? Yeah, the programs that FEMA has, the critical needs assistance is just that. It's to support some of their very initial basic needs. Uh, in addition, we have our individual and household programs that can provide additional funding uh, that covers, you know, home repairs. In this case, you know, many people, most people lost everything. Um, but it can also cover uh, losses to personal property such as vehicles or uh, major appliances. Uh, we'll work with each individual as they register for assistance to help understand what's eligible under FEMA. FEMA's programs, again, designed to help jumpstart that recovery process. It won't cover all of their needs, and we'll work with um, our faith-based partners as well as some of the philanthropy organizations that have been giving funding to the state so we can make sure that everybody has um, their cases managed in a way that helps them meet uh, any of the unmet needs that they have. And on your coordination with, with state officials, and you said when we talked to you earlier in the week that you've been encouraging them to really make their requests early to try and think about what they're going to need in a week, two weeks, three weeks. You know, given how understandably overwhelmed they are, do you feel they have the ability to do that, to be able to think that far in advance, you know, to see what they're going to need? a little bit further down the road so that you can provide yeah. those resources. And I think part of um, what we have done as we have embedded our teams in is we help them think about what their potential needs are going to be and bringing in this, you know, additional team that's going to support uh, the county will help them think through strategically into the future, you know, what are we going to need a week from now, two weeks from now. And those are the types of daily conversations in a future planning cell that are happening every day so we can make sure we have a continuous um, flow of resources into the area. I know your focus right now hey, is Chad, on response, do push up. but it does seem like there are some questions emerging Sir, about how these spreads process. began and how they were able to spread so devastatingly, including uh, questions about the sirens that went off and also about faults in the utility grids. In your that conversations with like the president and in his conversations minutes? that you've um, been there for yeah, with the governor, minutes. how interested is he in accountability for what happened? Does he want to get to the bottom of that? And is that something that he's um, asking your team or other teams to look into? You know, we always want to make sure that we understand uh, what happened and how we can continue to improve so we can minimize the impacts that other communities may have. And that's something that the president is committed to. Um, this is still going to be part of the state's uh, response to determine what level that they want to assess uh, the cause and any, any of the res initial response. Um, but we as a community, as an emergency management community, always want to continually learn from the events that we're facing, especially as we are seeing a continuous rise in the number of severe weather events. That way we can put the measures in place to either um, make communities more fire resistant, that we can mitigate against some of the other damages US or the other threats that we're going to face in the US state urges Russia to return a grain deal. And we can reduce the impacts Putin that these does communities not seem are to care about see, global but also help supply. individuals understand what the future risks are the that they could potentially working with face, partners to identify and they can take other the proper measures to make sure that they corridors. are prepared them and their families to protect themselves. Uh, you said on Monday that you were going to need some additional funding so that you don't have to push some uh, projects into next fiscal year. Do you have an estimate for how much is going to be needed? Um, I think the administration supplemental request has gone up. I believe our initial request was in there for $12 billion. Uh, again, we have enough funding uh, to support the, the ongoing response efforts because we take events like this into consideration. Um, but uh, it would delay, if we don't have additional funding, it would delay uh, some of the recovery projects and push them into next year. Beyond that $12 billion, though, you're going to need more beyond that? Uh, we may potentially need more beyond that, and my team is assessing that now. I'm going to take one last question, way in the back. Okay. Hi. Um, you mentioned this would be, there will be a long recovery. Can you talk about the mental health aspect of it, the assistance that the federal government will provide, and how people can access that? The mental health aspect, is that what you asked? Yeah, yeah I mean, 
this community is going through uh, one of the worst things that we could possibly imagine. And the mental health concerns are real, and the mental health concerns are a priority for the governor and his team. Uh, we have, as part of our programs, the ability to bring in uh, mental health services through our crisis counseling program. Um, but the American Red Cross has also brought in mental health specialists. And as they continue to support uh, the state's uh, sheltering operations, what they are doing is they are embedding mental health specialists to make sure that they can help address some of the immediate concerns and needs that, that these community members are having. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this again. Appreciate My pleasure. Thank, Thank you for everything you. that you're doing. Okay, um, let's move on. Um, as you all know, uh, today is the first anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, you know, most one-year-olds can barely walk. Whoa. Uh, but, uh, that was but a this year ago? Is, uh, this one-year-old is up and running. Uh, I couldn't help myself, sorry. Uh, up and running. So that's very excited. We're very excited about uh, the Inflation Reduction Act and everything that it's doing. And with that, I have um, I I'm have two guests with me, right as now. you know, in a couple of hours. The president will deliver remarks president at Pierre. an event <laughs> marking all this transformative <laughs> bill has accomplished in just a year. You guys didn't laugh about my one-year-old joke. Okay. All right. But let me we just make sure I get their title. Now that you're the president. This up. Uh, and, it was an awful uh, joke, uh, ma'am, we too. We're going to hear from the senior the advisor to the president for climate innovation and implementation, John Podesta, and also the domestic policy uh, advisor to the president, Neera Tandem. Please come on up. And I'll let them right. take it from here. Go ahead. What the fuck? Thanks, uh, thanks Karine. It's good to be with you. Uh, as Karine noted, we're marking the one-year anniversary of a truly transformative piece of legislation, the Inflation Reduction Act. I'm observing which is the, the hair, dude. That's a crazy two tone in hair. Energy and climate That's impressive. Ever. He in got United gray States on the side, but not on top. But first, but I want to top. acknowledge that it's today's weird, event like, is coming during a time of heartbreak as the toll of extreme and weather got fueled a nice by tie. climate change is being felt across Honestly, the country. Honestly, I feel like this is world. how I'm going to look when I'm old. This summer is I don't know if I'll have the two tone. After another but another from like, extreme heat. Low key, I got glass. This guy looks kind of like me in a weird way. I don't floods in Vermont and upstate New York to kind of got the same head shape. Wildfires. Low and key. all of us have watched in horror as the Maui fires have claimed over 100 lives, uh, the largest loss of life of a fire in the last 100 how years. How is he still in free? <laughs> As FEMA Administrator Criswell just explained, the administration is doing everything we can to support Hawaii's rescue and recovery efforts. Is that, is to that stop it? these disasters from getting yeah. even worse, this is the chief we have to staff. cut the carbon pollution that's it driving the climate Podesta. crisis. And that's what the Inflation the Reduction Act is all about. He's it makes the largest investment in clean energy and climate action in the world, touching every sector, power, you're not, you're transportation, me, buildings, sir industry, agriculture, and forestry. New York bans TikTok on city-owned devices. It's Americans by offering $7,500 off qualifying electric vehicles. It's and from The 30... Verge. U.S. state, New York bans TikTok on city-owned devices. For families I don't know if that news hits anymore. A year. Already, utility companies have announced they'll be able to pass on to their customers at least $8 billion of savings thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. And a new report released this morning by the Department of Energy shows that those sa savings will grow to up to $38 billion between now and the end of the decade. And this law is putting us on a path to reach the Biden-Harris administration's goal of reducing emissions by 50 to 52 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. The Inflation Reduction Act is tackling the climate crisis with a government-enabled, private sector-led approach. In the one year since the Inflation Reduction Act passed, we've already seen more than $110 billion in new clean energy manufacturing investments from the private sector. Add to that $122 billion in investments in new utility-scale clean electricity, wind, solar, battery, storage, and more. These new investments are creating jobs and bringing economic opportunity Bro, to Moody's communities loves across this too. America. That's the funny One part. One year in, this historic the law credit is advancing rating by, they, they love this. by investing in America, Apparently. lowering energy costs, advancing environmental justice, and rebuilding our environmental economy justice. from the middle out and the bottom up. The law contains other provisions regarding health care and tax policy. So now it's my pleasure to pass it on to my colleague and friend, Domestic Policy Advisor Neera Tandon. Thank you.
Thanks, thanks I haven't John. Been as high. Uh, oh, wow. and thanks, thanks for those kind words. And I just like to say, um, it's a great honor to be here with you. Um, from day one, President Biden and the Biden Harris administration have been focused on lowering health care costs for all Americans. Because we know health care costs Pfizer, can be a Pfizer, huge economic Pfizer, stress Pfizer, for families. Pfizer. That's why Happy the Inflation Bo- Reduction Act lowers these costs, these these care costs okay, for okay. millions of Americans. It's, okay. it's hey, already right. doing so. Already. Fifteen million people are That's continuing to save eight hundred dollars a year on their health insurance premiums. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Honestly, I couldn't do that one today. I wasn't as hyped in the beginning. I went there. I thought it was going to buy us enough time so I could go over this email and read you this, but it's good. The market hit another low. Somebody asked what the parachute level meant. Uh, this level here, 4413, pretty much. If we go below it, you should pull your parachute. Uh, I think it starts to get a little bit more downtrodden. I don't know if that's the right adjective, but even then, anytime we have came through the levels, though, I mean, lately the market has applied the air brakes, but this is just its a weird level with not too much support uh, on the way up or the way down last time we hit it. So uh, that's why I think it's uh, a quote-unquote parachute level. MO's dumping. I'm fine with that. I forgot. I have MO flip shares, though, that I'm down on, but I'm still down to hold those. But even then, MO, that's one I'm kind of waiting to help move us around in the long term. Because remember, you guys remember I wanted fucking MO at the beginning of the year? Like, I wanted this shit, like, a lot. You guys remember that? It was the, why does it look like Apple? <laughs> At the beginning of the year, I was telling you about, like, Altria, and then we started getting others. Again, Disney, PayPal, other stuff kept going lower. It just, Altria was, like, a little higher. I've been waiting on it. So, it's like, I really wanted a lot of MO. So, in a weird way, like, even though my other names are coming back, like, I didn't forget about it because it, they still stack up. They're stable. They got a good yield. I mean, I've, I've done more analysis on MO than, than a lot of other names just because we've had it for so long. But it's just, like, in the sense that... They, I'm not worried about their dividend at all. Like, I am not worried about their divvy at all. So that's one that I'm letting kind of dictate some things and show us where to where to buy or sell other stuff or just buy, really, just because I'm thinking once this gets to a price I like, I mean, it's kind of what I'm trying to take advantage of with it. So I think there's a still a little bit more downside, but it's good. I think pay, PM isn't bad. I view them the same, honestly. I've just view I've owned Altria. But I like Philip, uh, Philip, Phil, uh, PM. They have a, what's it called? The Swedish, uh, Swedish match or whatever, uh, whatever though. They own the, they own Zine. I'm telling you, Zine is a, is a, it's a hit sadly for the, the kids. And then there's no liability because the tobacco companies work with the government. But either way, it's a, it's a trend. Unfortunately, I don't want to profit off of it, but I will. Uh, so Philip Morris or MO, I think is fire. Uh, but that's it. I think they're both the same. I think PM might be a little bit better, but I think you get more value in, uh, in MO. They all have, they have good, they got good plans and it just, uh, again, I mean, it's, they're going to hold up pretty well, even so far. I mean, we've already dealt with things slowing down a little bit of consumer slowdown. They've gone through a lot, but I mean, these companies are going to be there. Is the 10 year, it might, I think it's going to go to four five. And then we see what happens. But like I, I told you, if it goes past four or five, I think it's going to five, maybe five and a half. So let's talk about that play. Because uh, of Chad, <clears throat> our boy Compound Hound, that's his name here. He sent me another email. Again, or I got another email, this time from another, another Chad. So I would like to go over... Chad's theory with you. These are not my theories. Um, I'm just I'm just here to commentate. So honestly, thank you guys for sending me good info. Like I've said, thank you for providing. Like this is the shit I like. You know what I'm saying? Like all jokes aside, you might think I'm gonna ban you. Do some of like nah, bro. Send me a fucking good ass email with like a bunch of words and like real thinking. Give me plays. Give me a chart. Even if you disagree, like you know. I, again, I don't know if I could show you the whole email with like uh, without exposing them, but. Like I'm saying, these are these are very very big email. Uh, maybe I could like copy and paste it. Let me see if that'll work. I can just throw it into a Google Doc. Mm-mm. I can expose you. Okay, well that's why I said I didn't know. 
I didn't know. I didn't know like your email, like even your name too. That's why I try to, I keep it low key. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you guys will send me personal info. If I don't disclose it, I'm usually looking out for you just in case. But you let me know what your, I mean, here it works. I was able to paste it. So you sent me five Google document pages. <laughs> So this is what he this is what I'm saying. That's like y'all want to y'all want to get mad at me in the morning or you want to bring it down to like some surface level shit. You're right. I'm very petty with surface level. You want to talk, send me a fucking email like, you know what I'm saying? Send me this. This is all right. Maybe it's because the pictures, but he gave me his theory. He gave me some stuff. He ended it with some finger to the sky, too. I just noticed that, honestly. So God bless you. I didn't I didn't even know you were repping finger to the sky like that. So amen. Amen, baby. Amen. So. Uh, here it is. He just sent me a, a play idea. You guys, it doesn't have the pictures, unfortunately. Um, so I don't think it's chat GPT. I mean, usually chat GPT don't ask me to buy straddles. So that's how I know it's legit. But even then, like put in the effort to chat GPT. It, I'll know though. I tell you that uh, last time, I think my girlfriend sent me something chat GPT. And I was like, you, these adjectives make no sense. It was like this extremely new house. I'm like, the house was built in 1920. They're like, it's a very young house. I'm like, it's not young at all. They'll be like a slightly driven vehicle with 180,000 miles. I'm like, what the fuck? That's so you can, that's how you tell if it's chat GPT. You know what I'm saying? You got to pick up on the little stuff where it's just like, wait, you said what? That's how you know every single time. Every single time. I can spot the AI writing from a mile away. If I re I'm like, that makes no sense, sir. That makes no sense. But anyways, here's the play. Uh, he says, I've been listening to your stream every day. I love your voices, dude, and your economic insights. Yeah, thank you. See, these voices, right? Good. They thought I was a psycho. Yeah, they said, they said I was going insane. Anyways, uh, I know you, I know you've been saying to email you. Uh, and uh, I don't know if this will be worth your while, but I'll let you decide. I'll try to keep this short for you because I know you're busy. To sum it all, my main thesis is basically this. Bonds are at a breakout point to the upside or the downside from a technical analysis perspective and cannot stay at this level so the play is do an option straddle. Uh, here's a weekly chart of IEF with two trend lines drawn. The flat one is support and the slanted one is the downtrend. So let me get you that picture here, sir. So this is what he's saying. This is the trend lines. This is the 10-year IEF. You guys are all very, very familiar with this. So nice chart. Very familiar thesis. Uh, actually, let me ask you this. This is why I said I, I like this. I like it. Let me, let me read you a little bit more. I'm giving you the accompanying documentation there. Uh, then I have a question for all of you, so I hope you're paying attention. Uh, my first thesis is that I believe that bonds are heading back down to test support. I have no idea if bonds will break down, meaning yields will rocket, or if some bank or another entity will break, and we begin lowering interest rates because bonds are starting to rocket. My second thesis is that the Fed will have to lower rates again within a year because the economy will crash. If we keep high rates higher than longer than that, they will have to lower those rates. Given these two points one that we will break out and two eventually yields will have to be lowered by the fed i want to do a long dated option straddle my play is an option straddle so before we get into that let me ask you this for all of you chad even even will do you believe this think about this bonds are at a breakout point i agree with that i uh, that you could look anywhere even globally that happens but here is there's a very big premise here they cannot stay at this level. Do you agree or disagree? I want you to think about that for real. You're totally right. They are going to break out or break down. We look at this, you pull this out on any chart, you look in, again, technically, you got to ask yourself is this true? Honestly, this answer, I don't know if there is a right or wrong answer to it. Just because we see so many things and then the bonds end up in a certain way. However, I would I would have to argue, and this is what I was saying before when I read the email, this is my fundamental disagreement besides the options. So again, if you guys don't know, right before I even went in this email, I even asked Will and I said, hey, even with your play, there's a problem I have with it. Are you aware of it? As long as you're aware of the problem, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. But that this is the other thing I was talking about because this is a this is a prevailing notion 
that spreads in the bond market, and my goodness, can the bond market do nothing for a very long time? So in a way, it will become true. Because when it does break out or rebound and it never looks back, you're going to look back and be like, yep, that was the moment, just like we did in 2022. Yes or no? But if you think about it, 2022, man, we were at a huge breakout point for like four months. You went up a little bit, but you spent most of this year doing nothing, and then it really didn't even break until like a, the end of the next month. So this is exactly why I played the two-year back again a couple months ago or a month ago, and that's why the two-year hasn't even moved as much. It's, it's for this logic, and this is why. So this belief that bonds have to break out or break down in a weird way, this is why we're just starting to, to have the breakdown right now with all of the, the long end of the curve. Because that's what's going on. Because up until the beginning of August, most people had this notion. It works on the two-year because the two-year is closer duration and for policy. But then you had people buying the 10-year and the 30-year. And they were like, well, it's going to break down or not. But like something gonna, is going to happen. Right? They're like, it can't just stay here for it. But guess what? That's exactly what it did. Until it broke down. But now... Why is the 10-year and the 30-year bond shooting up? It's because people are realizing, oh, maybe we will have higher rates for longer. So that's what we're actually watching kind of develop. So like I'm saying, is, this, is there a right or a wrong answer to this? No. but Because at one point when it happens, you're going to look back and see it. But this is where I think this play fundamentally gets destroyed. Why? Because it's going to be an option straddle. So that's the only issue I have with this. Is that pretty much I want you to come up with a theory. I'm not saying this play is done. I'm not saying it's over. We have a lot more that we're going to read and go through. But what I am saying is that this is a scenario that you have to account for. So how can you make this a win-win play? And how can you perform at this play if the bonds hypothetically did not break out or break down for the next four months, then what would you do? Because if you did do the straddle, you got to pay the time. But that's where I, I would have to ask you that question on here. So let's keep reading. My play is an option straddle on basically whichever your favorite bond chart is. Uh, or whatever form of leverage you're most comfortable with. I like the option vehicle for this play because if I do 50% calls and puts with super long expiration, a breakout can mean 100% gain on one side, which will cover the cost of the other side. I have three scenarios happening ordered to be the worst. So again, that's why in this case, it's not if you make them the same exact prices, then yes. No, the FOMC is going to be in 20 minutes, actually. Uh, 18 minutes. Uh, I could get you a breakdown, uh, but we've already gone. Uh, all that's going to matter is how many people uh, were actually trying to support uh, more rates or not. But I think we'll get a little bit of market movement. But I don't think it'll be anything crazy. So even then, with the straddle both ways, what's one thing if they are both the same amount of money? But when it comes down to it, it's not going to really be about 100% on the contract as much as it is going back to the original options video. What will 100% mean? So let's say the contracts cost $5 a pop because they have a lot of time. Maybe they're $1,000 a pop, right? If that was the case, that mean by expiration, I mean, if you get one move and it takes, you know, more than four or 500 days, right? Or let's say it takes 300 days of nothing, and then it starts moving, you're going to want that break-even. So the idea is your break-even now, you're going to need to make back that $10. So even though you're like, I only need to make 100% to break-even now, and that's just to get all your money back, that might mean $10 in the money. So you got to ask yourself, will your ranges work? So there is a possibility that with the straddle, if you do not account for the right range and then it decays either more or less, that could change a, a, a lot of all of that. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And then you guys are in the yen drop in. Spy's rocketing up. I'll check here in a second. 
But you have three scenarios. Bond market really does go down. Yields rise. Ackman makes money on his short, uh, and I make money on my puts. And the best part, I get to keep my call leap. So if we do get a Fed reversal, I hopefully hopefully make money on the call leaps too. Scenario two, the bond market uh, goes up because the Fed reversal happens. Something breaks. The call leaps will be worth more to pay the loss than the put leaps in theory because historically, once we start cutting, we don't stop. That would be best case here. Again, I think you make the most money in this instance because everything goes up, right? And then again, you're going to get that rocket. And then three, the bond market stays in a super tight range and I get effed. That's the fear of any option straddle, honestly, which suck. But although it's possible, I don't believe it's a highly possibility in my mind. I do believe within a year, the bond market is a breakdown that the yields will rise. Some financial entity will break down and we cut rates. So you kind of have the theory that I was talking about, but I want you to look, how do you win? So same thing on theory number three, but tell me how you could win if it does nothing. I don't want you to take a, a capitulation loss. So I want you to think like a winner, my friend, but think of another potential option, but also too, just be cautious because like, again, like I don't think it'll happen in a year or like I really do believe within a year. Trust me, I've seen a lot of stuff and there's a lot of things that happen faster and take longer than expected. You know, you said, oh no, I would lose then. Find a way that you could win is what I'm saying. So that's like what I'm trying to say is it open your mind up in this sense where what if the bonds don't move? How can you make money on that? So in a weird way, a broken butterfly, a broken wings, you could maybe even selling this straddle might be a better play or you could find a way to straddle it, lean it on another. I mean, here's my idea. I have one idea, but it's a little complex the way that I'm looking at it and kind of what you're saying, I think you should do a bear steepener. Uh, and what I mean by that is you should buy the two-year and then short the 10-year. Uh, that's exactly what you're saying. So if you're telling me that I think in the next year something's going to happen or not, I think buying the two-year and then shorting the 10-year, but then you'll get, you'll get low-key blown out if there is a rate cut. But then by that point, you could close the long end and you should have enough signals to get out of it. But like low key, all I'm getting out of this is buy the short end and then short the long end. Because that's what somebody even said in the chat. They asked you a very good question. Why wouldn't you just hold cash? And guess what? You can't do that. Buy the short end and short the long end. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? Because now you could go buy the three month to the two year get some of that money you're literally making money on the trade by holding it and then by shorting the back end if again if, as we develop this volatility here and just like you're saying just depending on what happens with the banks and as people kind of realize stuff they will react you're you lose though on that play if there is a rate cut if a rate cut you're going to make money on your two year which will make you a lot but actually no your two years higher than the 10 year so you'll still i think you might have to run the math but even in a rate cut i do think you'll benefit because your four will go to one or lower, and then your your ten is still at four, or excuse me, a four eight on the two year. There's a little bit of a gap that could save you, but yeah. So the good, so at the money options that I'm looking at, IEF ninety four call put January twenty five is shown in the pick below. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. And then is this a screenshot of Weeble? Get off of Weeble. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, but like, honestly, it might be very good advice in the future. Uh, but <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at the plays. So you're saying uh, he sent me the the option chain, and then Spy's just rocketing up. I did get off Weeble. Good, good. Oh, you're on Do Not Disturb. I saw the little moon thing, and I'm like, isn't that the Weeble logo? I mean, it's leaked. Honestly, uh, we got 12. The calls are 650 and the puts are three. I'd buy two puts for every one dollar. So that's where you got to be. Oh, you'll buy two puts for every one to try to make it the same. Yeah. So what you're, so again, he's saying here, you got to figure out the break even. I'm telling you, this is where they're going to fuck you. And again, that's kind of how I'm looking at it in a weird way. I'll tell you, if you want a good play, you got to ask yourself, how is this going to fuck me? Because that's where you got to ask yourself, how does this play work against me? 
because they're saying, assuming I got filled on the call, 655 a pop, puts are 303. I would buy two puts for every one call to keep the invested amounts even. Uh, I'm tempted to go for the 95 call leaves, but to keep things simple, I'll focus on the 94 for both calls and puts. So you're going to go same strike. Is that the key? Yeah, you want to do both. So that I could get behind, but again, now the value is all about the dollars. So that's what you got to really think about. It's literally, that's what I was saying in the beginning, where if one call costs more, that's going to be $10 to hit break even. If you buy double, you only need $5 to break even. So this isn't, it's don't focus on the option price, especially since our worry is bonds do nothing. I would just view the intrinsic value of the option to a degree and just ask yourself, at what price do I, what's my break even? Where do I lose? What price does the stock have to go to? And figure that out because, again, if it ends up anywhere in the middle, above or below 94, they all create different scenarios in terms of value. So you're paying, you're, you're going to walk away with two quantity in one and then one quantity in the other. Oh, it's even lower there. It amuses me the calls are twice the price of the puts, meaning the market makers think uh, the odds of breaking out to the upside is much higher than the bond market going lower, about twice as likely judging from their pricing. In the pick below, you'll see the IEF for both the call and the put have 10% IV, and the IEF options are hardly any open interest. I think most people do the bond play on TLT potentially or sooner expirations. Uh, and that's it. I don't plan on holding either until expiration, but at expiration, the break even at IEF would be 81.39 and on the puts 106 uh, 01 on the calls. However, the IV for the global event would affect the leaps in a way I can't forecast. So I'm not focused on the break evens at 0% rates. The IEF was 117.83. So that leaves 10% profit per option. So 1,000. Assuming we go back to zero, or I don't know if we go to negative rates. I'm, you did very good on that. I'm glad you went and checked the price. Uh, on the back end, but still pretty much now 81.39 to 106, though. Here's the problem. That's where, so if we drew it on the chart, it doesn't even go on. That's just pretty much 86. That's the range that we lose. And we got nine minutes till the minutes. So 81.39 and then one. Oh, damn, that's crazy, though. So you don't break even till 81.39? Uh, honestly, it seems like you're you're tilted to the call side. Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm saying here. It's still a pretty wide gap. Well, that's if the bonds just absolutely die. Yeah, but that's like, you. I mean, it's possible, but that that's to break even. That's the problem. So literally you would go through my scenario. If there was like if there was like a 30, 40 percent drop right now in the yields, dude, if it was like a massive move down, the IV would help you. And and that but then you would exit the play immediately. At that point, you wouldn't see anything to fruition. You would just hold your calls. But it would still that would be just the break even. Yeah, honestly, I think you just want calls. Uh, like I'm saying, because your break even at 106 is way closer than uh, than the 81 here. 13 down versus like what? I guess 13 up, but 106 is just so much more realistic. So again, my only thing, I just, I think it's, uh, I just, I think there's a lot of points of failure on this. So what I would do, like I said, I would go with the curve steepener if that was really the case. Or honestly, it sounds like through your theories, like. Like, do you want to short the... Like, why do you want to short the bonds, I guess? I think you understand the buying play. And I think you know what happens to buy. And you seem like you you understand that. And you're you're looking for that. You even believe a certain event is going to happen. But, like, like, why even short the bonds? Is what I would ask you. Like, I get maybe is it the technicals that are saying, well, shit, I could get... You know, right now on the bonds, you're going to get 1% if it goes up to 5.5 now on the 10-year. So on IEF... If it shoots up from four two to five five, you're getting a one and a quarter. So it's still a good amount. You'll still make a decent amount, but it's like if that's the move you're looking for, but it's like why set up the play when it's like low key? It sounds to me I would either build around calls and I would take your straddle and just space out calls over time. Otherwise, uh, I would just go for the steepener. If J Powell says I won't save you, then the bonds will go insane. 
I, I, it's already happening though. So I agree with you. So the question is how bad would that get though? So like, what's the downside on the bonds? So like, I guess that question would be, especially if you're doing IEF, uh, my question to you would be, do you believe that the 10 year, uh, is going to get above four, five and a half? So that's the, so again, 2007, 2008, that's like five and a quarter, five. Again, I was saying five and a half. I was being generous. So even five and a 10, five and 10, five and a quarter, that was like 06, 07, 08. So if you think it could get there, that's where you break even on the short. So you're saying we're going to hit sixes and sevens to maybe make 100%, and then you're going to still hold your calls, and that's just because you wanted the calls, or go with small calls now, scale into them. If they do get blown out, now your call play just got way cheaper. You see what I'm saying? So you're saying I could lose on the puts or I could go for the short and then I'll still have my calls. But I'm just kind of saying, why not just don't even get the short and then just go for the calls uh, again when it gets even cheaper. So I'd say leg into it. I say avoid all options as well. If you want to use leverage, I would I would do a curve steepener. Uh, buy the two years, short to 10 year, call it a day. Spacing out call, I think it's better for you. I just think it's, again, none of this is a recommendation. I just think they're going to scam you on time. Again, and even then, if the break even is, is a very big level down, even if you hit the move, you're going to break even or you're at the mercy of whatever the IV is. Uh, but I just think it seems like you want the calls, and I think you understand that. And I think you're, you know, every single thing you're like, but, but the calls. So it's like, just focus on that. But then again, you let me know, give me a follow up. Let me know what you come up with. Like I said, just try to avoid, uh, all of those elements of failure. And there you go. And there you perfect timing. Five minutes, baby. Yeah. The minutes are coming out here again. I'm not thinking it's going to be too crazy. Uh, I will have everything for you again. You could go to the fed website. All you got to do, go to monetary policy, meeting calendars, and information, and then it'll show up right here under the July meeting. You will see something that says minutes. From last year? Yeah. So that's it. That's all we're going to wait for. J Powell is not coming out. No. So that's why it's not, not the biggest thing here. And then it's kind of dated. You know, we're going to do our stupid uh, analysis of the specific words. I'm still in the Pfizer play. I'm down like 500 on that one. Uh, but I kind of even want to average on that. I'm still waiting. I still want Pfizer to... I'm surprised they... Why did they even back out? Mm, like, why did Pfizer back out of the Ozempic thing? Remember they had a super good trial? Love y'all, baby. Hey, Amen. Let's go. Just try. It. Moses. It's the minutes. So it's good. Don't get too crazy. Oral GLP are more inconvenient. Is that why? But it's weird. They were going to, and then they had really good results, and then they're like, nah, we're good. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see ahead of the market minutes. Uh, I don't think we're going to have anything. Yeah, so again, just watch out for the basic. Just the basic changes in there, but we'll find out. I'm expecting somewhat of a move. Uh, I think we already kind of got a little bit. This is some of that action I was talking about. But just watch where we opened. Uh, again, we did hit another new low today. And we were very close to that parachute level. Unless the minutes are just like extremely hawkish. So we got about one minute here, Chad. Get ready for it. Mm 
Mm. Let's moon. All right. Good luck. Good luck, my brethren. You will be good. You will be good. All right. We'll see the initial. Watch the wire, too. I forgot. So a lot of the headlines are going to come up on here. You guys see it? You should get a lot of data here. So keep your eyes out for it. I'll get the written statements, too. I might have to stop the scrolling. We'll find out. And then uh, I'm just going to start just search for many, few. See if they do talk about, uh, what was it? I forgot there was one more word uh, that they said last time. Damn. Oh, the wire's still hidden? Oh, no shit. That's crazy. You should have told me. So let's see. Where is it? All right, there it is. My bad. And boom. Uh, FOMC inflation is moderated since middle of last year remains well above target. Several officials see need to consider risk of over tightening. Officials will judge next rate decision on total totality of data on economic uh, in, uh, economy and inflation. Some officials see commercial real estate valuations and declines hurting banks and issuers. Some officials see home price increases as sign the sector's response to rate increases have peaked. Oh, damn. That's crazy. That one's a wild statement. So the Fed's like, they only think home prices are going up because people are buying houses because they think the Fed's done raising. So they're saying if they're bearish, they could bring houses down. Officials see rise in unemployment, slower growth to get inflation to target. Some officials some officials see tighter bank conditions uh, or credit conditions than expected. Staff now sees no recession in 2023 and subdued economic growth in 2024 and 2025. That's a positive some officials worry tighter financial conditions could cause sharper slowdown than anticipated. And then most officials still see inflation risks and potential need for higher rates. So said slowdown in ec economic activity appeared to be happening. They saw below trend growth, softer labor market. I'm getting a bunch of different headlines. Amid uncertainty about monetary policy lags, participants said rate hikes are working as intended. Fed banking system is sound and resilient. Tighter credit conditions likely to weigh on economy. Mm -mm. Muted. I think the re the bonds barely moved off of it. I mean, I don't like what they... It sounds kind of hawkish. Let me read through it. But that real estate headline I got sounds extremely hawkish. As if the Fed has an incentive to, com to be more hawkish. Pretty much the Fed is saying that real estate went up because they weren't as hawkish. So that's the only like thing that sticks out to me out of reading any of that. That's an awful comment, in my opinion. I think that's the only thing that's like maybe that brings back the hawkish Jerome, but that's how I read it. Uh, the, in my mind, it reads as we brought houses up because people thought we were done raising rates. So that's that just sounds like not even they don't even have to hike more. I think they need a the peak rates is different. I think it's just the communication. That's the only thing that seems more hawkish than not. Let's see. Staff review. Well, it's like usually. Here, okay. You're dropping here. Let me skim through until I find you something. Uh, again, they the recession stuff is good. That one's actually bullish, though, too. Again, they say they used to think 2024, 25, they said subdued economy uh, instead of the recession stuff. Now we're starting to drop here a little bit. That's a little bigger. It could be the reaction to the, the housing. I don't know. That's the only thing that I see as like a red flag. But other than that, I don't I don't know how sensitive the markets are. Again, we're already at the low. So be careful. It's going to it's gonna be very volatile. Surprisingly, a little bit bigger of a move, but it's already chilling. Some, some weakening activity in Canada and Mexico. Whoa, whoa, what? Oh, I was like, dude, no way this didn't make the headlines. But no, emerging markets. So they said, in contrast, central banks of emerging markets. And then, the, that, then they said rate cuts. They said some indicated a rate cut is possible at the next meeting. They're talking about emerging markets. So they knew about China. That's crazy. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. I guess who else cut? India? Or Argentina? No, that means they knew about China. I mean, that's what it says a month ago. 
they said rate cuts. They said some countries, some other emerging markets indicated that they would have a rate cut possible at their next meetings. Uh, did Canada cut rates? I thought Canada just didn't raise. I thought Canada raised rates. Is that why Buffett bought home builders? Maybe, but again, what what they're saying though could just it could just say a more hawkish Powell. Uh, I don't know. Let's get some more clarity. We'll see how other people take it. Wait till the bulls di digest it. That's it. Because <laughs> again, someone's be like, "That's a great comment." So and enough people will get behind it. But like I said, that's the on the first read I'm skimming through now. That's the only thing that stood out to me as a red flag. And then the economy updates were actually good. September that was talking about uh, other countries. Mm. easily not to mentions some easing of inflationary pressures somewhat at shorter maturities they talk some on bank conditions remain accommodative uh, with credit available for most borrowers, credit imbalances increased. They brought up the slews. The bank reported expected to continue tightening and lending standards on credit card loans. So some some participants observed that recent increases in home prices suggested that the sector's response to monetary policy restraint may have peaked. Hold on. They noted that consumer. I'm going to read the paragraph of where it's from. So this is where it came from. Again, they're talking about GDP, page seven of the minutes. Participants noted that consumer spending uh, had recently exhibited considerable resilience, underpinned in aggregate, strong household balance sheets, robust job income gains, low unemployment rate, and rising consumer confidence. Uh, nevertheless, tight financial conditions primarily reflecting the cumulative effect of the committee shift to slower growth in consumptions in the periods ahead. Participants cited other factors that were likely leading or appeared to be consistent with the slowdown in consumption, including declining uh, stock of excess savings, softening labor market, and increased price sensitivity on the part of consumers. Some participants observed that recent increases in home prices suggested that the housing sector's response to monetary policy restraint may have peaked. So they're saying houses are, but everything else is slower. So that's a very weird way to lead that comment in too. So they're saying the response to the housing may have peaked, but also, again, they were just saying savings and other things are dwindling. No, they're saying the opposite. So they're saying although housing may have been responding and may have peaked, they're saying the other stuff uh, has not really worked out. I guess they're trying to balance it out. They're saying, I guess they said, again, excess savings slowing down, softening labor, but then they think people and houses have chilled out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, man, I have to ban you. I'm sorry. Nothing is, again, we're doing the same thing I told you. I told you for hours today, we're just going to go through and look for like four or five words. Some people consider it stupid analysis. Well, if you're going to criticize me for it and you didn't take it upon yourself to go take a nap, like you're just a fool. You know what I'm saying? That's that's on, that's on you, bro. That's on you. I'm gladly, I'll gladly read them all. I'm still skimming through it. I said softening core, but yeah, just take a nap. Like that's what you're supposed to do, bro. That's what you're supposed to do. Can't get mad at me. That's why you need a nap. You're grumpy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm weak AF. Why, bro? Just hit the gym. God bless you. Thank you. I am reading. I'm sorry. I have a good attention span, though. I could do a lot of things at the same time. Again, they're talking banks, financial stability. Stress has calmed in recent months. They noted that most recent stress indicated large banks appear to be well. Oh, damn it. The downgrade didn't happen, huh?
Yeah. They didn't they didn't mention the uh, downgrade. They commented on risks associated with potential decline in CRE adversely affects some banks and other financial institutions. Some non-bank financial. Some participants commented that even though economic activity had been resilient, the labor market remained strong. There continued to be downside risk to economic activity and upside risk to unemployment. These included the possibility of macro effects of tightening. Yeah, it's still the same shit. That stuff makes no sense. So some... I'm looking for all members now. Please hold. Slews. Regionals balanced off. I can't. We that big reaction. I don't know if it was from the first comment or not. But like I'm saying, just watch where kind of the end of the day mode is. Amid these economic conditions, almost all participants judged. That's that's the only thing they agreed on? Oh, all the participants agreed it was appropriate to continue the process of reducing this. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. They didn't... And there's Again, I'm looking for several now. So there's nothing they all agreed on except raising rates. That's the irony of that whole statement. So remember, we were expecting dissents, right? So there's no statement in this minutes that says all participants unless they're agreeing. But then every other thing they talked about, half of them agree, half of them are on the other side. You're getting another red candle now. So watch out, Chad. Oh, that was a bigger gap. A new low. 44.17 now. Parachute level in four points. You could be jumping from the top rope right now. But let's see, man. This is important. No, yes, we do get hit in on here. If you don't find it or they cut your stream off, you got to send me a screenshot or record it. Otherwise, I can't do anything about it. And then we just smile and say thank you for shopping at the stock market live. Thank you. Headshot again, four four one seven. I'm doing several now. Several noted the susceptibility of coal of coal. I was gonna say coal real estate of real estate. I can't say real estate without saying coal real estate. Now that's hilarious. Several participants emphasized the need for banks to establish readiness to use Federal Reserve banks to establish readiness for liquidity facilities to ensure its own readiness to provide liquidity during periods of stress. So that's the so in several participants stress that there's only four mentions of the word several on the whole minutes and it was several participants emphasizing the need for banks to establish readiness of federal reserve liquidity facilities jeez then they discovered several risk management considerations Several participants commented that significant disinflationary pressures had yet to become apparent in the prices of core services, excluding housing. So none of them believe inflation has gone down or disinflation in the in the metric super core. And then again, just several noted the the issue. It's a dud, man. As all, I think the markets are. If anything, I would say this reads slightly hawkish. But then again, you should have. That remember last last meeting was supposed to be hawkish. Don't forget. Remember last meeting was the hawkish pause. So I'm saying like whatever headlines we got out of this, it it seemed like it reads a little hawkish. But this is the minutes from the hawkish pause. So overall, I'm not too like shooken up about it. I guess. I don't know. Let me get in on the action. Top tick, Josh. I went with two MESs. I bought some to the upside. We'll see. Again, I just don't think we'll move too much. I'm still scared of the parachute level. Uh, but they've slowly conditioned me to stop fighting on shorts unless I have the yield curve in my favor. Mm -mm. 
That's just going to be for a flip. Analyst Seth Carpenter, Morgan Stanley, believes Jerome Powell could use the Jackson Hole Conference in August to talk about future policies. Interesting. No, man. That's it. I'd say I'd be on worry. I'd be worried about Powell though at, at Jackson Hole. I would be. I would be worried about that if that's the case. That's what people are saying. But I guess now that you have the pause in minutes, if the that real estate comment is a trip. Other than that, I think they're going to be the uh, like maybe Powell does it, but it seems like the Fed is aware of Powell's attitude. Other than that, dude, they're warning about banks. That's it. The banks and commercial real estate, it's still a top issue. And like I'm saying, too, uh, it's just like this is still their uh, what's it called? This was the hawkish pause. So keep that in mind when you're looking at it all. And then bonds went lower after that. That's even surprising, though. So bonds just continued what they were doing to begin with. But that says a lot. Mm. Not bad at all. Uh, today's Philo, we haven't got to do it yet. I don't know if we are going to get it now that we have the... What time is it? It's already 11.16. I got, I mean, you know, I could always throw in a philo. Like, they just, they kind of arrived, my friend. Mm -hmm. So, again, I went, the MES went up a little bit. I wanted to go with a big one, but I didn't want to get too trapped, and we'll see. I'm just thinking, dude, we end up at open or VWAP. Uh, otherwise, if we break the level, though, that parachute level still has a lot of downside written all over it. Pinterest on the high. Yo, check Pinterest. A lot of news today on that, and that's breaking out, not even responding to what's going on. Pins, check news there. That's breaking out at the high on big volume. Pinterest. Again, old. there's old Amazon news like 30 minutes ago or two hours ago. It's the news you guys got on here. Fastly's going up as well, too. That's another runner. You got a couple of small cap runners. Low key. You can do it. Yeah, Jackson Hole is next week. So that's why. It's just like this kind of set. Dude, pins. That's a dollar almost. Is it? No, it's 40 cents. No, it's 20 cents. It just looks like it. 50 cents from the 34 candles. A dollar almost from the bottom. Spy's coming up. There you go. A bigger move. Nothing too crazy. Nice MES. Yeah, that worked for now. It's up. A big one would have been nice, but I'll take it. But even then, just wait a little bit. If it does, if it fails right here, it's just gonna it's gonna look like the bonds. It'll just keep doing this little downtrend. It's weird that the minutes took the bonds down. Again, it did read hawkish, but it, it was, yeah, it was slightly hawkish, but I don't know. I think everybody forgot we just had the hawkish pause. Remember, that was the theme of the last meeting. So, like, that's what I had to remind myself because after when I was finished reading it, I was like, wow, that was very, uh, that was hawkish. But then I was like, wait a minute. Last meeting was literally called the hawkish pause. It was the meeting where they, they said, we're not going to raise rates, but we're going to be very, very forceful with what we say we're going to do in the future. And then, remember, it turned into the whole wait for the two data sets and all that. Oh, dude, pins ripping again. 
I gave you a middle call out. I don't think we were early. I don't think you were late because it keeps going, but no play on that. So see, if it gets through here, you rip up, you'll get some excitement. If not, bro, it's just going to mess with you. They have something two minutes ago, two Pinterest directors to leave next door. I saw antitrust stuff in the morning. I don't know what it is. It could be the Amazon stuff and people are just reacting late because I don't even think the Amazon stuff made it move. But it's killing it. Pinterest, I keep your eye on that, especially if you like some of the hype plays. Fastly's going up too. Mm. Earlier, Amazon BuzzFeed to show Amazon sponsored products. Yeah, that was the only news. That's what I was saying. Like, that is what uh, the only thing I saw when I look back, but it just started stacking up from the from everything going on here. Mm. The dollar and 10 to two year are negatively correlated. Uh, what do you expect if they start moving in the same direction? Not much. I mean, all I care about, especially when putting up the two-year tenure, is the two-year tenure, uh, if it uninverts or not. So that's, I wouldn't even, don't even throw the dollar into it. Uh, otherwise, it might give you a signal, but just for sake of not getting confused. We didn't hawkish pause last meeting. No, we did. It was September, right? Or uh, July. It was That was the hawkish pause. It was just like a month ago. Or a month and a half ago now. That was the meeting before. I thought it was the meeting before in the sense I was like, I'm surprised people aren't reacting. But I do think the uh, other one's there. Yeah, that MES was killer. I'm, I should have. I wanted a big one, but I was like, don't let me go too crazy. You know, I don't want to throw you all off. So, either way. Mm -mm. What the future's doing? They moving, bro. They move it. They move it. Oh, wait. Did we raise at the last meeting? Yeah, but no. That, that's why it was the hawkish pause. Yeah. Because, yeah, it was the raise, and then they're saying that was going to be the final raise. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was the hawkish pause. I'm, I'm a hundred percent. Again, there are all of the words in the meetings. They confuse the shit out of us. But that was no. June was when you thought it was gonna pause, and that's what I was saying. That's exactly what I was saying. I was like, why didn't everybody buy the bonds then? And then they said raise in July, but then they said now we're stopping. So July is when they raised, but July is when they communicated they were pausing. But that's why they said it was gonna be a hawkish pause. The, the statement was very, very hawkish. And then they said, we are not going to raise rates at the next meeting, but we still can if the data shows. Again, just welcome to the, the fuckery of the confusion they put us through. It's a game of, it's a battle of words, my friend. The skip was June, and then July was a raise, but that was your pause. That's the... That's the awkward part about it. Mm. Mm. Yes, the raise is the hawkish pause from here out. But they did this skip that Powell said, why would you call it a skip in June? But then that was just... It's actually crazy. <laughs> and that was like, what, two months ago? Almost three? You know, the raise pause. I'm still in the MES. Why are you so concerned, sir? 
We got a quarter percent, 125 on two of them. Not bad. We just bottom ticked it, but this move is tiny. So it would have been bigger on a bigger one, but still in it. I mean, I just got it. Mm -hmm. 4,500 possible Monday. I mean, maybe. I think any any day we've been down in like near a low level, like almost instantly, you have had the ability to like climb back up to like just under 4,500. So, I mean, I wouldn't rule that out of the equation. Eleven twenty-four. They're too legit. I love this channel. I love you too, man. Uh, God bless you. That's the type of messages we like to see. But just get a membership though, just in case. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Because the next, the next one, I was just, I was about to go dark on them. You know. So I love you, man. I hope you're learning. So amen. But you don't need a membership just in case it gets rocky in here. That's the only thing. Mm-hmm. Pinterest, no, nah, just the same news as before. Again, it was like old news that made it run, but we don't know why it's running. Like the extra dollar. Love from India, hey, amen. Yeah, DFS. Dude, it's been weird. DFS, I think there was a, I don't think it was like random that he left, but people did not like that, and I don't even think their plans for replacement are any good. Stock trading. What's up, baby? There's my guy at the end of earnings, too. Let's go. <laughs> Amen. 13 Fs. I feel like there was a lot of them, but it just depends how much you cared for it. And then now this time around, I think the market moved a lot since the last 13 Fs where they were kind of dated. But there will be more, too, though. They're not all done. They're new to this. I'm learning a lot by listening. I hope you get a long term, though. That's it. I mean, on a day to day basis, we cover a lot of stuff. And uh, like you say, like it's simple. Like you fuck with me. I'm like the worst person to troll back with. It's awful. You know, people get it's just a lot of drama. But at the end of the day, if you got serious questions, always ask me. You will learn. But at the same time, whatever you get exposed to on a day to day, get a long term. So above all else, like, you know, today's a day we didn't get to talk about the long term as much. You know, I haven't even pulled up my long term account. So just just make sure you do it, though. Just make sure you do it. Uh, that's a big, big part of this. It's not only just the trades, but like, you know, owning stocks and taking advantage of the stock market. Uh, you know, that's how you're going to be able to, to really build wealth with all of this. Powell is not coming on today. No. Takyo is. That's why I tune in every. I do. It's so funny. It's like some of you love it. <laughs> you like go, baby, go. Honestly, some of you need to come with me to like. We need to go like gambling or something or like if I ever get. Uh, into like like a marathon or something. I need like some of y'all. Y'all are the ones I need. I need y'all handing me water. Be like, you don't even need the water and just throw it at me. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Business, baby. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't see the 10. And then another five. Oh, and road to the peach, baby. Let's go. I, I, maybe I should give an earmuff warning. Y'all getting me way too hype, bro. Let's go. Oh, or not. Amen. Amen. We ripping now? Kind of. It's still holding up. I mean, we got a good entry, but we'll see where it takes us. Yeah, that'll be the first fucking play to hit today. All the other ones are like, nah, Josh, I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> Every play just went instantly. But then again, on both of the plays, I did say top tick. So I usually I know when I'm more top ticking or not, but like that one... But then again, I didn't say top tick on the future, did I? If I did, I guess so. And then we canceled out all of it. 
Whoa. Whoa, 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 Mr. Fontana! Edgar! Father Edgar. You guys hear it? I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just buy some long term right foot buy calls. Don't buy any options. Get a share long term. Father Edgar! How many sons? How many sons had Father Edgar? And so did business. And so did Mr. Fontana. And also all the chads. I can't read that fast. I have to click it. Shout out stock trading to and Moses and the chat. Let's go, baby. <laughs> oh, thank you. What am I singing? It's the song called Ban. Don't stop it. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been. I'm going to time him out. I'm just sorry. You know this song. Oh, I have way too much hype, baby. I love the chat. That's all I was... That's the vibes I'm on. It's just, oh my gosh. It's the father, eh? It means a lot to me. You beat me to it. That's it, bro. Open, open face. Feel free, bro. I feel bad, bro. You know that? You guys got, like, some nice-ass mods, too. You know that? So, God, you better show love to the mods. I had Najee Wolf, like, emailing me. He was like, my bad, bro. I had to ban this guy. He kept calling me a bunch of shit in Spanish. <laughs> and I was like, Najee, don't feel bad about that. It's fine, bro. If somebody is tagging you in your name and cussing you out in your language, dog, feel free to ban them. I'm not, like, I believe me. You're not going to, like, I'm not going to be like, hey, man, why'd you do that? Nah, bro. I feel you. Go ahead, bro. I see your family. I, I take offense to that, too. You know, that's it. They make fun of Najee, they make fun of me. That's fine. I'll be like, get him, bro. Shit. <laughs> I saw I was like, man, you guys are you guys are nice. That's it. So that's fine. You guys keep doing your thing. I'll be I'll be the bully if that's what I have to be. But I'm not trying to be a bully. I'm just trying to be a I'm trying to be the strict teacher so that y'all stop fucking around. Here, I'll show you. I can show you. Actually, I'll do it in a little bit. We'll give him some time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Please don't ban me. It's okay. The ban means nothing. That's it. That's all. There's just like a period where I, where I gave in to the bullshit of people actually like crying about the bans. And honestly, it's over now. A ban means nothing, dude. I don't care about it. Like, I hope you don't either. And if you do, that's your personal problem. Go make another account. Be reborn. Try again. Like, that's it. If you want to vibe with it, you can, revi you can vibe. Like, that's all. Like, again, people in here are mods who have been banned. Like, it has nothing to do with, like, you as a person. But if you continue to to not have the same, but you know, productive behavior, it's like, I'm just not going to fuck with you. <laughs> like, I can't change that. Like, unfortunately, I just, uh, that's all. Like, uh, so you got to, if you don't, if that's the vibe we have here, if it's not positive, if it's not on there, uh, yeah, we just, unfortunately, got to do it. Mm-hmm. Ban badge. Not getting real estate is there another department I could get into. Uh, you could be like a transaction coordinator, but what about mortgages? Honestly, you should get into mortgages. Uh, you could work like you could even work for a mortgage company so you don't have to go and get leads. But like it's just like a bunch of pencil pushing and numbers. Like you'll have to do a couple of phone calls with like lenders and people, but it's not a uh, it has nothing to do with, uh, like anything else, if that makes any sense. It's like, you're not, you're not selling people. You could be an appraiser. That's fire too, honestly. Uh, and they, they'll need you. But I think, I think mortgages, uh, mortgages, because mortgages you'll make as much as the agents. That's the thing. Like a lot of people don't realize, like if you do mortgages, like you're making a bag. Don't ever get it twisted. They yeah, loan officers make a bag, dude make a bag it's you get the same amount as a as a real estate commission that blew my mind when i learned it back in the day because i always thought the real estate agents were getting the good money but i was like dude you're getting like two percent three percent sometimes uh it just depends what you're doing on the deal but it's like you could go work with somebody and, and make a lot you could go work for uwmc Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, Father Edgar. Hey, wait, Perigo, hold on. P P P R P R G O dying. Hey, Red Cam, I'm serious. Red, look, 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 red candle. Uh, P R G O dying. He's going down right now. It's a real call out. I mean, I mean, I mean it. Seriously, it's not hyperbole. It's a red candle down, down two percent in one minute. I don't have any news. I'm checking right now. Hold on. I'm gonna pre R T O Perigo. It's not not on here. Optimize entry. No, he's not. No, no, not seeing anything. Check it. Yeah, 2.7, Perigo's going down. Biden had it first. Uh, but I don't have any news on that. Let me double check. One more. I could. E it's either going to be related to manufacturing uh, or manufacturing, I think, on their last earnings. Or it could be the other ones. There's a Reuters headline. Um, Swedish government. I'm not seeing it. Uh, U.S. appeals court rules to restrict access to abortion pill. Whoa, really? No way. Prof. The real one. Vance, God bless you, Vance. But that's it. But like I'm saying, like, it's fun to you, but I'm like, hey, man, it's not even that fun. It's not even personal. <laughs> but you're like, I love it. I'll pay you. Like, man, it's a weird situation we got here. But either way, man, it's all love. I think uh, we got time, bro. We got time. Father Perigo. No. Mm -mm. I sadly lost my previous badge when this account got breached. Had to rejoin. Did you get banned or did someone like steal your account? K Web. Wasn't Baba kind of doing good in the morning? I don't get how these guys are not dying. Like, low-key, China, with all these headlines, have showed so much resilience. They got breached, so I canceled all charges. Well, your your badge stays with you, so... Even then, I don't know. If you've had it on this same account, though... Unless you made a new one. The peso on the black market weakens to 780 from 730... Hit as high as 800. I thought JD already reported. They yeah, ask people not to sell. Yeah, but like they're not selling Alibaba on the US market. They're talking about like on the Shanghai composite. Target earnings was great, actually. Uh, at least for our play, the earnings itself was better than expected, but then they still uh, lowered revenue uh, and earnings guidance. But we closed that when I was like 4.1 or 4.2 thousand in profit. But I got out of it really early. I was out by 5 a.m. this morning, 5.09. In lieu of gifts, I make a contribution to buy Josh a house account. All in favor? I agree. SRCE, Joanne on the high. Uh, Joanne's popping. I know some of you guys are playing that. Argentina's Millet says uh, would make every effort to avoid default. Oh, man. That sucks, though. Like, Argentina was bad, but then, like, it like low-key, their problems got, like, 30% worse just because he got elected. It's so sad. Like, literally, they wouldn't have had to devalue if he didn't get elected. He would shut Central Bank if elected. Yeah. You know that. The guy hates Central Banks, bro. He says he'll burn them to the ground. Yeah, so Argentina, what's it, Javier, is it Mailai or Malay? I don't know how to say it. Uh, but he was, uh, he likes the U S dollar though, ironically enough. So he doesn't like, he doesn't like the central banks, but he wants the U S dollar. So he just said, fuck the Argentina currency. Let's just get U S dollars and then no central bank. Mm-hmm. But 
he got he got elected again. I made this on the this was big. This is a big deal. Uh, just be like Argentina again. If you care about commodities and lithium, uh, they're actually really important. Other than that, they don't have like big trade agreements with them. But it's like right when this guy got elected, he's like they they call him the Argentinian Trump. Right when he got elected. The currency and the bonds just exploded because everyone was like, dude, this guy's psycho. Uh, again, he, he has plans to eliminate the central bank and do a lot of things. So right when he got elected, everybody got worried. The currency went crazy, and then they had to weaken. So we just experienced that. This was all in the last, like, 48, 72 hours. But pretty big deal. But, like, again, you're not going to feel it. Uh, it shouldn't have too much impact on you. But it does fall in line with just another one of these currencies in European nations just going ape shit right now and then just doing a lot of surprise and big actions in government and, and in the Fed. Dollarization is pretty mainstream. It's a good idea. It's not dumb. He's smart with the dollarization. It's just weird that he, I again I think he wants to he hates all central banks. So it's interesting that he wants to use the dollar but then he also is like I don't want a central bank. I wonder what, but then that, mean, that means the government is probably going to try to, is either going to have way more or way less government control on on business. Mm-hmm. And there it is. All right. I think we got confirmation. We got confirmation from Spotify, Chad. August 25th. You get it. August 25th. That is it. You get it. I think you get it with lyrics, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. So get ready. Get ready. It's good. Not too bad. I should, You should have got it earlier, but... Either way. Mm. A music video, we're working on it. We gotta get the we gotta get the cartoon. F three fifty, we're still getting that done. I like Spotify, bro. I'm I looked at them. They're down to it sucks that they ran up so much on the year. But I was like, one thirty's not bad. If they didn't start at eighty Blur. Hertz CEO Stephen Schur and GM. Yeah, I'm Mary Barra. Fuck yeah. Get on there. What are you going to announce? Where Hertz is going to buy a hundred a million thousand trillion rental cars, huh? I'm down. Let's go. I'm going to get I'm gonna get a rental car for the White House. Yeah, I get a nice little Ford Edge. Huh? Ford Focus. Yeah, let me get a Ford. I'm going to get a Ford. You know, from Focus. I'm a Ford. You know, Ford is good for education. Huh? Come on. I mean, I mean it. Yeah, I'm gonna roll the ZT. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll it right away. Cause if I don't roll, if I don't roll it, and I forget. I'm about, when I don't roll it, it's gonna pop. You're gonna say, "Look at that, Josh. You could you could get your money, but you didn't roll it over." Yeah, fine. I, I, I believe in rolling over. That's yeah. I gotta do it. I'm gonna do. I'm, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it fast, like a Hummer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but seriously, I will. I'm gonna roll it over. Yeah, very soon. Very right now, maybe. I don't see Mary. Oh, right, you're coming down. When's the last time you did an option? Uh, I don't know. Contrary to popular belief, I believe. What the fuck is this? Intel hitting a snag and its plans. To what weird ass music? Tapping a deal with his. But yeah, I hit an option. I think I hit a two thousand percenter so far in August. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. I still got it, bro. I still got it. I still got it. And now it's mutually, and I'm using mutually in quotations. Okay, I'm going to go pee now. They agreed. Follow me on Israeli Instagram. After trade for Israeli founder to terminate its plans to acquire Tower. But this failed deal is really about China's regulators refusing to play ball amid rising tensions with the United States. Intel derives over a quarter of its revenues from China. In other words, it has a strong presence in the country, employing over 12,000 people. Regulators have the right to review any mergers of companies like Intel that earn a certain amount of 
revenue in China, much like we have here in the United States. And that's why you're seeing Tower Semi shares but tanking down almost 11 percent, Intel down two and a half percent. Not as bad as a reaction. But overall, China, we know this, we talked about it, is not happy with the American-led set of international restrictions on the sale of advanced computer chips. This failed acquisition is just a way for China to fight back, just like it did by blocking the sale of Micron chips to certain Chinese infrastructure products back in May. Today's block deals sets a precedence for any other American firm that derives revenue from China and wants to get involved with any type of M&A activity. This also disappoints prospects for Intel's foundry business. Tower Semi is small, less than $2 billion in revenue, and it has 1% of the market share for total foundry revenues. You're seeing on your screen there that 1% just on the top left. Taiwan Semi on the right side for context takes up 58%, Samsung 8%. Intel isn't even on that pie chart yet, and that's the problem. Losing the Tower Semi deal would not move the deal massively, according to analysts on the street, but would have given Intel some more expertise in running a foundry and as well lagging nodes, which is just really chips used in, let's say, uh, the auto sector, for example. And so now Intel is cross, caught in the crosshairs between the United States and China and really just has a $353 million breakup fee. Why did the deal fall apart? What, what happened? Well, it's because of regulators. Because they, of the regulators. Yeah, Chinese regulators. They, they kept uh, delaying it, delaying it, and then 18 months later they did... They decided, both companies decided they were mutually going to agree to just kill the yeah. deal. Because there's no point in waiting and putting all this money in there. So Intel's Waiting for cost. approval from the Chinese precisely, who, are, who precisely. are not on a good foot with yeah. the U.S. right so, now. So if Intel doesn't get this business and they still need to figure out how to get into the foundry business, what else are they going to do? Intel is already getting into the foundry business. They have this whole model uh, that they're calling the Intel Foundry uh, System, IFS. Okay. And they have signed on uh, clients like MediaTek, Synopsys, which the earnings are out after the bell today. Uh, a few others. And so that is where Intel wants to move for going forward. Two weeks ago, I interviewed uh, Pat Gelsinger, the CEO, and he talked about AI and how Intel can capitalize on this massive push to spend on AI by building and creating the tri chips that uh, are going to be needed. So they may not be designing it and, and they're not going to be like the likes of NVIDIA, but they will contract them out much like TSMC does. And so that's what Intel wants to do. They are putting a lot of effort into this business uh, for the goal of five new chips in the next four years, which is a lofty goal. And it seems like they're on the path, but we know Intel has failed in the past. So there's a lot of skeptics out there uh, that may be a little bit more reluctant uh, to say that this is a win or a, a loss or like why even own Intel? That's mm. what Mizuho said. Who owns yeah. Intel? Yeah. Mm. Christina, thank you. Yeah, Thanks. Good to be with you. Thanks. All right, still ahead, checking the charts. We asked our technician to give us the lowdown on some key movers. We'll get some technical support when Power Lunch returns. On the lowdown. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Mm -mm. Not bad. Not bad. I own Intel. Honestly, L they didn't go crazy. Mm -mm -mm. Like the other day when the chips started going up, like in November they were all went up like six, seven. Intel didn't do anything. Can I buy stocks here? There's a lot of stocks, but yeah, uh, just make sure you get the right ones. Uh, usually, I would say the ones that are not at a premium. However, a lot of valuations have changed in the last couple of weeks. Uh, that's something too. So that's why I'm kind of saying like as everyone's trying to prepare on what to buy, what to not buy. It's like the one element of today is like, or the last couple of weeks is that valuations are fluctuating. I mean, again, some prices are, are much, much more different than just where they were at just two weeks ago. Estee Lauder, they're good, but they're not as good as the rest. Estee Lauder has market share. But, I mean, again, if they're coming down and all of these other companies are coming up, that, that means market share. they're losing market share. So they're the value play in cosmetics, but, I mean, they just keep getting murdered. So, like, now they're back to the 2019 levels. They were already elevated, too. It kind of looks like Target's chart, uh, if you look at it. But Estee Lauder is good if, if you want it. Otherwise, you think something else goes lower, or you go for the outperformers who are taking the market share. Like, that's what's high. It's like Elf, a, a lot of them. There's just a lot of other... Like, there's other cosmetics that are getting very popular 
uh, that you know they're all un- they're owned under different bands. Again, Cody owns a bunch of the brands as well. Uh, there's one more, and then just even Ulta. I think even Ulta got their own little brand. But it's just if anything, Elf up, Elf straight up, Estee Lauder straight down. There's something has somebody's taking some sliver of market share. I would argue so, but doesn't mean like Estee Lauder. They they are the they're they're the whale in that industry. Who owns the other one though? There's like there's L'Oreal too though. So like L'Oreal is not Estee Lauder. A lot of the companies you would think would be Estee Lauder are L'Oreal, and L'Oreal's a foreign company. Mm-hmm. So like most of the like most of the commercials is there Revolve. My girl said it's chill. She said it's fire. So I thought I remember I think you brought up Revolve. I was like, I don't think my girl shops there. Or as ever, and then she texted me that day, and she's like, "No, Revolve is fire." And she a lot of brand loyalty. It sounded like, and then Spy coming down. Mm. Welcome to the minutes, man. So again, the reaction we're still with. It's pretty big. Like I'm saying, you're getting motion, but you're not really moving. So. We'll see if we break a low or not. We haven't hit the parachute level, so we'll find out. Revlon? No, no, no. Revolve is a clothing company. Uh, it's like a newer clothing company. Not newer, but like like in the last like 10 years, but it's gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, I think they just IPO'd not too long ago. All right. Flushing back down. So right below, dude, level means absolutely nothing both ways. You've literally, you've actually today it had some respect here. Again, this is the first time dealing with 4425. So it's actually wild that we're kind of doing the dance around there. That's been around more than 10 years. I think I just started hearing about it within there, but even better. But I think they're, they're, they're on the newer side. Close the MES. Uh, you just watched all of your profit disappear. You still got some. So if you're scared, fuck yeah, get out now because then you'll be like, I got out with a profit. Otherwise, uh, I think that 4425, I mean, we could still parachute down. Uh, that's why I'm glad it's small now, but I'm going I'm to ride it out for a little bit. I still got $7 now from 140 So bottom tick, MES got you 140 bucks. Now you're down to like 7 MO, I like it a lot. We talked about that. Just, I was saying earlier in the day, like, uh, I, I wanted MO at the beginning of the year. It's very, very good. So that's why I was like, it's, that's what I want, man. That's what I want. But uh, it's still not at the price that I saw at the beginning of the year. So we'll see. You should not ride this out. You should have already gotten out. Honestly, man, I'm a troubled child. Like, I don't know, because that's what all the teachers tell me. That's what everybody tells me, my peers. A lot of, you know how many times I've heard that in my life? Should not be riding that. You should have gotten out already. Take profit. Sell out. Where's your, your stop loss? So, yeah, I do have that problem, child energy. I'm sorry. I apologize, but I'm, I have to, I got to complete this now. I got to ride this through. Mm. Piper Sandler. I've never seen, let's see this guy, bro. Fuck yeah. Good, great call out. Great call out. If anything happens, I'll find a play. We were talking meantime. last. This is Piper. That's couple not Piper. Of stocks, Microsoft and Apple and the, t and the technicals on those two. You have any thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, when I look at a chart of Microsoft and Apple, I think what is happening is that both of those names have been among the this is Piper uh, magnificent Sandler? seven yes. this is Pumper that we've Sandler? talked about here on the shows for, for months and months now. They look like they're just sort of getting trimmed. A lot of the portfolio managers out there have a problem where they can only own certain percentages of like their top 10 names. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. Microsoft and also Apple are such large percentages of these indexes that, that they're, they're going to have to be forced, trimmed. Actually, uh, now there's Microsoft and you see it. Correct. Uh, let's see. And there's Apple Correct. today. Year to date up 36 percent. You can't complain. Honestly, not that exciting. I'm surprised that if that was Piper and he's older, it kind of makes sense, though. But like. I feel like they have young analysts and old money behind them. That's the only way that that combination works. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like a 25-year-old who's just like fucking buy all of the EV flying stocks today. 
we're going to triple upgrade it. But then it's backed in like they have a book and clients who are just like 70 plus all own REITs and shit. You know what I'm saying? And this is their like 10%. It's the only way I could think of it. Otherwise, very fascinating. Very, very fascinating. VGR, no, I haven't looked into that. Plays like the VIX when you discuss Jackson Hole. I checked it, really liking those. So, honestly, even after that email uh, with, uh, with Will and the one that we just went over today, I kind of have, like, my eyes opened up a little bit uh, in the sense that, like, I think some of you guys are, like, I think you are are wisely bearish in the sense that I think you have, like, a bias towards some of the, like, the bear stuff, but I don't think you're naively bearish or I don't think you are, like, a, like an angry bear, uh, if that makes sense. And, and what I mean by that is I, I think you guys are genuinely understanding and trying to protect uh, certain things. There's some of you. I hope that applies to some of you. At least I'm realizing some of you are, when, when some of these questions are asked, it's not as speculative as it sounds when I read it or where I'm like, okay, what the fuck are you thinking? You know what I'm saying? Where it's like legitimately, I think, cautious or it's just like you have an idea. And I, and I see that you have an idea, but also more along the lines of like, you know, you, I don't know if you're executing it in the same way. And that's where, again, like holding something like the VIX and you're seeing it, I think you're seeing an idea and I think you see the protection, but like you just got to understand long-term VIX is just, it's never going to work. You know, so like it's good. Protect your savings. I'm down with that. But you got to just, you. there's a good way to do it. And you said that is how I am. Yes, that's exactly how I am. I'm, I'm bearish, but to the point of like, I don't care if things go down. I'm bearish to the point I care if I protect myself and the people I'm around. Do you understand? That's, that's what I care about then. So if the whole world goes down, but I find a way to hedge it, I don't give a shit. I'm sorry to break it to you. Oh my gosh. That's why I, again, I, I have morality in my private time. Even I'll share it as much as I can with you and everything else. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like the logic that I have is like, I do not, nothing, you don't need to tell me it has to go down or that the world's going to end or it's like all these things, but it's like, okay, if there is a real risk, how do I make sure I protect myself? And part of that, and this is why I'm, I'm telling you guys this right now, because it's like the answer to protect is not always buy something. And I'm not giving you the same speech about buy other things. What I'm telling you, though, is that it's not like in a weird way, like just like with the play we went over, I found out like, yeah, he, he I think he just wants calls. Again, he sees the short side, but I'm like, why even worry about the other short side, especially when like most roads are leading back to buy a call on the bond. So I'm saying, why not just like wait it out and like scale into it with a certain timing and then go about buying what you want at a way, way better price and then and building a position. So that's kind of what it's like here. It's like, if you are trying to go for protection, I hope that I could give you this simple answer of the stock market. And I hope you, you, you cement this in your market, you know, Vo vocabulary glossary toolbox whatever you want to call it there's no such thing as holding the vix for the long term and it helping you out okay that's the so that's the first thing what you got to think about is like if you're trying to look for long-term protection or not you got to ask yourself how do i protect by either buying something to protect buying insurance or how do I protect by buying at, at a certain price? Because that's another option. So that's a lot of times the, the, the thing you're going to be faced with is this question. This is the, the, the decision of life or a lot in business you're going to have to ask yourself or especially if you're trying to get sophisticated. You know, you have to understand if you're buying something and then trying to buy a hedge, that is sophisticated. So here is the, 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 the question you will be faced with. Does it make more sense to pay for insurance or would it be cheaper to not buy insurance and try to rebuild or go without it? I don't know. Have any of you ever dri driven without car insurance? Uh, you know, I mean, I I'm not going to lie to you. I think when I was younger, I probably did it for a little bit. <laughs> I'm just saying, are you? if you want to make the decision 
to to go beyond like that's on you if you you know what i'm saying like like to a degree like i'm saying like that same money the same five thousand dollars you would spend on insurance what if you could buy a new car you get what i'm saying so in a weird way, that is, I think if we could get that down there, that's the real question in terms of hedging your portfolio long term. That's what I realized. I realized at one point in my life, instead of getting insurance, I'll just fucking buy or lease a car every three years. But this case, it was a long term. You know what I'm saying? Instead of buying insurance that was, you know, even one year, I'm telling you, you haven't gone through it yet. If you haven't bought one or two year insurance yet, you don't understand. You haven't gone through it yet. Where you're, where you were, because you're like one year is a lot of time. It's not. <laughs> I promise you. You know why? How old are you, mother effer? You realize how dumb you are, and you've made it through like twenty years easy. No, I'm talking about me too, bro. I'm an idiot. How have I not died, dude? I've gone through several years, so I'm just saying, bro. A year is a lot. It's, it's easier than you think to make it through a year. Uh, God willing, finger to the sky. But you know, I hope you get what I'm saying with that. But it's like. That insurance, you you know, you might realize that, damn, especially if that insurance has a high premium and a high cost, it's like, dude, after two years, three years, you could just buy a car. Yeah, the value would have went down for a little bit, but it's like if it's cheaper and then where's it, where does it like end up? So it's just it's a very finicky subject. But what I'm saying is just figure out for long term insurance. And then again, I think a fundamental lesson for everybody just don't hold VIX short term. I'm not saying any, I'm not making this a crusade against the VIX. All I'm saying is just like VIX long term for the rest of your like No fucking way. That's not going to happen. Uh, again, it will dilute on you and it's not meant to be held like that. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, uh, just I think you got to find out the decision of of does it make sense to insure or does it make sense to ins to stack up and buy another one in the same time frame? So you just that's again the quality of insurance and that's why I'm saying, like, the quality of buying VIX, that's not quality insurance. So the, you, your intention is, is beautiful and correct. You want to protect. But the vehicle and going about it would, would not accomplish that. So that was the case. If it wasn't VIX, man, I, again, I think your best case is the bonds. If you really wanted to be an old man and insure against, just buy a bond right now. That's the best I could offer you for long-term hedge on your portfolio. Oh, that's it. That's the only thing that wouldn't get me banned from my my OG long term. I actually know investing card. That's the oh the solid. If I if you go buy the book, the book tells you you own stocks. You want to hedge? Go buy a bond. Otherwise, you get cash. But you know, building portfolio protection around puts is not really like fundamental towards insurance, if that makes sense, or buying the VIX. Again, that's more shorter term. That's going to be at certain moments, if that makes sense. But other than that, the real way where you're like, okay, I want to hedge my long term, you wouldn't buy the VIX. You would go go buy a bond because right now, if even if they cut rates, you will profit off of that as well. You'll get guaranteed money, but then every like again, four percent won't exist anymore. So four to one, unrealized, you'll have an unrealized gain instead of an unrealized loss, like the banks. So you could do the reverse of what the banks are doing now. So the, the, the proper way would be buy a bond. A SQQ does not apply. No. Again, those are all hedging instruments. Like I'm saying, it's more sophisticated. And I think those are all limited to time periods. If you wanted to hedge against the time period that was defined and that you know of, then you could justify using that. Maybe something happens overnight and you, 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 that would make you feel a little bit more comfortable and you determine it makes sense to spend that much for the next month. You, you go after that. Sure, go ahead. Would I do it? No, but go ahead. Uh, but that's not the proper way. The proper way, again, is would, if long-term, how do I hedge my long-term portfolio? would be buy a bond. That, that's what the old people do. That's what, again, just age old. That's where you get your return. That's where you get your safety. And if the stocks underperform or if something happened, you would see a sizable gain on your bond position. Mm -mm. I want to jinx it, but SpaceX is tracking to lift 80% of all mass to orbit. China, 10%, the rest of the world, 10 I don't know what the fuck that means, man. 
<laughs> Sorry. Can I get like it? Do I'm gonna try to hover over it with my clicker. You know, see if it like a pop up bubble pull up. Oh man. For the gambling port. Yeah, the gambling port fucking but even then, gambling port, I would lever up on bonds <laughs> or the yen. But even then, though, if we're talking, this, this this isn't a, again, I'm telling you, this is by the book. We're not talking about trading. I'm saying, again, the uh, great question. Again, I think someone asked me if they should buy the VIX for the long term to hedge. And I see their intention, but it just it's not the way to go about it. And like if you wanted to fall in line with a long term mentality and the rules and the principles that we've already gotten to build us this far, the way you would try to replicate that long-term hedge, the closest thing by the book you could do would be a would be buying a bond, uh, or you know again five ten percent twenty percent of your portfolio towards bonds depending on how you feel. Short term again you use whatever you want. That's the that honestly, short term is there's you know that's where the business is at, right? The, you know ever you got a thousand different theories on how to do that in the short term. But by the book, it's easy. <laughs> by the book, you get the bond and you wait and you sit and you let your long term do what you've already been doing for the last couple of years. But if you wanted to speculate it, I would, again, even if I was going to gamble that, though, my take, I would do a similar play, but with much more leverage. That's how I've usually done it. maximizing leverage you should know the methods i mean options futures the etfs levered etfs options on levered etfs options on futures like there's many ways go fucking get a loan get a weeble <laughs> i don't like you how levered do you want to be but uh you you should be exposed to most of uh all of it there but maximize that's the thing though it's it's one th maximizing leverage is different than like quality leverage if that makes sense. So that's the next thing. Like, again, that's why I brought up the wee bullshit. Again, you could go, remember that's what people would say when crypto is dying. They're like, let me put my money into these sketchy brokers to flip these coins. But it's like, okay, you may make money on the trade, but what if you can't get your money out? Then you see that's, that's a problem. So it's one thing to get a lot of leverage and maximize your play. But the next question is quality. That's why it's like, it's the types of assets you go about and, you know, understanding and try to lower your cost basis or, or making money on the buy, is, you know, with leverage. That's how you, that's how I see it as quality maximization is, is what I'd be going for. But maximum leverage is pure power. That's just, you know, steroids in the gym. But like, you know, but there might be some weak lig ligaments. If that play messes up, you're, you're clapped. So but versus you should you want to find a balance between a lot of leverage in maximizing but also quality and you know leverage that has more protection again the best example of that my friends is real estate wait who's this u.s steel hold on usw president says arclement's bid for u.s steel is foolish <laughs> what the union does not like mt's bid they said it's foolish Interesting. Mm. Is it foolish? But yeah, like I'm saying, the, the best example is real estate. That's what I've been trying to communicate for a long time. That's why when I showed the Bitcoin stuff where I was like, look it, we turned 60 grand of Bitcoin in a half a mil, 400 grand. Awesome. Sh fucking excellent. God is good. Finger to the sky. But at that point, for us to like get to a million, we needed a lot more to happen, right? You needed a trillion, $2 trillion asset to double. So the leverage, you could lever up way more in Bitcoin than real estate in a weird way. But then what do we do? The idea was take that money out. And why did I put it into real estate? Because they gave me five to one leverage on the money, on the Bitcoin money. But now, and so now I turned to, again, multiply 500 by five. But now think about it. There's something that just happened. I just maximized this leverage from this amount, turned even a smaller six figures into millions of dollars in the leverage. But I'm looking for quality in the fact that it was a house below market value. That's it.
that is where I'm that's why I say real estate because the quality of the asset you could go put a million dollars into it but you're not going to lose $500,000 overnight you see that's that's what you have to compare when it comes down to leverage that's why I am much more comfortable on way bigger plays like million dollar plays if you give me the right quality asset it's I I, I will stress less about it than a hundred thousand dollars on a future play why because quality of the asset and then leverage that it's, it's it, it changes everything so hopefully that answers your question but that's where your answer is going to be on whatever this cycle brings us especially if you're thinking leverage and trading now not talking to the long-term people you want to find the beautiful balance between a lot of leverage but then a quality asset again that is one reason why i like bonds but bonds are inferior to real estate so there you go now you get to listen to the president he's much more articulate than i am in our grid facilities and in Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin, in Pennsylvania, to in Wisconsin, to drive the, the resilience. When I look at the work that we're doing at our, with our researchers for tomorrow's technology in partnership with the DOE, with hydrogen, in carbon capture, the best is yet to come. When America innovates, the world wins. So on behalf of our GE Vernova employees, on behalf of my nine-year-old daughter, my 11-year-old son, I'm, I'm thankful to have here today and their generation, because that's why we're doing this work. I want to thank the president, thank the leadership team. It's an honor to welcome you. Thank you, Mr. President. So fucking loud. Thank you, Scott. If all these people are here, who's working? Don't tell me that's all White House people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! Woo! Please, Woo! thank you. Woo! I can't! Woo! I think your patience today exceeds your good judgment. But thank you. <laughs> and I want to say one thing. More self-deprecating. He got me, bro. I, I fucking love this guy. That's it. He just roasted himself all day. There you go, Daddy Biden. Owes you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I stole 20 oh, million. Man. Huh, just kidding. I'm just, oh, wait. Folks, no, I can't say I'll fuck. Out, I'm out, guys. Thank you very much. You know, uh... Uh, I want to thank Vice President Harris, uh, members of the cabinet, Secretary Vilsack, Administrator Reagan, you know, members of Congress, uh, particularly Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, who played such a pivotal role in getting this bill done. Everyone was telling us yeah, there's no possibility with the divided Congress the way it was we could get it done. Oh, yeah. And you got it Bro, done without that's a it. Parachute level team. from the ropes. <laughs> Bro, yeah. from the ropes. The last and low. Just pair. That's it. This. Let's see. Four, State four, one, three. Leaders, uh, Business leaders, Good luck, boys advocates. and ladies. You know, uh, that's it for that's it. Forty four hundred. And then, dude, forty four hundred won't even get real respect. So that's that's my theory. Let's the see. We'll find out here. But that's it. You're breaking the level now. Taking on the special interest and winning. It's like three, three, nine, seven is the next level. Or four, excuse me. Four, three, nine, seven. Delivering. Delivering on promises that have long been made to the American people to lower costs for families, especially health care costs, increase America's energy security, restore fairness to a tax code, create good paying jobs here in America, and to address the existential threat of climate crisis. You know, it's part of a much broader vision for our country, growing mm -hmm. the economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top. All right, right. I think it needs to bounce before 4409, bro. That's almost 10 points right there. Bro, you just did 10 points in like two minutes. That's Raul, he's back. does well, all kidding aside, everybody does well. Everybody. All right, 4409. have a good shot, and, and, and the wealthy do very well. The Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal initially called my plan Bidenomics. I'm not sure they meant it in a totally complimentary way at the time. <laughs> but guess what? It's yeah. working. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck. It was so quiet, then they started clapping. Our economic plan, made possible by all of you in this room, and that's not hyperbole, created more than 13,400,000 jobs, new jobs. Since I took off. Bro, low taker again, about to hit another new low. 
Four four zero nine seventy nine. 85, 82, 83. Oh. Vibrant and innovative economy. We'll see again. 4,400, though. I, don't, I, I think 4,400 is going to be soft. I didn't see that anywhere. We created more jobs in two years than any administration has in a single four year term. And I'm very proud. <laughs> I'm very proud that unemployment has been below 4% for the longest stretch in over 50 years. Below 4% and going down. We now have more jobs than we did before the pandemic. And workers aren't just finding more jobs, they're finding better jobs, higher pay, higher job satisfaction. And unemployment is down, and so is inflation. Remember what the experts told us, okay? And th their traditional economy That it was transitory. Oh. Men. They told us but Getting wait. inflation under control. But what? In order to, we had to lower wages and increase unemployment. Not a joke. Had to lower wages and increase unemployment. But we never, never, never thought the problem was too many people. At least I didn't. Too many people that were working, or the working people were making too much. Microsoft money. way right again. Low ticker is still just getting answer, clapped right now. You're fighting here at 4409. Joe Biden is literally giving the same speech, jobs. and the market's kind of trading the same way every day. So I don't know who you could be more mad at, but it's either way. Very big that we broke that. You've broken below the parachute level, like I said. A lot of downside from here if it doesn't immediately eat it up. So you're still trading right now at the low candle. As it pointed out by Chuck or Nancy, I can't remember which one. 8.3 percent. It's now down to 3.2 percent. The lowest among. And it's going to go lower. But here's the point: it's lowest among the world's leading economies. Take every major economy in the world. We have the lowest on inflation rate. At the same time, wages are growing faster than inflation. This matters. The way I think about inflation is the way my dad used to talk about it around the kitchen table. Not a joke. I'm, I'm being deadly earnest about this. He'd ask, how much is left after all the monthly bills are paid? Okay, new how low. How much do you have left over after you pay Four, four, oh, eight, sixty-three. And is there eight a, points away from the, the solid level? Just have a little the bit next level I have on here is like 39 something. That's one of the reasons why we've worked so hard. I have 4,387. So if we don't hold 4,000, 4,400, I think we go another like 10, 11 points. In addition to place, the inflation reduction. But then again, we're down 0.9 on the, the NASDAQ, 0. 0.6 on SPY, 0. 0.47 on Dow. We're charging the economic transition in key ways. First, it's taking the most aggressive action ever on climate energy, ever. I've long said, and I've, that's why I think all the unions have come along. I've long said. Well, we're a little bit lower from when the minutes joke, started. It's not I like too jobs. crazy. I think jobs. He thinks jobs. For real. For real. By the way, USO on the low. Low ticker is still very active. A lot of uh, inverses, bond inverses on the high end oil. Why wouldn't it? Would not have happened. This law is one of the biggest drivers of jobs and economic growth this country has ever seen. Since I took office, the private sector has announced nearly 400, two, excuse me, $240 billion in new clean energy manufacturing investments. That private sector, $240 billion invested. <laughs> and the law has already created an estimated 170,000 clean energy jobs. In one year, it's estimated that it will... City on the low. Go to Watch out the bangs. What's Omega? OMGA, Omega Therapeutics, up 8%. We're talking about the decade. Again, just a random no, small popper as we're going into the lows. CEO, Again, City CEO, Banks. Called the Inflation Reduction Act. Ah, banks are like low key dying the most. Bro, XLF drilling into the lows. Back to but it's America, also with the market. Here in America. Made in America. According to leading Wall Street <sighs> firms Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs, my broader investment, our broader investment in investing in America agenda is unleashing a boom, a boom of manufacturing investments. And we're leaving nobody behind. We're investing in all of America, in the heartland and coast to coast. You know, I saw some of our, a few of my Democratic friends, not in Congress, but friends said, look, you're, you're investing more in red states than in blue states. Well, I made a commitment. This is about all of America. I was no, I really 4406.
going lower. It's about all of America. And we're seeing progress across the country from Maine to South That's Carolina. That's it, man. Low ticker again. Mexico. Financials are kind of worrisome, but Kevin, it's all across, across the, the board country. post minutes. Just yesterday, I was in They're all dying now. At a, at a company that makes clean energy equipment, including wind turbines. Because mm. of the Inflation Reduction Act, they expect their market and American made wind turbine generators to double next year. And by the way, the guy who was the most ardent mm. opponent of all this was talking about what great Four, benefits are coming to Wisconsin. <laughs> Bless me, Father. I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be a good boy. I'm going to keep the Irish in me down a little bit. Here. <laughs> At the same time, we're also boosting our nation's energy security. For years, China dominated the clean oh, energy. He said, Lord, you better, I'm going to pray for a we second became, so I don't just roast we, this we month. That's it. He said, boy, I'm about to. He How said, Rod Johnson, mother. You think I forgot about Rod Johnson? I didn't. Some Democratic Nothing but Ron. Everybody together been, except Ron. Find the cheapest labor in the world. Go close the factory Sorry. here. Build it over yep, there. Yeah, he's talking about Ron. Is. That's and Ron. We import the product from abroad. That's Ron. Not anymore. Not anymore. We are building it here and sending the product over there. <laughs> what I mean? We're bringing, we're bringing critical supply chains and technologies home for electric vehicle batteries, solar panels, wind turbines, critical minerals. And because the Chips and Science Act We've generated $231 billion in private investment in making semiconductors. $231 billion. A small, small computer chip the size of the end of your, your fingertip that affects nearly everything in our lives, from cell phones to automobiles to the most sophisticated weapon systems. You know, we invented these chips. We used to produce these chips. We stopped. And we, we saw stopped. during the pandemic we paid a high price for things that when overseas factories shut down, we paid a big price. But now we're bringing semiconductors home. In 2030, the Inflation Reduction Act is projected to help triple wind power and increase solar power by eightfold. By 2030, elect electrically deployed, excuse me, electricity. No deployed exaggeration. He said the exact the same thing grid. yesterday. Is expected to <laughs> by 81. I don't know. It's again, I, it's fine background noise for me. I'm just, I'm still looking, but. That's why some of you are like, I'm mad. This is a victory speech. Imagine the impact on climate <laughs> and the air we breathe. I'm like, this ain't a victory speech if it's the same exact thing. Cutting carbon pollution you know what I'm saying? By 2030. It's crazy. Like, you know, like, I wouldn't even get offended. Like, if somebody beat me and said the same thing <laughs> the Inflation Reduction Act <laughs> that they the said the year before, I'd be like, this is more than $50 like, billion. I'm, dollars like I'm going against to Woody. Resilience and impacts on climate change. Oh, you got your little These pop here. Five points, but you're already getting red candles. Historic Bro, bonds are dying. Colorado River Basin. Remember when I said I think everybody just realized the, the hawkish. Going dry. I don't think everybody no, realized the hawkishness from the minutes was the hawkish pause that we had last time. Because again, bonds are actually dropping decent amount rate, after this we're responding to coastal erosion sea level rise in the gulf of mexico and helping reduce the effects of extreme heat by investing nearly 1.5 billion dollars to plant trees and expand community parks and all right i'm done biden thank you sir i appreciate it so i don't know you guys realize you have less than 30 minutes left or you have a little bit more than 30 minutes left bonds are absolutely dying market here just hit a low and is like what 10 points away, 10 points away from the uh, 4,400. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Again, bonds are making all these moves. Like, again, TBT, TMV, if you see all those, those are going crazy. It was, haw it was hawkish, but I just, I don't think... Everybody was prepared for it in the same way they were on the Fed meeting. Remember, when the Fed meeting came out, everybody knew it was going to be a hawkish pause. That's what we were talking about. But so again, I don't the, none of this today. Like there was one surprising comment. However, it's like if you understand the last meeting, this was supposed to sound hawkish. 
So I just think it kind of hit a little harder today on top of everything else. So I think, or maybe people were caught off guard and they're like, wow, this is hawkish. But if you are forgetting the context of uh, the last meeting, it was supposed to be like that. So we'll see. But you're about to hit another low here. Again, the real question, uh, about 30 minutes left here. Do you test 4,400 or not? And then is 4,400 paper? Or is this going to actually act as a real level of support? We will see. Bay deal for ball unit can be announced as soon as this week. Mm, that's it. They don't. No reaction. Dude, I can't even believe that thing. I don't even think it's sold off 2.7 on a normal day. Like, this is a fat day for ball. That's why I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I did not. I'm glad I only did 100 shares, but usually it shouldn't even move like that. All right, about to hit another low. The future gap is still far below. Well, even then, even last time we were at this, just things got crazy at 4,100 or 4,400. That's why 4,400 is interesting because remember, right when we went above it, you were instantly like right below 4,500, came down, and then before you knew it, it took another week, and then you just smashed through everything. Hmm. ball moving now there it is i was saying that's weird as hell that's it i would double dip on it with the news but they fucking they scared me out of it after the first move today so it's coming back up i'm still down on it, it has a lot to move but that's bigger volume than before so good call on that it is moving now they waited till last 30 bargain there's a lot in the bargain bin or i think i think paypal is the easy one mm. 10 year settles at 4258 highest close since june 2000 again next stop 45 I don't think it's going to chill, but we'll find out. Mm. That is crazy. It's, too, it's still like it's still low, though. That's the wild part. So that's probably like the lower end of 2008 on the 10 year. It'll probably get nuttier, but is it almost 1230 yet? We didn't die. Mm. The gap from the futures contract switch. When does it? Oh, yeah. Wait, when do the futures even switch? 30 days. The bonds expire sooner, but even then, you still got a month left. The yen is disgusting. Dude, it's everything. That's the weird part. Again, everything is dying. Uh, if you haven't, like, if it's not going up right now and holding, uh, it's like, if you haven't looked at some of these daily trends, that's why this whole, like, 2008, uh, the bonds, again, the yen, even some of the other currencies, the emerging market ones for sure. But then go look at the 10-year. Go look at the two-year. Yeah, like, the entire world is, like, low-key getting drained right now. It's, I don't know. It's like very subtle. This, the month of August is like slowly draining the world. Everybody kind of like, I wouldn't want to say equally, but you're watching, uh, again, all these rates and just all these pressures kind of come up. Mm. Redfin dying. I haven't seen Redfin. In a while. Oh, this shit's still at nine bucks. It's a little lower, though. That's when we sold our covered calls, I think. It's crazy that that's like, what? Is that almost 100%? Fucking. <laughs> that's crazy, man. 
called Real Estate, baby, 2 p.m. So they don't do it at 6 p.m. now. It's like right after the bell. So if you got the time, you're already on the computer. You might as well. Amen. Bloated market AI. Nah, I mean, AI, you still, you got next week. That's it. DFS, maybe next SIVB. Uh, I don't know. I have to, we need something big. They got the name behind them. So, but I don't know, maybe. There's banks, people are getting worried about banks and financing stuff. Again, all of the, uh, all of the REITs are even getting murdered here too. So, a lot going on. This weekend's red. It'll be three weeks. We're far from where we started, I think, but yeah, you could get back there. 44, you're 60 points down. I guess not too bad. Take like 1%, one and a half up. Pump it up at 4,400. I got you, bro. I got you. Mm. Pump it up the reason we dropped. And I mean, I don't know though. It was it was a lot faster on the way up, but also it's been very slow on the way down. They usually say you take the elevator down, but like you didn't. <laughs> like low key, like I like it's, it's like we've been taking the steps up and down, or it's like a, it's like one of those weird like fast steps like at the airport. But it's wild. XLF only down. I think it started off low. But it's still, XLF is still what? It's only a quarter? Oh, wow, it looked uglier. Interesting. Where are regionals? Regionals down another 1%. And then did we just hit 4,400? No, you still got eight more points. That's crazy, actually. So 4,406.15 is still the low. We haven't hit the mark yet. The elevator is waiting. I think you. I think Nvidia earnings, but then that's it. If Nvidia earnings is good, it's gonna. At le that'll at least be your first rebound or your first like rally. Am I more worried about inflation or deflation? I think deflation is scarier. Real deflation, not disinflation. Uh, and then inflation, I just, I don't know. At this pace. You know, and there's everybody, nobody in government will say 1970 or Richard Nixon. Nobody will. It's like it's the boogeyman. Uh, and then looking at real estate, a lot of it looks like the 70s. So, I mean, it's just quite simple. If the if the economy does not end up getting clapped here because of all the other stuff, it, we're probably going to run into f massive inflation. Uh, if not, I think we might start entering deflation. So that's it. That's uh, it's. I think it's one or the other. If your economy doesn't crash, you get hyper not hyperinflation, but you get inflation again. If your economy gets clapped, you get deflation, and then whatever the result of that happening would be. I think and that could happen in tomorrow or in a couple of years. That's the problem. We don't know when. But that is seemingly, if I was going to board, put borderline around it, that's that's what it would be. If NVIDIA has bad guidance, bad earnings, then yeah, I think, I mean, it's easier to sell off this market. And again, like if you look at NVIDIA and if you, like I've been saying on the watch list, dude, none of these stocks have really moved. So like Netflix still isn't like, this doesn't count. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, look at Google. Like this doesn't count. I know the S&P has dropped two weeks in a row. Maybe it's three weeks in a row. But it's like, dude. These names haven't dropped. If you draw a straight line, this is very stable on a lot of names, which is wicked. That's that's where it's like 
we've seen a big drop with like PayPal and so many names going from li they've literally lost 50% of their value in just not too many, not too, not too long of time. It's like those names got clapped, a couple of commodities. That's it. Tesla did come down, I think. But even then, I, I I would argue Tesla is still very, very elevated. But yeah, they, they're definitely not as stable. But just don't forget, they were at $100 this year. Are we waiting on MPW Divi announcement? Uh, out of an abundance of caution, yes. Or I'm just kind of waiting for the carnage to stop. Like that's like usually like there'll be a day where it just doesn't go down. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get in on the days where it's like you need it to kind of chill or we have more confirmation. But uh, either way, I'm ready though. Uh, just everything keeps coming down. Like I don't like that. Uh, what's it called? I don't like that look when it's just like everything i would want to buy i have like four or five names i could get but it's like they're all going lower and lower every day so just making sure the dust is settling a little bit more Yeah, ball. It's a bit. They're on. They're not selling their company. They're only selling their aerospace unit. Mm. Mm. Teladoc at seventeen. The high low ticker, unfortunately, is only on E-Trade. You can make like a ghetto one on TD Ameritrade, but it don't hit the same. But interesting, Chad. So you got 24 minutes left. This is where we opened. This is where the minutes were at. Where was it? Like 11 right around here? Or one of these? Oh, my goodness. It's one or the other. The clock is messing me up. But I think either VWAP or death. We haven't hit 4,400 yet. The pound gained heavy. Yes, they died. So it's like I'm saying, if I looked, if I was look, I have been looking at all of these, but like every average down point I would have wanted to take, it has blown through it on a lot of names. That's why I'm like, chill. <laughs> because so in a weird way, I'm ready to buy more of the yen, but. Uh, I would have bought it earlier, and then it just kept plummeting. So, again, you even had good data out of Japan yesterday, which is wicked. But there's it's just something in the world. There is a very big invisible force if you don't see it, and it's going, whoosh, and it's making all of the rates and currencies. There's It's a very, very strong wind that's hard to ignore right now. So it's like just be prepared for it, but... Whenever that wind stops, we're going to get a rally, but I'd say it's not even intervention territory. I don't even think the Japanese would intervene right now. It makes sense why they wouldn't. If that make like what I'm like why would you? If you feel the same, if there's something bigger happening globally, the central bank would not intervene. Argentina only intervened because of the politician thing and then they just they got ahead of it. They tried to, but it's still kind of like there, this is big now. It's just, it's again, your tenure is is blowing out. All of your bonds are coming up now. We're now hitting two thousand and eight levels. So it's just this. This is the regime. Because once two thousand and eight started going up, if two thousand and eight broke, then you enter the other regime from the the early two thousands and then the eighties and nineties.
Mm. Where is it? I even shy came down today. TLT. Remember TLT was a uh, he was fighting earlier. Yeah, TLT hasn't even broke yet. And then they're coming back down here again, 20 minutes. Am I buying anything? Not yet, but like I think if you have more cash than I do, I wouldn't be afraid to nibble a little bit. Uh, but that's it. It's just like there's 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 some good names there. I uh, I mean if if it's not obvious what you should be buying right now, I I hope your portfolio could speak to you, uh, in the sense that like go look around, look at some of the value names, the growth names, and then look at your cash, look at your growth and dividends, and ask yourself if it makes sense to to really nibble or not. Uh, but that's like I could get behind nibbling, uh, but other than that, I'm not really. Uh, I just think we need to make everything. Uh, like let it work itself out so just remember we just sat through we just sat through uh what like eight months of our long term just going straight fucking up <laughs> you know what i'm saying so maybe we got to sit through a couple weeks of down before it finds the price but you know it's funny because like, you guys remember that when we were like dude it never just goes like straight up like remember it was like every day in a row it was going up every single day it would just again like eight days nine days in a row your your long term would go green and that that was pretty surprising you don't really see that too often so that's why i'm saying just uh you know keep all of that in mind because we've gone through all of that but now it's like if we get that on the downside hopefully you're prepared in the same respect Not gonna lie, took it for granted. Well, yeah, no shit. There's been <laughs> this is our second week of going down, and everyone's like, what the f "Should I buy everything now?" I think now we buy it. What the fuck is happening? It's I thought the long time. It's okay. You've been through this, sir. Honestly, some we've been through it way, way more. But you're just getting a a little bit of reversion to the reversion to the mean, I guess. H e clap again or. Oh, it's at 14 bucks. You don't see it. It's not showing up on my chart even. Hawaiian Electric to explore options to address financial and legal challenges from Hawaii fires. So I wonder if they get bought up now. So again, I, I don't I, I don't know how bankruptcy buy plus like natural disaster work. I've only seen them mutually exclusive. Does that make sense? I have not seen the two combined now. I've never seen bankruptcy and disaster in the modern era. I've only watched just bankruptcies get bought up and then the disasters of fires get clapped. And then VIX, dude, VIX is still running. Low ticker is picking up once again. Tesla into the low. Again, it's not showing up. Uh, Hawaii Electric is down, uh, what, two bucks right now? All right, 440. 440 on the SPY, but we still have not yet to set another low yet. Mm -mm. Key shares paused. I see a price of 14. Why we last year Jackson holds because Powell, he just he changed his tone. Honestly, he might. After today, that was my first reaction to the minutes. After today, maybe Powell does change his tone i would put maybe uh i would put a 30 percent chance on it if i was going to chance it out i'd say 30 percent shot that powell fucks everything up like last year just just after reading the minutes and them talking about real estate prices and related to the peak and all of that good stuff but i would say 30 percent chance he comes out and says yeah no, you guys are dumb. We're going to keep rate. Like he he has to communicate that or the rates aren't done going up because everything will just bounce. 
That's kind of what they said in the minutes. He's not going to be data dependent. This is his opportunity to do anything. Remember, this isn't a FOMC. This is just Jackson Hole. They're just, it's a meeting. It's a glorified meeting where just throughout the history, they've used the opportunity to make announcements and do stuff. But it just, it has a lot of history behind it. But realistically, it's just like your, it's like the most basic meeting you've ever, you've ever heard of. It's just like any of the normal ones we, we turn on. Yeah, HE halted. They're in talks for restructuring. Again, you had it here. That came out four minutes ago. So you had the wire, right? I didn't even see it on the wire. I wasn't looking at this one. Dude, this wire hits. I don't look at it all the time. So if you guys get it, Chad, this wire, like it catches some of the good ones. It's more opinionated. Well, yeah, but it's just, it just, uh, it has a lot of history. That's all you gotta, that's the thing about it. It's just, it's a normal, uh, it's a normal talk. It's just that, uh, it just, there are people, exp there's been a lot over history of what's happened at Jackson Hole. Again, even the formation of it and why people have gone there and other things. It does connect to Volker. I just learned the fly fishing stuff, but even back then we had some other stuff. So it's like, it's just a glorified meeting. But last year, Powell did, he did fucking live up to it. <laughs> you know, last year, Powell lived up to the, to the reputation and he just came out and smashed the whole entire market. He changed up his tone. He made things clear. And that's it. So he might do it again. Again, after the minutes today, I think it's a possibility, but I don't think it's a probability. So we'll see. But where is it? Where's the damn long term? But I hope that's why, too, with everything, though, just in a weird way, I hope you guys are okay with the downside of your blessing. So it was a blessing to have your long term and work. Again, I even looked, the small account is still up like 10%. It's fucked. So the small account long term is killing it. This one just went break even and now negative again, not including the dividends. But like, you see it. Like, bro, you went straight up. <laughs> and now it came down. So that's all it is. It's just like, you're going to have to, if we had to get this, you know, what was that? That was like May. Bro, look at this from May. Till the end of July? Are you kidding me? You got 20 grand on a long term. So it's just like the whole idea here now is, you know, we go up. We got to give some back a little bit, but you've got to deal with it. But I hope that's why it's like just kind of apply the timing on the way down just as you did on the way up. Yeah, HE unhalted, 52-week low, 1440. Well, let's see if it gets bought up. I don't know if it's low enough. They're talking strategic options when the company is still trading at a higher price. So usually when all of the the bankrupt buyers come in, you know, the price is a lot lower. And like I said, I've never seen a like a bankruptcy like, you know, FOMO play, you know, with related to a natural disaster liability. So interesting. Where is the Twitch long term? Psh, hey, man, anybody could have that. Like, that's it. You know, a couple years from now, if the YouTube can't hang, bro, I don't know. What if they get, like, addicted to shrooms or something and, like, they just fall off? I'll be like, damn, that's crazy. So it's yours. That's all. I mean, whoever's here at the end will get to inherit it. I mean, that's kind of the my, my plan with the, with the YouTube accounts. You know, we either donate it to charity or we just we do something with it by the end of it. No, I sold out of the Target shares today. We got a we got a nice bag on it. The meek shall inherit the LT. <laughs> you think Twitch chat is more chat, more convos? I don't think conversations make you a chat. You could say two words and be more of a Chad than somebody who sends a thousand messages a day. <laughs> it's a principle. It's principles of the kingdom, baby. 
you know, it's like you either vibe with it or not. You either got the vibe or not. And that's why I'm like, you know, it's, 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 it's just chosen. It's just chosen. It's amen. See, see more downside? Maybe. I do, but like, like I've been telling, how long have I been telling you? Don't panic just yet. This week, I still wasn't expecting too much. Just watch the schedule. It's no coincidence this is all lining up now. It's already Wednesday, and this is all lining up coming into Jerome Powell in, what, four or five days now? So it's like, dude, we're almost halfway done with the week. We're 50 points away from breaking even on the week and doing nothing. So then, it, And then now you're more closer to Powell than you were at the beginning of the week. So it's like it's all kind of working out, but I do think we can make big moves, especially as we enter into September. However... I think we need that shift. And like I'm saying, if Powell changes the language, we on, baby. We on. That's it. 10 minute rig, man. Tesla on the low. HE still getting clapped. Spy down 0.63. Dow down 0.4. And then the NASDAQ down one with the Russell down one. And here it is, man. Here it is. Zero day. Everyone stop blaming zero days. You ain't heard about. I feel like I haven't heard about zero days in a while. We got used to it now. Mm. $2.5 billion to the sell side. That's bullish. Selling now, but I guess we'll take it. We'll see again. Another overnight session with bad China won't be good. Uh, what do we have coming into tomorrow? Oh, shit. We have Conference Board of Consumer Confidence. That could help us out. I don't know if we have any more Asian data. You have Japan CPI, I think. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. But that's no... That's tomorrow. So we're lucky. No, nothing overnight tonight here. You'll get Japanese exports. And then foreign bond. That could be good. Imports, exports for Japan could be big. You don't have anything out of China, I don't think. And then Thursday, Japanese CPI. And then tomorrow for America, Philly Fed, initial jobless claims. And then conference board. Why don't I see it? I only see Philly Fed. Again, that's 10-minute rig. A lot. Dude, you're not hitting the 44, bro. I don't know. Unless he wants to do it in eight minutes, man. I don't know. You think he's going to pop or is it going to hit 44, bro? Nine points up, nine points down. What you going to do? Oh, my goodness. They're going to make us wait one more day. It's going to do nothing. If it chills, that would be enough. Again, Meta's dumping now. HE is getting its first little bounce. Tesla was already into the low. There's Meta down 2.3. Apple now. Apple's barely down, but they're going into the lows now. 15.52. Everyone started getting clapped on zero days Why it went away. No, but, like, dude, it was like everybody was blaming zero days every day for every problem. And then right when the market stopped getting volatile, nobody blamed a zero day. Overnight gap down. If we get a bad close, it won't be good, but 
I don't think we have enough. I don't think we have enough news. So right now, in a weird way, you'll have enough to carry you overnight. As long as there's nothing bad. I think tomorrow might be the calmer day. But then again, uh, we haven't really had a calm day. I think Tuesday was kind of calm. Or was it Monday we did nothing? But there was still a lot of news. Every day was some sort of China news. I don't know about a bounce day, but just in terms of like way less of a arsenal to wake up to in terms of like target earnings. This Oh, Walmart. Fuck. No, never mind. That's what I'm missing. Earnings. The only thing I didn't look at there. Yeah. Yeah, we have Walmart. No. Yeah, Walmart's going to... That's going to be your decider in the morning. So that will give you a good direction on where we're going to go. Or if we are going to gap down and Walmart does good and, like, Walmart holds up, that'll, like, cushion the drop, essentially. Uh... They lost their money because the volatility went away. But if you just bought like zero day calls, you killed it. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like negative volatility, but it was just like the market went straight up. So I just think there was nothing to blame, if that makes sense. When the market goes down, people wanted to blame something. They blame the long or they blame the, uh, the zero days. But when it goes up, you don't get mad when the market goes up. Prepare landing. Wow. No way. Bro. That's crazy, dude. Sorry, the day's already over. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Four, four, two, five. That thing's holding on the futures very well. But yeah, listen. The new guy's gonna come on. He's gonna he's gonna bring you guys out. So when you hear uh, when you hear the words uh, earmuffs, uh, please mute your speakers if you're sensitive uh, to any sort of like loud noises. Uh, again, some people are susceptible to having their eardrums bleed. So we get we get very loud in here. Uh, again, the new guy he just he, he just he screams a lot. Uh, so just be careful. Uh, we love you all. We want to make sure you're safe. So if you hear earmuffs, uh, prepare to tune out for the end of the day as we want to make sure. Uh, you are good. You are good. Mm -hmm. We need to name him. I don't even know his name. I don't really care. I just call him new guy. That's it. I don't I don't think uh, he's been working here for a while, but uh, I, I just call him new guy. Mm -hmm. I'm eating an apple again. I like an apple snack now. It's very good. I say don't hold options overnight. Bro, what, what fake Josh were you conversating with on WhatsApp? I've never said that. <laughs> I don't, not my job, but nah. Earmuffs! Earmuffs! All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're making our final approach as we make our final approach. You guys are holding on to any bags. Uh, please stow them in the overhead bins above or firmly beneath your seats. We'll be coming through the aisles with the trash bag if you like to dispose of those bags. But as we make this final approach, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal description. That's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Then we're going to be taking off promptly around 6 a.m. out of sunny San Diego, California. As we make this final approach into San Diego International Airport, it's about 74 degrees and sunny, looking like a good day unless you bought a zero-day call option and zero days are to blame for the market. You remember that? No? Nobody does. But either way, we're no longer under COVID guidelines, so no masks are required. But we do ask that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way out. As always, we appreciate you guys' business. If you're interested in your Call Rapid Awards program card, Please fly down your flight attendant, and we'll get you that as soon as possible. As always, thank you for flying with the coat, and hopefully have a wonderful evening. Let's go, baby. 
Bring it home into the lows, bro. You haven't you haven't had a day like this in a while. Even yesterday, the little sell off, you get a little bit of a bounce, but forty four oh five, you're selling off into the lows, Chad. It's only one percent. Believe it or not, one percent is not even there on the S P or on the Dow. So keep that in mind there, but kind of calm. NASDAQ 1% once again. We're wrapping it up. Not much time. You only have one minute. Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to wrap it up. Bring it home. Finalize your plays, shares, options, futures. Are you going after Walmart in the morning tomorrow? Are you going for the bonds? What about the yen? What about anything else in between? It's only Wednesday leading into Thursday, but Chad, you got to wrap it up. You're hitting a new low. New low in the final 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. So Chad, bring it home. Wrap it up. Seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Ding 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 we did it, we made it, we did it, we made it. The market got clapped, but you're still in the game. I need my GG, let's go. Where you at? I'm already early on it. It don't matter if you made money or lost money. I know you learned something. Everybody that contributed held it down in the game, making it to the bell. Good sportsmanship, baby. Good game. That's what the GG is. It'll cleanse you of all your sins. All the lovers, laggers, lurkers. It don't matter who you are. Baby back bitches, haters. You made it to the bell. Even if you got banned, you can get reborn. Just GG, baby. You made it. Seven hours in the box. The game. Let's go. I'm talking about all the members, not members. Stream alerts. The Twitch. So baby, so I see you too, baby. Money, Let's go. So fun, bitch, Good game. Really GG, where are you at? Everybody holding it down, posting the nose, bringing the vibe. Oh, even bringing the play. Let's go. I got some good long term call out. Where you at? 10%. Good game. 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 Good Good game. Hey, you mean a rock. You want to see me a lot. Maybe for Friday, you need me less talk, huh? Yeah, it's a good one. <clears throat> hey, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a cop, baby. <clears throat> uh, I'm giving you this. The market going down. Tesla's going down. I, see, I love you, Chad. Thank you for being here. I love you, man. Even if you got banned, I love you. Here's my invitation to unban you by making a new account. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. I don't want to God bless you. Let's yeah. vibe with me, baby. Vibe yeah. with me. That's an out, Pluto. Broly on my wrist. <laughs> nah. I don't want to rap that. Pull up in a bit, buddy. I don't put a tap back. Hit me with the divvy. I don't even need the Nasdaq. Skinny and she pretty. I don't even need the ass fat. Skinny was a freebie. I don't even need a fast one. I was never greedy. I just never fucking had shit. Now nah, I bet that I ain't never fucking going bad shit. Please stop back. Yeah, I need man skin. Little more balance and a lot of bit of candy. Pull up to the villa. Got these motherfuckers counting. Pulling up the lunch. I got it looking like a man. When I put him on the motherfuckers daddy Put us on my father, y'all don't give a fuck about it I'm still in the game like a screaming out alley Got a little fame, but it ain't changed nothing about me, nah Same OJ, you smoke OJ Still make dumb plays, but I play less games Always ready for the war, I ain't playing campaign But I really need a reason for I pop champagne Pop for the fall, so I gotta stay safe Lot of money on the table, boy, that look like paid I'ma think it before I get it, boy, that look like fate Either way the story goes, no, I love that fate Had these motherfuckers hated me before they love me Now they sitting in half and they ain't playing with their money I told them take a tent and pay yourself, cause that's your money Put me on the best, cause I ain't playing with you dummies I ain't gave us nothing, even if they did No, I wouldn't take it from them They was sick of shit, but we still try to love them Got so many wins that I can't trip about a folly I'm on my wrist Better get a B&B and rent it for the scenery And maybe live the season and keep on buying stats every month Spread it evenly and shout it out to people that believe in me I hope you live in peacefully and sent it for the people that don't speak to me I do this shit for everybody equally, I guess it's just G and me And when That's we done with that, we going back That's to enough. the reality, yeah mm, Vibe with me, bro
vibe with me, bro. Vibe with me, man. I'm just eating my apple. That's it, bro. My caffeine apple is what I call it. That's it, Chad. I love you. So God bless you all. Thank you once again, man. That's the day. I was about to start ranting, honestly, and just start talking to the Chaz, bro. You know, because I, I show up here every day, bro, and it's a lot of fun, and it would not be this much fun if we didn't have such an amazing community. So I have a blast every single day. So thank you for being here, man, especially if you were here and you were, like, here. You know, being you here, like, you know, you had a presence is what I'm trying to say. Thank you for your presence if you made it there and you made it gracious, you made it joyful, you gave me an opportunity as well. That's what I'd usually tell you, but for real, man. Just thank you for the presence that some of you have all provided. Most of you. All of it. Otherwise, you know how I know it's all of you? Because I banned you if it was. Oh! Yeah, I'm talking to all of you. I love you. You know why? Because if it got in my way, I banned it. So that means you didn't get banned. So like I'm saying, thank you for the vibes. You saw, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, son. What's up? you like, is he talking about me? I don't know. Are you banned? Well, there you go. If you got banned, you try again tomorrow. That's all love. And then there you go. Oh, hey, man. Hey, man. But, Chad, for real, though, thank you guys again. I hope you enjoyed it, bro. And, like, but as I said, before I start ranting on anything, uh, I hope you have a good day. I hope you know you're blessed. Uh, and I, I hope you're excited about the future, uh, not because of what your current situation presents, but what you could create and the opportunity that you have and what we're leading into, bro. And, honestly, you got so much time, and I hope you buy something good with your time. And I hope that this stream was a good purchase, and I hope you are able to get dividends and value in return from it. And if you gave me that shot, baby, God bless you and thank you. And I love you, man. God bless. Amen. I said, that's the day. So go read the books. Richest Man of Babylon, Proverbs, New Living Translation, Strangest Secret in the World. You got Cole Real Estate After the Bell. You got all the descriptions there. It sucks, though, Chad. Cause like I'm just tell I'm dead by the end of the day now. I need to go get food. Cisco, we just saw the Cisco earnings, but they're popping and locking, pop locking, drop it. Um, uh, oh, oh, mm, mm. I have a pop lock. I have a pop. You see, pop, pop lock and drop it. That's where they got the inspiration from. Uh huh. Believe it or not, pop lock and drop it is a stock market term. You thought it was pop lock and drop it? No, they were talking about stocks. Uh huh. But anyways, Chad Bro, no caffeine I've only been drinking water Or uh, what's it called? The body armor Or I've been eating an apple So we're in the game, baby But unfortunately I think it, I think it shaves off the final 30 minutes I usually have at the end of the day That's it Now I'm just like, oh, I need to go eat and poop I've been more hype without it. Yeah, I am. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I think like caffeine is like Adderall to me or something because I have such ADD. It just like it gets in my way. It makes me act all calm, you know, because like if I don't have caffeine, bro, like, oh, my God, even my filter is like low key. Like I have a good filter. But then again, like I, I'm much more, I guess, uh, straightforward with the bullshit. I guess I get too hyper. But then again, I'm hungry, dude. Like, I'm hungry. You guys, usually, you're not used to the AI saying that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how you know. I'm I'm hungry, bro. I've, I've said that to you two days in a row that I've been hungry by the end of the day. I don't think I... Yeah, man, that don't happen. That don't happen a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm eating an apple. You're hearing I'm eating an apple right now. Isn't that crazy? But, Chad, I yeah, Cisco reported. I just have the numbers there. Uh, fourth quarter year... 3.5. I don't know their numbers, but uh, what the expectations were, but I'm not going to play it. Punt. I should have punted today, bro. I got washed on everything. Even the one play I hit turned into a loser. But punt. Punt. I have CMOS, bro. You don't think I've ever been to Air One? Bro, no lie. I got a fucking... I got an Air One CMOS in my fridge right now, but guess what? I've never ate it. I don't know what to do with it, bro. I don't know what to do with it. I saw it, I got it, I heard about it. I said, hell yeah, I'll be on that trendy hell shit. Fuck yeah, you said, how much? Damn, bro. Again, I got it from the, it's too bougie, bro. But then I did it, and now it just sits in my, and make tea with it? What do you mean, CMOS tea, bro? That sound like I'm a trip. 
I'm out, bro. I know what to do. You just soak and blend it with water. But what does it taste like? Y'all just are recommending hella things without any, like, y'all ain't telling me if it's good or not. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're like, just blend it with fucking diesel and then scrape off the top and then boil it and then just, like, fucking stick your face in it and let it absorb. Like, what? Is that safe? It tastes like nothing? Hit them before the gym. CMOS? You're lying. That's crazy. Wolf dying. That's an AI play. I think we just got uh, down 13. I guess these might be a little bigger. I swear I just saw Wolf too. You had two tablespoons of water. Um, we can look it up. A lot of bad earnings. Even, I think Apple's getting clapped off of Wolf, possibly. They're going down. Isn't Wolf a semi-company, right? Or am I tripping? Oh, shit. They had a loss of 42 cents versus a loss of 20 estimated. And then they guided down 60 to 70. Oh, they're awful. How? Fucking AI my ass. But again, they didn't really get in on the hype. Bro, they got, dude, they just guided revenue. Revenue, 10 million lower, 10 million higher. And then EPS, it's just profitability. So it's not like their revenue is getting too, like they beat on revenue, but they're spending. And then they said they expect, as part of expanding, they support expanded growth. We're incurring significant factory startup costs related to facilities that we're constructing that have not yet started revenue generating production. These startup costs have been and will be expensed as operating in our statement operations. New facility. Sounds like origin, bro. I think they're just, they have the facility and then they have to bill it as an operating cost because then pretty much they're burning millions of dollars on a facility that can't make any money yet. Mm -mm. Listen, and Twitch, don't be sharing weird shit in the chat, man. Y'all know how I am with all that. I know you want to share certain things, but uh, again, uh, I don't want to have to untrain bad shit. So please, it's not weird. I don't know what it is, but again, that's part of the rules. But you do it privately, but don't talk about it and make it seem like that's an open culture here. You guys do it private. You know what I'm saying? Don't send it to me. I don't want it. That's that's all I'm saying. Uh, just I'll end it now there so you understand, but. Uh, I'm not, that's why I say I don't want conversation. I don't want argument about it. I'm just saying there's a rule. I'm not trying to have discussion, but that being said, Wolf did awful. I don't know if you want to play it or not. I think I'm not going to play any of these. I'm punting on everything. Mm. Cisco, I don't want to touch them. Cisco barely moves. Cisco hasn't started moving till recently. Cisco cash equivalents. I'm getting the easy numbers. They beat on EPS 114 versus 106. Revenue was 15.2 versus 1505. EPS was 102 to 104. Uh, estimate was $1. Non-gap gross margin, they beat 65 to 66. Consensus 64 and a half. Non-gap operating margin, 34 to 35. Consensus, 33.4. Uh, revenue 14 and a half to 14 I already gave that's the guidance or no that's yeah that's q1 guidance 14 and a half to 14 seven estimate was 14.6 then chuck robinson we're seeing solid customer gains gaining market share innovating in key areas like ai security and cloud momentous gives us confidence in our ability to capture the many opportunities ahead mm -mm. Play the call. I think that's it, mom. I think that's it. You shouldn't have got me into earnings. My wolf was really bad. But again, revenue good. 
their just profitability is making them bad. And then Synopsis is coming out. They see full year adjusted EPS 1104 to 1109. Aren't they big? Oh, wow. Why is this so? This is cybersecurity, right? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Do you hear the apple? <laughs> Got him. They killed it. Revenue time based licenses nine twenty nine estimate was eight sixty seven. Uh, they missed on upfront revenue and then maintenance and service beat by ten million. Non-GAAP gross margin, 82.3. Estimate was 81.2. Non-GAAP operating margin, 35.3. Estimate was 34.1. Cash from operations, 560 versus 325. And then CapEx was 45 million versus 62. Honestly, they killed it. How is that only 1%? This makes no sense. What, what did they sell off today? They sold off 10 bucks. Yeah, but they did good. I think they guided up, too. I don't know uh, what their other guidance is. This uh, Wolf is coming out with guidance right now, too. That one's coming across the wire. Mm -hmm. Fubo, I don't know. God bless you, Blizzy. Blizzy bait. Gold bless, thank you. All right, I think that's it. I don't think I want to. I would play. I would play synopsis, but it's already moved ten bucks. I think we wait tomorrow. Walmart. I don't know. We didn't even make a play on Walmart today. I'm kind of glad we didn't. But remember, tomorrow morning. That is probably going to be your biggest driver. So, Chad, I think that's it, man. I think that's it. May I give you one more? We got one more? I don't know if we got one more, bro. We got one more. Oh, we already heard that one. I give did you get this? I don't even think you got this today. I'll give you cribs. Give you some cribs. We'll close it out. Call it a day. You get another one in a week or two. You'll be good. Amen. Yalla. Depo on the beat. It's a cup, baby. Yeah, boss of cribs. They said a crash. I kept the band so limber cash. I kept it cool. Was moving fast. I came with nothing left with the bag. You should do the math. I ain't pulling back. I'm pulling up. You pulling that. I double down, then double day. I changed the plan. I'm full with that. Nah. Growth in values, I ain't talking about it Stop rotation, price are going up But daddy go off, so got inflation Told you it was tough, but it's different when you finally face it Take it, for complacent, get your patience If it reset what you making, cause it hasn't taken place And when it does, you can't replay it So I hope them words you saying don't come back to harm you later This a vicious game we playing, but we in it though Put me in the dictionary and that's the fucking getting it, bro Please don't get it twisted, that's the man or leaving when we's broke I just kept it simple, nothing special, just the shit <laughs> so use it wisely, it's surprising how much time to waste despising That could really tilt the balance or could kill you at the margins Beg your pardon, I ain't never beg, I planned it and I got it Long time Luka Doncic with the options, I'm Giannis Feel like Jokic with the passes, I'm a holder, you a talker Getting older and I'm wiser, I can run it like Eliza You can't tell me that I eat it if you've never been through fire Whoa, I'm the favorite today, yes before a favorite You got motive, not no motivation, stop it thought of
my goodness. Chatadonia. Chatadonia. Man. Oh, I could I could just take a Red Bull and I'll just kick it here if y'all want. You know what I'm saying? Like, screw food. You know what I'm saying? That's it. I just go back. I'll hit up the fridge real quick, crack open the Red Bull. I'll shotgun it. And then we'll be back in the game, and then we can just kick it. I'll, I'll kick it till the Japanese export numbers or something. And then I'll be, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I think I'm about to have a Red Bull relapse, bro. <laughs> oh, man. So, Chad, God bless you. I hope you had a wonderful day. That's all. That's, that's where we're leaving it. You already know the books, Richest Man of Babylon, Proverbs, New Living Translation, The Strangest Secret in the World. I'm going to wait for you guys because I got another feeler, but you got to wait a little bit. But Chad, very, very simple, man. Don't ever forget why we here, why we keep going, why that faith, hope, love ain't never going out of style, and why there's a real destination. It's called a kingdom, baby. Why, baby? Why? Why? Uh, Finger to the sky, baby, to God be the glory, and through the grace of God alone. Amen. Amen. Uh. Chattadonia, God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. See you at Colt Real Estate. That's in what? 30 minutes? 40 minutes? No excuses. And then I will see you on the watch list. And then bright and early, Chad. But God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And peace. Uh, yeah, I tell you, we're going to fucking we made inflation go fucking down. Yeah, that's what I'm here to tell you, Chad. It's a wonderful, wonderful, the the annual, the annual, the, the, the annual, the, 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 it's, it's for one year since we did it. Huh? And that's what we did, that's it. And I, now I'm just trying to say, fuck your student loans, but we fucking brought it down now, huh? Exactly, they doubted your boy. They, 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 they doubted me, and they said, no, you're not going to fucking bring the, the gasoline down. If I brought it up, I'll bring it down, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Anyways. Yeah, you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Now, Joshua. Now, 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 is it Joseph or is it Joshua? Now, can you tell me if the Inflation Reduction Act did it require did did it did it require the Riders Union? What do you, do you not understanding my question? Okay, can you tell me the name back to me? Ex inflation exactly, reduction exactly, act. Uh, so what is the, what do they mean in a reduction act? Is this not like a play? Is this do you don't need a screenwriter to make a reduction act? Or is that what you're trying to tell me? So then all of these people at Netflix and Disney, the Hulu Plus, or what are they complaining about? Exactly. So you need an actor. I yield back. Thank you. I've reclaimed my time. Goodbye. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.